Get ready to match the stars from Charlie's Angels, David Doyle, Brett Summers, Charles Gilson Riley, from Ladies Man, Betty Kennedy, from Mork and Mindy, Robert Donner, and Marshall Wallace. As we play the star studded Big Money Match Game. And now, here's the star of Match Game, Gene Rivers. John. Hello there, friend. How do you do? Welcome yeah. to you. Haven't seen you in a while. Haven't seen you in a while. No. Haven't ever seen you before on the uh, stage. Uh, I want You're you probably just as well. Attaboy, off. an especially hearty welcome and a nice kiss on the lips. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he would. <laughs> hey, listen, it's time. We don't do this too often. Uh, to do a little fan mail. Uh -oh. And uh, this is a typical uh, fan letter. Uh, someone who wrote to me and said, "Dear Gene Raber, R A B E R." Mm -hmm. says, I watch your show match game on March 24, 1980. I would like to correct a statement you made about hogs don't live in barns. Take it from a 13-year-old farm kid who has been seen hogs being raised in a barn. I just bought... I just thought maybe some of you <laughs> city people should be better informed. I live on a farm in... Cl <laughs> That's a hog. Yeah, the hogs. I live on a farm in Columbia City, Indiana. We raise and sell fat hogs. Here is a list of animals that live in barns. Pigs, cows, horses, and cats. In case you ever have such a question on your show, this list will help you. <laughs> I bet some of you city people don't even know what a boar, sow, gilt, fat hog, or feeder pig are. I do, but I'm not at liberty to say. <laughs> If you will read this on the live television, I will keep watching your show. Why don't you feed the animals before they die? Instead <laughs> of watching TV. That's right. Yeah. Well, anyways. That's it for the last six months there. Hello, Donna. How do you say your name? Dedicum. Donna Dedicum and Marion Duncan. Would you please welcome me to Chris Cross? Now, each of you will play two games. We want to welcome you and find out a little bit about you. Marion? I'm originally from Philadelphia, but I've been in L.A. for 11 years. I'm a teacher. Tell me a You've been here 11 years? 11 oh, years. Right. Okay. I am a teacher and a writer and a proud mother of a 15-year-old who thinks he's like Magic Johnson. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> Does he play that game? He plays well. Yeah. Very well. Magic is really something else, he's isn't terrific. it? terrific. Well, I hope he does have a great career there. Now, Donna, let's find out about you. Well, I'm originally from New York. We're almost neighbors. Yeah. And uh, I've been living here for about three years and I work for a major airline. All right. Good luck to both of you ladies. Thank you. Let's begin by asking Marianne to make a decision about A or B. I'll pick A. A it is. Here we go. Did you hear? I'm so sorry. I, it's not that I'm not excited to be here, really. Yeah. That yawn was totally... Uh, yawn, right? As yeah. I start to read the first right question, ahead. you yawn? I, it was the sheer excitement. I'm worn out already. Sure. <laughs> Now, remember the play I did in New York? She invested in it, and it lasted four days, and she looked at me in the hall like, I said, I'll give you the money back tonight. I mean, she well, just, before they you know. the check. I know it. They booed, I heard. Oh, well. Did you hear that voluptuous Velma had her chest insured for a million dollars? Did you hear about that? No. Well, well now, what's I'm strange is she had it insured against blank. <laughs> Here we go, Mary. Did you hear that Voluptuous Velma had her chest insured for a million dollars? What's strange is she had it insured against... Robbery. Robbery is good. Oh, it is good. Oh, Isn't yeah. that good? Good. Okay. <laughs> Didn't want anybody to steal them. No, that's jewels. right. No, don't take them with you, please. <laughs> <laughs> Just use them here. <laughs> We missed you, David. Oh, my city. I said deflation. Deflation. <laughs> Such a downer, isn't it? Yes, he is. <laughs> no, you neglected to say who it was. Well, up to Thelma. Oh, I thought you said Twiggy. I said inflation. <laughs> you must listen. That was the big, wonderful answer that you had. <laughs> 
the correct answer, Jane. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> what the right answer? Yeah. Yeah. Had it insured a million dollars worth of trains, she had it insured against? Deflating. Deflating. All right. Oh. Now, here's your first time at bat. Okay, I, Bob. I'm so proud of this answer. Good. <laughs> a flat. <laughs> Well, how are you going to follow his, that act? His excuse is that it's his first time. Right, right. Mm -hmm. I've been here before and I have no excuse. <laughs> Floods. Floods. <laughs> well, that could happen. It could, you never right. know. Now, let's see what we have for Donna. Ed said, you know, you know you've had too much to drink when you go out into the street and try to teach a blank to fetch. <laughs> Here we go. Donna. Ed said, you know you've had too much to drink when you go out into the street and try to teach a blank to fetch. A policeman. A policeman. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a confrontation. What'd you say to that? Oh, uh, well, I, uh, I didn't get off the curb. I had him stop and talk to a parking meter. A parking meter. <laughs> He loves his answers, no matter how bad they are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, somebody oh, has to. <laughs> He's also speaking from personal experience. I knew him in the old days, yeah. before he went on the wagon. Remember what fun we used to have? Oh. <laughs> well, I said a member of the police dept. Aha! Uh -huh. Look at that. So I said one to one. I said a hydrant. A hydrant? All good responses. I was only kidding, uh, David. I thought that was quite good. Excellent. Yes. Okay. Betty, what do you got here for us? Okay, I thought that you should teach a drunk to fetch, because they don't do much else, you know, they drink, so teach them to fetch. Right, okay. Right. We get it, Betty. Thank yes. you. <laughs> I've, okay. I've known Mr. Doyle when a curb was a definite threat. <laughs> <laughs> but we won't go into that now. I said a cop. A cop? What a man! A cooper! Yay! Good. It turned out to be a good answer. I thought it was going to be a disaster, but she's doing well with it. What have you got for well, it? Well, then, what do you know? Yes. <laughs> I said what Charles said, my idol. Fire hydrant. Charles is your idol. Charles right? is my idol. All right. So, at the end of round one, two to one is the score. Your favor. Round two coming up in a moment. Now, this for you. Here we go to round two. And, Donna, since you're ahead, you may go first. Be it is, is what she wants, and that's what she gets. One safe cracker said to another. Hey, that new guy is a real weirdo. Take a look. Take a look. First he sanded his fingertips, now he's sanding his blank. <laughs> we like you. Watch it feel secure. The game's over for you. One safe cracker said to another, that new guy is a real weirdo. Take a look. First he sanded his fingertips, now he's sanding his blank. Oh, gosh. This is a tough one. I think it's an easy one. Christian soldier. I'll just say, I'll just Wish say. Wish I had another farm litter. What? Uh, now he's sanding his uh, safe. I can't think of an answer. Oh. Oh. Don't pick on her. That's right. You get up here. No, go. No, wait, no, Sorry. just kidding. Watch it. What do you got for it? Well, I've got uh, a couple of incisors. Her teeth. Her teeth. All right. Charles? Moving on with this brilliant question, I said nose. Nose is all right. Any part of the face would have been okay. He's a weirdo. You know, first he sands his fingertips, because that's what you do to make your fingertips more sensitive if you're going to fiddle around with the combination lock we on the safe. We get it. We get well, it. Well, I mean, someone, obviously, she didn't get yeah. it. I'm explaining it for somebody. I think we have the IQ of a plant around here. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, then I thought he'd sand his ear so he could hear better. That's good. Yeah. 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 Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry I said that about you. Toe tips. What? Now, there's good. That's a good answer. Why, thank you. Very good. Fingers and toes. Oh. Okay, Donna, you're getting uh, the hang of it now, aren't you? <laughs> Maybe too late. We'll find out right now. You need one to tie two to win. 
Skinny Mickey is so skinny. How skinny is he? I'm going to tell you, he got an athletic scholarship to go to college as a blank. That's how skinny he is. Lose anything for sp incorrect I'm spelling. Right What's that, Robert? Lose anything for incorrect spelling. Oh, no. Spelling doesn't count here. Good. We'll figure it out. Just to give a good shot at it, and that's all you need. Rough, rough. Skinny Mickey is so skinny, he got an athletic scholarship to go to college as a blank. Toothpick. Oh. Now, that's skinny. That is that's skinny. Thin. That's him. <laughs> <laughs> See, we said go to college. A sky he got a scholarship. Uh, listen. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to be wheeled off here, and uh, <laughs> but I see we're going to have to wheel her off now. Right? Oh boy! <laughs> All right. I was thinking along uh, athletic lines. Yeah, well, that's what I we were too. Possibly, it'd be a secret weapon on the football field. He would go there as an invisible end. An invisible end. She's that's that's great, David. David, we, really uh, this is the invisible end. <laughs> we weren't going to get that convoluted, <laughs> David. See. What? I wish to say, I really think this question stinks. <laughs> I'm with her. Toothpick, what difference does it make what anybody says? It's still a rotten, lousy, stinking question. Isn't and I she said, she'll never get off the fence, will she? Isn't she sweet? <laughs> wish she Javelin. Wish she Javelin is good. Now that's a good yeah. response. Anything athletic in college. Me. What do you got there, Betty? Okay, I thought he should be a pole vault. Another good one? Yay! Hey, good. <laughs> you know, when it's going good, you get here fast. Yes, you're right. Uh, pole vaulter. Pole vaulter. Now, you got to match Martha to see the time stay the game. Say toothpick. Oh, I'd love to. Toothpick. All right, you said it. Pencil. Pencil. Yeah. So that means Donna wins the game. Come on down, Donna. <laughs> Take your place there if you would, please. We'll see you a little bit later. I'm going to wheel you off now, and you come back a little bit later for game number two. But right now, we'll see how much money you're going to win here because you could win a big bundle over $10,000. Let's see how it goes. We polled the studio audience not too long ago and said, write down your best answer to this Blank the ship. $500 for you. If you give us the answer they wrote down most often, $250 for the second most popular answer, and $100 for the third. Now, three of the six stars can help, but call on the ones who are establishing eyeball contact. The ones who are not looking at you don't have an answer. You see how simple it is? Oh, God. No. Uh, Charles, would you look down here, please? The Charles. <laughs> Charles has money. He doesn't want to be called down. That's why he's not looking at you. Now, Betty Kennedy, Betty Kennedy is looking at you. Okay, I want Charles first, though. <laughs> you don't understand. I don't know how you got up here. I don't know how you went up here. She's winning, she isn't she? Yeah, she walked right up. No, yeah, she is winning. All right, you want Charles. Abandon the ship. Abandon the ship. All right. Marsha. No, Marsha, you don't understand well, what I'm saying. She keeps looking up over that thing. Oh, well, she's, she's hiding her eyes, you see. She doesn't Very want... Sweet. All right, Marsha, she's called on you. Oh, what a treat for me. Uh, um... Sink, the, sink the ship. Sink the ship. That's yeah. Right one more. Now, I have one more. See, now nobody's looking at you. <laughs> yeah. Robert, please. Save the ship. So you have save the ship, well, abandon ship, and sink the ship. You want one of those or one of your own? Oh, ship's in trouble. Skip. Abandon ship is what she wants. What would you say, audience? Don't give up the ship. Oh, don't give up. Oh, we're so Don't give up the ship. Very good. All right, let's see if, what we have under the $100 number. Oh, no. Don't give up is the audience's answer. Big deal. <laughs> All right, let's see if we have abandoned ship under the $250 response. What do you think of now, you're second-guessing? What's under the big one? Save. Save. Save or sink. All right, slide it. Sink. Sink. Okay. You'll be playing for a minimum of $2,500 and uh, maybe $5,000. We'll tell you more about that right after this. That was mine. Donna's won the $250. That's hers. 
and multiply by 10 is 2,500. That's the least you'll play for, Donna. However, we want you to spin the wheel. If you get a lucky spin of the wheel and it lands on one of the stars, names with the star on it, you double it to $5,000. Step right up there and have a go at it, and we'll all root for a double. And here we go. Charles, it is. And you did do the double for $5,000. Swing around, face me a little bit, and good luck to you, and this is it. Good luck to you. Many blank. Many blank. Many blank. M-A-N-Y. That's right, or any answer. Charles is looking into space with a vacant stare. There he is again, staring into space. Now he's ready. Now, Donna, you give us the answer that he has in the card. We give you $5,000. What do you say to that? Many blank. I said many thanks. Many thanks to you. All right. Let's turn around and find out what Charles has. Many thanks what she says, Charles. The, the most famous one is the longer one, and I didn't think she would go for the longer one. Many happy returns. Many happy returns. That's what I'd so thanks. Thanks to you. She's very excited because she's got a bundle of money there. Well, there is the souvenir card. Thank you very much. My shoes are from Palm Beach. <laughs> <laughs> Marianne, uh, A or B? This time I'll take B. Anything you say. Tough Tony is so tough. How tough is Tough Tony? Once he ate a blank with the shell still on. That is tough. What is it? <laughs> Barefoot boy with cheek. Just, if you could get him to put his shoes on, I'd be very grateful. I mean, I may faint over here. You may notice those tears are from the odor, not oh. from sadness. And Maybe it's a combination of your perfume and cheek curls. <laughs> Let's not talk about my jewelry. Having been burgled. Oh, where are you at, man? <laughs> Here we go. Tough Tony is so tough. Once he ate a blank with the shell still on. Oh, that is tough. <laughs> um, a Macedonia nut. A nut. Oh. A nut. All right. She said a nut with the shell still on. A macadamia nut. I know what she means. They are terribly, terribly hard. I was thinking more along the lines of a 200-year-old 200, 200 turtle. A 200-year-old <laughs> turtle. Wow, that would be tough. Very tough. Cook come in, I'm going. <laughs> yes. Now, you know, I come from Maine. You know what they've got up there, dear? That's we right. all go crazy for them. Oh, yes. Nice lobster. Right. <laughs> lobster with the shells still on. What do you got? Sour clap. Good old egg. What's egg. wrong with a simple egg? Nothing's wrong with a simple egg. When you give a rotten answer, they say, what's wrong with a simple egg? Right? Because it's a stinky answer. <laughs> so, so tough, you ate a blank with the shell still on. Thanks, Brett. Real stinky answer. <laughs> <laughs> You're making friends and influencing people. The world over. All right, I think Robert. Brett is a very bright woman. Lobster. Lobster. <laughs> right. Well, you're entitled to your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Miss Marcia? Mr. Jean. I'm not from Maine, dear. No. I'm from Iowa, where we have hogs. <laughs> oh, you do? <laughs> oh, do we have letter hogs? Writers. They don't grow in the barn, do they, or do they grow? Well, them? I've been in a barn with a hog or two, but... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, I love Very it. Very good. That's the best remark of the day, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, then I'll just shut up and say lobster. All right. <clears throat> when was it Who set her up with the straight line, Chuck? Okay. <laughs> no. 
Uh, this is the middle of round one, and we have no score. You'll have a question later. Now we have this for America. Thank you all. Join us for our match game. Goodbye. Bye. Some contestants will receive Baker's Secret from Echo, the silicone coated non stick bakeware is the easy way to better baking makes cleanup easy as pie. And an exciting assortment of Crayola art and activity kits with everything children need for hours of imaginative play. It's fun to create with Crayola. And if any partner cooks book and bake someone happy with Super Moist, putting in the mix that makes it unbelievably moist. Other cakes may be moist, but they're not super moist. And a tray and chunky family-sized bars in four varieties. Each breaks into 24 thick bite-sized pieces, chunky, thicker and chocolate for real chocolate lovers. And Food Keepers and Uncle Ben's takes the time to make rice right. Uncle Ben selects brown rice, naturally high in brand fiber and nutrients. And a calculator and complete cleans and polishes all kinds of furniture without leaving a greasy film to streak or smear. From Johnson Wax. And Clear-Aid Hydrocortisone for itching from insect bites, detergents, poison ivy, dermatitis. Now there's something better for itching than scratching Clear-Aid from Squib. Get ready to match the stars from Mark and Mindy, Robert Donner. Patty Newcastle, Charles Nelson Reddy, Betty Kennedy, McLean Stevenson, and George Bulemont as we play the star started big money match game. And now here's the star of match game, Gene. I'll take your temperature in a moment, nurse. <laughs> what can I do for you? Are you all right here? Everything's you, fine, thank you. You change your hairdo. I'm sorry. It's all right. No, it looks okay. <laughs> oh, okay. It's a startling. Very beautiful woman. Yes, she is a beautiful woman. And a gifted one, too. We're all gifted. Thank We're you. all beautiful and talented, aren't we? Say yes, everybody. Yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> okay, let's meet our two weirdos over here. Debbie Stolman and Dorothy Knoll. <laughs> Ladies, just to refresh the memories of our viewers. Debbie, you remember, is this attractive young lady who's a truck driver, drives in the 11 western states. Mm -hmm. And uh, what kind of truck do, uh, rig do you drive? Uh, it's an 18-wheeler? It's an 18-wheeler, yeah. All right, Debbie. And Dorothy Knoll here, her husband and her two children here, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, those ha three handsome people there in the first row. Mm -hmm. uh, she's uh, f uh, vacationing here from Kansas City, is that right? No, Hayes, Kansas. Old Hayes, Kansas. Hayes, Kansas. Oh, Hayes, right. Kansas. Right. Just plain Hayes, Just Kansas. Just plain Hayes. Yeah. Um, how many people in Hayes? 18,000. 18,000? We're a big town. There were town. more people on my block in New York than that. Yeah. <laughs> we can spread them out in Kansas. I guess you can. Now, let's see. It's one to one here. She went mm. first last time, so that means you go first this time. No. A. All right. What do you say for A? Mildred said, my husband reminds me of Italy. That's because his blank looks like the Leaning Tower of Pisa. <laughs> Ready, Chuck? Here we go. All right. Mildred said, my husband reminds me of Italy. That's because his blank looks like the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Nose. Nose is good. What do you say? You know, it's amazing when you hear the obvious answer. Right, nose. Yeah, right. Nose. Aha! Oh, hey, hey. Good effort, too. You really are Robert Donner, are you? Yes, I am, and I'm available for parties. No kidding. You do stand-up and all that? Yes, yeah. little cartoons. Yeah. I'll work beaches if you'll send me. Okay. I got one beach I'll send you to. Nose! Hey, that's two for Dorothy. Oh, Charles, I'm sorry. Wait a minute, hold on, wait a minute. Charles just, is weeping here. I'm sorry, here. I try to pull weeping. myself together all day. Yes. You see the picture of those makeup people coming off the elevator? Yeah. When they were safe? <laughs> I mean, saying. some of those people were in the elevator four or five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and you see them? I just, and the Patty Duke could only act this well. <laughs> no. Are you crying? Did he move you to tears? Oh, what a performance. Right. How about to your Broadway? Four noses for Dorothy. Oh, Betty, uh, husband reminds me, Italy, his, his blank looks like the Leaning Tower of Pisa. 
Gosh, I hope they leave this on the air because I like it. <laughs> no, I put nose. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Had> you <gone>. going. <laughs> All right, Joyce. I wouldn't worry you. I said no. Oh. Okay. <laughs> that all right. Now, the best you can do is try. But you can do that if you match all five that you've met. Really? Everyone except Joyce, please. Ed Sullivan said, anybody do Ed Sullivan? No. No. Mm -hmm. Nobody does Sullivan. All right. Uh, Ed Sullivan said, our next act is Tommy the tap dancer. Tommy is unusual because when he tap dances, he wears blank shoes. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> All right, Debbie. I know Sullivan, Ed Sullivan said, our next act is Tommy the tap dancer. Tommy is unusual because when he tap dances, he wears blank shoes. Uh, snowshoes? Snowshoes. <laughs> that would be difficult. Oh. Now, what Debbie is saying is that she expects every one of these dingbats to say snowshoes. <laughs> An unlikely possibility, I must admit. But well, let's begin. That'd be a nifty act. Yep. I said tennis shoes. Tennis shoes. So that means Dorothy wins her game. Come on down, Dorothy. What's the rest of the act? Let's see. Tennis, tennis, snow, open toe wedgies. And that's it. Okay. Now, we're going to wheel you around here in the carousel and bring you back later for game number two. And right now, we're going to see how you do with the big super match here. Good luck to you, my dear. Here we go. This uh, yeah. is where you could win over $10,000. We polled a studio audience and said, write down your best okay. answer to this. Get on your blank. Get on your blank. Three of the six stars can assist. Whom do you want? McLean. Uh, horse. All right, there's one. Patty. Marks. Get on your marks. All right. Charles. Get off your. Oh no. <laughs> Cat. Are the judges seeing that he's mouthing something <laughs> for me? Now watch this. Get on your nerves. Oh, that's good, Charles. Oh, yeah. Very good. You just thought of that, right? Okay. Get on your mark, get on your nerves, and get on your horse. Those are the three. You have an option now. Choose one of those or give us one of your own. Mark. Yeah. Mark. That was Patty's answer. Get on your mark. Get on your mark is what she's after. Let's see if it's under the $100 response. Get it. Mark it is right off the bat. Now, under the next one we have... Get on your feet. That's a good one, isn't it? What do you think is going to be on top? Horse. Horse? How come you didn't say it earlier? Well, it's my second choice. It was your second choice. Well, it was an honest answer. Let's see if we got horse on top. Yep. All right, now listen, you've got $100. Hey, that means you'll play for 1000 where's nerves? All of that. Yeah. Where <laughs> was that? If you're going to give me an answer, give me one that gets on the board. Mr. Marcel Marceau. <laughs> Who's stepping on my mic? Oh, you're stepping on my mic. That's all right. Now listen, you're gonna play for a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars. It all depends on the wheel. Want to go up there? Double! Double! Anarchy! Double! Here we go. $1,000 with Charles Nelson Riley. Face me if you would, please, because uh, you may be a better oh, lip reader than he is. Here it is. Chill blank. Chill blank. Your job is to match Charles, Dorothy. If you do that, you get $1,000. What do you say? Chilly. Chilly. <laughs> Chilly. He was a very famous Western star. Now, wait a minute. Now, wait. There was a famous actor in the Chinese theater. His name was Chill Lee. Chil Lee. Yeah. He was wonderful. He was Canada Lee's He played Lee's in all brother. the Charlie Chan movies. He was just great. You remember Chill Lee, don't you? I do. It is good. Thank you very much, I Betty. Do. Yes. It's getting a little chilly in here myself. Yes, well, if she... Right. Yes. I remember. If Are she... There? 
If she was that close to the man who mimes nerves for the answer, anything is, I said factor, chill factor. Chill factor. Or Max. All right. Listen, uh, we'll get, get Dorothy uh, Knowles' yeah. opponent back here in a moment or so, but right now we have this message for America. Oh. Welcome back, Debbie. Thank you. She's got $100. Now we go to the second and final game and see how we do with that. You may have A or B. B, please. Our lady truck driver says she wants B. She Bernie is. is the world's toughest baseball player. Oh, well, I'll tell you how tough he is. Not only does he chew tobacco, he chews blanks. <laughs> Okay, Debbie. Bernie is the world's toughest baseball player. Not only does he chew tobacco, he chews blanks. Baseballs? Baseballs. All right. He must have a big mouth. Mm -hmm. Yes. I said bats. Bats. Or upside down umbrellas. All right. No, that's a bat. That's a bat uh, flying around. Oh, a bat. Yes. I get it. Ah, a little play on words there. What do you say? He won from Exodor. I say umpires. <laughs> umpires. And they loved it. Bases. Bases. All right, she said baseball. Hand. What do you say, Betty? Not only does he chew tobacco, he chews... I think I'll leave you in suspense. <laughs> Bats. Bats. Thank you. Hey, McLean. Uh, <clears throat> pardon me. I said, uh, bats. You said bats. Yes. Yeah. I didn't think you could say the other word. You could say baseballs. Oh, we that thought of only... The word I was thinking of. Oh, I see. <laughs> All right, Joyce. Uh, do you? I said that <laughs> he, he chews AstroTurf. Oh. AstroTurf. Yes, yes. Go chew your AstroTurf. Okay. All right. We'll go to round two. Since uh, we have a scoreless tie, she went first. What? Bring it back up. I left a... Did I leave one question out? I'm sorry about that. In the elevator. Oh, yes, I did. I thought we had done both questions, but we hadn't. That's so right. Dorothy... It got locked in the elevator. Santa Claus said, ho, ho, ho. Thing to go. I'm sorry. Ho, 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 said Santa Claus. You all know I have a list of who's naughty and who's nice. Well, oh. my nice list I made up myself, but I got my list of who's naughty from blank. <laughs> Is that too long for you, gang? I mean, is that too much for you to retain? <laughs> Santa Claus said, ho, 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 you all know I have a list of who's naughty and who's nice. Well, my nice list I made up myself, but I got my list of who's naughty from... Uh, is that J.R. Ewing on Dallas? J.R. Ewing, the evil man, right. right. Yeah. Oh. J.R. Ewing on Dallas, an evil person. Oh. What do you say? Well, I sure wish I'd said J.R. Ewing. I hope I don't get hurt for this, but I said Jerry Falwell. Jerry Falwell! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He knows, you know. He does. Yeah. And he'll tell on you, too. He will. He'll yeah. tell you. He's a snitcher. He knows my name. Right. He does know your oh, name. that, and I'm gone. Yeah, right. Well, I'm going to hide. I don't want him to Did find me. have had it. Rona Barrett. There's a good one. Rona Barrett. Rona Barrett. Yes, the gossip lady. What do you say to this? I made up uh, the nice list, but I got my list of who's naughty from. Well, I thought it was Tinkerbell, because the way he flies around, you know. Oh, he knows all the gossip. And... Tinkerbell's a girl, you dummy. Well, see what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Tinkerbell was her answer. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That's a girl. Wait a minute. Tinkerbell is not a girl? Yeah. Tinkerbell is a Tinker fairy. Bear no, no, wait a minute. Tinkerbell has Tinker no Bell. gender. That's right. Tinkerbell is a little... He's in love Tinkerbell with has neuter gender. Oh, no, no. She, she is referred to as she by Peter. In Peter Pan? No. Uh, most Peters are Pray to sure. Tinkerbell, she'll Bell help you? Pan. No. No. All right. Okay. Whatever. You ready, McLean? Do you McLean? believe in fairies? Everyone who believes in fairies are fluff. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Joyce. What was, the, what was the question? Are there fairies? I made up my license. No, no, that, we've disposed of that. We know that that's not true. I made up the nice list myself, but I got my list of who's naughty from. Who? Who? 
Wait a minute. I say no, they know. I gave them the answer. They well, know. I don't know. They saw it. That's all right. You didn't see it. I didn't see it. You, you had to hold it, it up. Did you see it? That's all I was Did you see it? I didn't see it. What's he say? I... <laughs> Get out. <laughs> All right, here we go. Second and last round. Score is still tied, ladies. As I predicted it would be. We could have eliminated that question completely. Uh, she went first last time, so you go first this time. A or B? 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 Oh, A. All right, here we go. Weird Willie got a weird new job. He catches sparrows, dips them in yellow paint, and sells them as blanks. He catches sparrows? Yeah. Sparrows? Yeah. I didn't hear it. You were talking. You weren't listening. Dorothy, Weird Willie got a weird new job. He catches sparrows, dips them in yellow paint, and sells them as blanks. The decorations on the trunk of the, the hood of the car, the... The radiator emblem? No, yeah, whatever that sits on the hood of the car. The, the hood ornament? Yeah. Wonderful answer, Dorothy. <laughs> Goodbye, Hello, Robert. Daddy. Well, thank heaven Dorothy took the heat off me. Yeah. I said that he does what? Catches small, small sparrows, dips them in yellow paint, and sells them as small ducks. You took the heat off him. Precious, can I go sit with Dorothy now? Yes. Okay. That's two weird answers so far, hers and his. Go ahead. You sit over there. All the dumb answers are going to sit over there now. What do you got? <laughs> Never mind. All right. Canaries or dwarf tails? No, canaries is all right. Yeah. What do you got? It happened to my mother once in New Britain, Connecticut, many years ago. She won a canary and got home, and all the yellow powder was at the bottom of the cage. Oh. It's true. And that sort of sums up my whole life at home. Yeah. Canary. Canary. Uh, cut, cut the yellow canary How was your story. visit with Dorothy? <laughs> very nice. Uh, he dips very them in yellow pleasant. paint and sells them as. Canary. Canary. Oh. Canaries never crossed your mind? Never did, no. A, a sparrow painted yellow would look like a canary, wouldn't it? Yes, Close. that's why I put that down. You put that down. What did you put down? A fairy. <laughs> really? You're gonna get letters. All right, Debbie. Debbie needs one to tie. Listen carefully, everybody. Dumb Dora called the doctor and said, Doc, I think I have colitis. Whenever I walk, my blanks collide. <laughs> Here we go, Debbie. Dumb Dora called the doctor and said, Doc, I think I have colitis. Whenever I walk, my blanks collide. Knees. Knees? All right. Knees. She played it safe and said knees. What do you say? What's knees got to do with colitis? Collide. Collide? My blanks collide. Oh, I thought the word was colitis. Knees. Ah, oh, that wins the game. What the rest of you have? Knees, knees, thighs, thighs. Boom. Santa boy, Chuck. Come on down, Debbie. Dorothy Knoll has $100. We're going to send her some prizes, too. An ingrown toenail for one. Thank you very much, Dorothy Knoll. Goodbye. Here's a message for you. If you want to see Match Game in person, send a self-addressed stamped envelope to tickets. Match Game, CBS Television City, <laughs> 7800 Beverly Boulevard, Los Angeles, California, 90036. As a member of the studio audience, you may win the Dream Maker from Bassett. Give just the right combination of firm support and soothing softness, Dream Maker from Bassett. And our contestants will receive a pair of beautiful digital watches for a man and a woman. Timex, we're making time look good. And from Kinney, a great selection of great American shoe styles. Kinney's got the look you want, America. That's why Kinney is a great American shoe store. And Baker's Secret from Echo, the silicone-coated non-stick bakeware is the easy way to better baking makes cleanup easy as pie. Here again is the star of our show, Gene Rivers. All right. Thank you, John. Here we go with Debbie Stillman. She could uh, go for the big... A uh, ball of wax here and see how it goes. Good luck to you, my dear. We pulled a studio audience and said, write down your best answer to this. Blank gloss. Three know, of the six stars. Are... Betty seems to have an answer. You want to call on her? Betty. Betty. Lip gloss. That's one. Uh, Charles. Charles. Uh, that wax on the floor? No. 
Yeah. Is what there is that called? called? High, what's it called? It's high high gloss. gloss. I right. got it. High gloss, which won the third race at Pimbano in Long Park. <laughs> high gloss. One more. Robert. Rocky Gloss. Oh, he was a great fighter. Hell of a fighter. Ah. Great got, fighter. Got Rocky his unde Gloss. Undefeated. 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 Rocky Gloss. Right. Hand. Don't so dump have... Rocky, I'm telling you. High Gloss and, and Lip Gloss, gloss Rocky and gloss. Rocky Gloss. You want one of those <laughs> or one of your own? Lip Gloss. Lip Gloss is what you want. Let's find out if it's up there and if so where. Let's go down to the bottom and reveal a $100 response. Semi Gloss. Oh, that was, That's okay. That was Rocky The next one him. says High, high Gloss. gloss. Now, she's looking that for lip manager. gloss. Let's see if it's right here. Yeah! Yes, it is. Very good. Very good. <laughs> oh, oh, well. Now you got $500. The least you'll play for well, is $5,000. But we want you to get up here and spin the wheel, see if you can double it up and play for $10,000. Good luck. Here we go. to you right on the blue dot facing me. This is it. It says fuzz blank. That's F-U-Z-Z -Z blank. No help from the audience, please. Fuzz blank. She's ready anytime you're ready, Robert. Not easy. All right, your job is to match him. If you do, you get $5,000. Fuzz ball? Fuzz ball. You're a trucker. <laughs> Haven't you ever heard of Fuzzbuster, right? Fuzzbuster, that's oh, right. I'm sorry, I said that. <laughs> Today's contestants will also receive a cookbook and Uncle Van it takes the time to make rice right. Uncle Van's long grain of wild rice which combines two quality rices and 23 seasonings to make it any meal special. A cheese server and Gino's party special pizza with a crisp and tasty crust you can trust plus the flavor shaker. Gino's in your grocery freezer. The Mets Turtles, delicious pecan wrapped in caramel, covered with smooth, delicious chocolate. Look pretty Mets Turtles in fine stores everywhere. And a hair dryer and Jerry Redding Milk and Honey Salon at Home, complete hair care styling system. Jerry Redding, a favorite of professional hairdressers for 20 years. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game, a Mark Goodson Bill Tottenham production. Program is edited for broadcast. It's time for the match game, Hollywood Squares. Our quiz from Dallas, Ken Kirchner. From Hotel, Nathan Cook. America, 1983, Deborah Sue Nappin. Patty Fly. Robert Donner. And the start to the match game, Hollywood Squares Hour. Nice to see your body once again. Hello. Good to see it's you. Always a pleasure to see your body. You've never done this before, have you? No, this is. I'm a rookie. Really? Have you done many types of shows like this? Oh, a couple. Really? All right. Yeah, looking nice, forward to it. Nice to have you with us here. 
Nice to have you with us. Thank you so much. I'm thrilled to be here. <laughs> Ken Kirchhoff. Hello. You know what we discovered when he walked in the makeup room a little while ago? We were in the same acting class in New York. So. That's right. And who else was it? Alice Herson was in that class? Yeah. And, uh... John, uh, it was John Lynn's class, John right? Lynn on uh, 8th Avenue and 47th Street upstairs and, and had that mean superintendent. Remember him? <laughs> right, and he'd never give us heat in the winter. Yeah, time. yeah. Wasn't that fun? Yeah. So <laughs> you wanted to be an actor. Whatever happened to you? I, I just... Uh, <laughs> uh, I was... I, I had a flat. Yeah. I, had, I had it right outside. Listen, we had Fern. Uh, Fern? You play opposite Fern, do you, on Dallas? We did. Oh, I play real close to her, not opposite. Real, real close to her. What do you mean, real close? I was in bed with her two weeks ago. I don't want to hear about that. <laughs> hello, darling. Well, hello. You look familiar to me. Gosh, we've done so many things together. I mean, shows. <laughs> I mean, this, the old match game, Love Boat and all of that. It's a joy to see all of you. Now, would all of you please join me and greet our two players over here, Katie Charles and Pam Romero. Tell us about you, please. I'm from Littleton, Colorado. Littleton, Colorado. And I've been living in Southern California for a year and a half. Mm-hmm. You like it here? I love it. You gonna stay? Mm-hmm. For a while. A lot of snow in Littleton right now, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. But do you do anything to keep your body and soul together? I run. You do? That helps. Mm -hmm. You eat once in a while? Mm -hmm. Good. I eat a lot. All right. <laughs> Pam, tell us about you. Well, I live in San Diego with my husband, John, of three years, and my son, Kaylin, who just had his first birthday. And I also enjoy participating in ladies' arm wrestling. Ladies' arm wrestling? That's right. <laughs> what? You mean this kind of arm wrestling? This kind of arm wrestling. Is that hard? No. It's a big mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Very big mistake. Holy <laughs> Me. Okay, Pam, try and win here. I'm only kidding. Now, on the match game, you'll have three chances to match as many of the goon, uh, the dingle, uh, the P stars as you can, and the one who's done that most often will be the winner, and go on to challenge the returning champion on Hollywood Squares for a chance to win up to thirty thousand dollars. Katie, you won the toss. You go first. I'll take A, please. Let's see what we've got for A here. Jack said, "When I picked up my blind date, I immediately knew that I was going to have a rotten time." When she opened her door, she was wearing a blank. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting for the upper tier. Ken, when you're finished, put it in a slot. The light turns on, and then I know you're ready. <laughs> okay, here we go, Katie. Jack said, when I picked up my blind date, I immediately knew that I was going to have a rotten time. When she opened her door, she was wearing a blank. A habit. A nun's habit. A nun's habit. <laughs> Wonderful answer. Katie, <laughs> okay, I can tell by the reaction of our stars that they all loved your answer. But Nobody not got it. One of them said it! <laughs> all right, Ken. Yeah. Do I say? Show and tell. Oh. Yeah, hold it up. Oh, you, you have to hold it. Hold it up right here so they can see oh, it. Oh, I see. And say it at the same time. A paper bag. A paper bag is a good response. <laughs> now, listen, that's not bad. Oh, that's good. <laughs> You're yeah. sick. It's a good, it's not a booable answer. I'll tell you when we get a booable answer. <laughs> Thank you. Don't you dare. <laughs> no, oh, all right. I think I'll sit over there. They're smarter. Okay, I said um, he was going to have a rotten time because she was wearing a wedding ring. Uh -huh. Aha. <laughs> oh, well, that would preclude, yeah. right. All right. Hello, chum. <laughs> You're a very bright woman. <laughs> and you resent it. At the moment, yes. Because <laughs> she's funnier than you are. She's a bright woman and you're well-dressed. <laughs> well, you, you look pretty natty to me. Well, thank you very much. I mean, she's a scratch golfer and he's wearing his golfing outfit. There's nothing wrong with that. That's true, except there's no grass here. Oh, <laughs> grow some grass. Well, on to the game. Yes. I knew he was going to have a bad time because she was wearing a suit of armor. A suit of armor. <laughs> Think about it. He didn't have the key. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> so there. Okay, John. When she owned her wear, she was wearing a... I'm going to try this again. They would not boo the co-host of a national network game show that's moving steadily up in the ratings for saying a paper bag. Uh, yay! Yay! All right. <laughs> They're booing you, Gene. They're booing you, pal. Not me. You say, hello, Deborah Sue. 
Hello. Well, you know, I think you're really smart. I think you're very intelligent, and uh, I, think I think you thought th I think you thought that one through. A sack. A sack. There you see, a sack. <laughs> see, we had a lot of those, Katie. All right, but no nuns have it. All right, what do you say, Nathan? Well, what I said was, I have a hard time because she was wearing a beard. <laughs> a beard. <laughs> a beard would, would be very difficult. Very difficult. All right, hang in there, Katie. Pam, let's see what we got for you. Alice has the biggest mouth in the world. I'll tell you what, yesterday at the beach, she yawned and a blank went down her throat. At the beach, did you say? Yeah. All right, Pam. Alice has the biggest mouth in the world. Yesterday at the beach, she yawned and a blank went down her throat. A whale. A whale? I didn't know it was that big. What do you say, Ken? No, I didn't say a whale. I said a pelican. A pelican? Uh, you find those at the beach? Miss Fanny, what do you got for would us? Would you be stunned if I had said whale? Yes, I would be stunned. Good. I'd fall right down. Whale. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Fell down like I said I would. Thank heavens the pressure is off the back row. I said beach ball. A beach ball. <laughs> Good. Anything you find at the beach is okay. John, what do you got? Uh, sorry, I said a shark. A shark is good. Yeah. Deborah Sue? I said a seagull. A seagull? Another thing you find at the beach, Nathan? A whale, of course. A whale, that's <laughs> true. All right, keep it up in the score. We have round one, round two coming up right after this. Hurry back. Okay. Hold it. Time now for our fantastic contest where somebody out there who watches this program might win $5,000 cash plus an opportunity to appear on an NBC soap opera as an actor, an actress, or wallpaper, or a piece of furniture. I don't know what, but you, you will make an actual appearance on an NBC soap opera. That's guaranteed. And now, the names are chosen at random, and the person chosen today is from Bloomington, Minnesota, and it is Mrs. Joanne Hagen who is on the line right now to play Match Game Hollywood Square's telephone match. Hello, Joanne. Hello, Gene. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm very well, thank you for asking. Are you thrilled? Oh, yes. I'm excited. I got better news for you. Just you. because your name was chosen, whether you win or lose or, you know, on the rest of the contest, yes. just for being chosen, you will get $500. How do you feel about that? Now, that's yours irrevocably. Oh, that's wonderful. Now, Joanne, you've been on the line with one of our production assistants, and they've informed, and she informed you of all of these stars who are on the program today. Yeah. Now, to play the head-to-head -head, uh, telephone match here, you have to choose a star. Okay. It's time now to make that decision. Which star do you choose? I'm going to choose that handsome John Bowman. Handsome John Bauman. Is John Bauman was that? Now, hold on, I'll have to go get, I have to go get the handsome one. But he's going to get the stand-in for him. Okay, now, Joanne, John will write his answer, and you'll give me a verbal response, but don't say it until I call for it, okay? okay. All right, and good luck to you. It's $5,000 and a chance to appear in an NBC soap opera. All you have to do is match John. Here it is. Blank. Cubes. That's blank. C-U-B-E-S. Blank cubes. Now, John has made up his mind. He's written the answer, put it in the slot there. And uh, Joanne, to collect the $5,000 in an appearance on an NBC soap opera, all you have to do is match him. What do you do that? How do you do that? What do you fill in that blank? You want my answer? Yes. <laughs> I... It would help if you would give me your answer. That's a general I... idea. I beg your pardon? Ice. Ice cubes is what she says, John. The audience is uh, applauding. Joanne, the audience thinks you came up with a winner. John, show and tell, if you please. It's awfully cold in here, Gene. Yeah, I nice. see you, Joanne, you won the money on the appearance on the NBC soap opera. Congratulations to you, Joanne Hagen. What are you going to do with all that money? Well, congratulations, and thank you very, very much for playing the Match Game Hollywood Square's telephone match. Goodbye, Joanne. Bye-bye. Okay. 
All right, that will get she said I was handsome. Handsome. Wait, hold on. I'm writing my phone number. You get back to me. Okay, go ahead. All right. Here we go with round two now. And uh, Pam, you're ahead. You have to go first. B, please. B it is. Four people play. Robert Kinn, John, and Deborah Sue. Joyce Brothers said, I'll tell you how I get my hair so hard. After I wash it, I dip it in a bucket of blink. That's how I get my hair so hard. Hard? Yes. Hard. You lay out this uh, round, but you can help these guys in case you got an answer you'd like. You don't play, but I'm laying out. You might uh, want to assist your friend over here. <laughs> <laughs> After I wash it, I dip it in a bucket of blank. <laughs> hard hair. Pam. Joyce Brothers said, I'll tell you how I get my hair so hard. After I wash it, I dip it in a bucket of blank. Resin. Resin. Mm -hmm. Boy, that's a very sophisticated answer. <laughs> when uh, resin hardens, it becomes very, very hard. Yeah, I know that. When it's soft, it's very hot, though. I know that. That would be painful. That, that would, yeah. You ready? Ready. I'm ready. Varnish. Varnish is a good one. Uh, isn't that rosin? Yeah, that one. Isn't that rosin? No, as a matter of fact, uh, there might be some uh, resin or rosin Ros in resin. varnish. There but, is. Uh, varnish, uh, you know, they can't count that as a match. Nice try, though, Ken. <laughs> Robert, what do you say? Resin, huh? Resin. <laughs> I don't even know how to spell it. R-E-S-I-N. <laughs> I said cement. Cement will make it work. <laughs> what do you got, John? Here's my phone number for that lady, 213-555-1212. And unfortunately, I have lard. Lard will make your hair hard. Kind of unfortunate, isn't it? It'll make your hair hard. Well, you know, I wanted to say varnish, but I didn't know how to spell it. So I put paint. Paint will make your hair hard and gooey. Well, Pam, you didn't score on that one. And now, Katie, let's see if you can catch up a little bit here. Ugly Irma is so ugly... I'm going to tell you, when she went to the beautician, he said, forget it, lady, you don't need a beautician, you need a blank. <laughs> okay, the bottom tier is ready, and the upper tier is ready. Katie, ugly arm is so ugly that when she went to the beautician, he said, forget it, lady, you don't need a beautician, you need a blank. Facelift. Facelift. Ah. It's pretty bad. I guess it is. <laughs> it's, too, it's kind of disappointing for me. Such a brilliant answer like nun's habit and then come up with facelift. It's not bad. No, facelift is not bad now that I think of it. There are a couple of others here that might be a little more euphonious. What do you say? Embalmer. Embalmer is good. <laughs> mortician. Yeah. You need a beautician, you need a mortician. <laughs> Fanny? Undertaker. Undertaker. All right. Have two of those. Robert? I said magician. Magician is another good one. Very good. That's terrific. What do you got there? I don't know. I might have been barking up the wrong tree, but I said veterinarian. Veterinarian is another good one. A lot of good answers over here, Katie. You know, yes, ma'am. I thought mine was really bad. I thought I had a bad answer. I said mortician. Mortician is good. Oh. What are you going to say, Mike? I said she needs a mechanic. A mechanic. <laughs> All right, so there we are at the end of round two, and the score remains the same. Two to nothing in Pam's favor. Third and final round right after this. Here we go with the third and final round. Ding. Pam, you're still ahead. You go first. Um, I'll take A, please. Mm -hmm. You do want A. Yes. You're sure? Why not? Who plays? Oh, the same play. four. Yeah, same four who played last time. Susie said... All my boyfriend ever thinks about is basketball. <laughs> he even dribbles when he blinks. <laughs> okay, Bob, here we go with Pam. Susie said, all my boyfriend ever thinks about is basketball. He even dribbles when he blinks. Goes to the bathroom? <laughs> I thought I'd make it a little more difficult on him. 
He even dribbles when he makes whoopee. Makes whoopee. That's good. But don't we all? All right, John. <laughs> makes love. All right. That's it. You got it? Yeah. It's kind of related in there. Really? Kiss. When he kisses. Ah. Uh, How'd you mirror? Well, Pam, you remain at two. <laughs> and that puts Katie in a pretty good spot here because, Katie, all you have to do is match two to tie and three to win. According to... Emily Pest, the world's worst expert on etiquette, the proper thing to do with an olive pit at a formal dinner is to stick it in your blank. <laughs> you got it? You got it. Hey. Here we go. According to Emily Pest, the world's worst expert on etiquette, the proper thing to do with an olive pit at a formal dinner is to stick it in your blank. You're going to hate this. Ear. Ear. <laughs> Like that? <laughs> the audience like ear. We need two ears to tie, three to win. Ken? Three, okay, mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes is good. <laughs> you can hide them at least. Well, hey, that's a match. Uh, mashed potatoes are your ear. Wow. They didn't like mashed potatoes. They didn't like, like it at all. Potatoes. I did. You did. Well, I've, I've had experience. And I, you have? Yes, I've been at formal dinner parties, and I always just put them in my bra. Uh -huh. <laughs> Very good. Gee, I wouldn't have thought of that. Right. That's very I good. That. I thought it was. Robert? That's a very bright young lady. Yes, she is. <laughs> I'm a very bright young man. One ear! <laughs> okay. One more to tie. Okay, John. Stick it in your ear! Tie! Okay. All right. Never shoot. Well, my first reaction was to say bra, but I went with ear. <laughs> Pleasure to meet you. We're going to send some gifts to you from the match game. Pam, oh, sorry. Bye. You're happy about this, right? Now, you see the rest of the set is coming in here. We're going to switch to the Hollywood Squares part of it. Three more celebrities will make their appearance. I'm going to switch places with John Bauman here. And we've got lots more excitement coming along. Don't go away. We'll be right back. A member of our studio audience will receive Quasar's new 13-inch portable television. Features a schematic tuning, high-tech styling, in a simulated walnut grain finish, and super color system furnished by Quasar. It's time for more of the match game. Hollywood Square. Our win. Nitra Bowl. From another world. Richard J. Porter. Gordon Jones. And taking over the star of the Hollywood Square, John Bowman. It was so hard to say goodbye. I just did Okay, I gotta say goodbye to you for a couple of minutes. And we'll be back with Hollywood Square. John Bauman and the Hollywood Square. Yeah, sure. But the real question is, can she arm wrestle? We may never find out whether Katie Charles can arm wrestle or not, but we do welcome you to the match game Hollywood Squares, our second half. This is the Hollywood Squares portion. We also welcome Nidra Voles, Thank you. Richard J. Porter, and Gordon Jump. Great to have you here, Richard J. Richard Jay from our erstwhile lead in Another World. Uh, for those of our viewers who may not watch your show, I'm sure there are very few, uh, but just tell us a little bit about the character that you play. Uh, well, Larry, Larry Ewing, one of the first Ewings before Dallas. Uh, I came, I got with a woman about six years ago. I've been one of the only faithful men for six years on television. I'm really proud of that. Uh, ever been faithful to a man for six years? Yes. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> okay, ready to play Hollywood Square? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Ever been married? No. No. Good track record. <laughs> I won't ask you, Pat Lofton. We have loftier matters at hand, like, for instance, that the fact that it's your second day and that she is returning for her second day already having amassed 
$31,375. Bucks. Now, what that means, for those of you who missed our Friday show, is that she won the $30,000. She won the big one. The question was what? Rattlesnake. <laughs> yes, I thought you might remember. <laughs> Have you given some thought to what you might do with $30,000? Well, we're going to, first of all, get out of debt. First of all. And then you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to buy enough stockings so I don't have to wash them out every night. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that's a lot of stockings. <laughs> and you're not necessarily done yet because we're going to play Hollywood Squares at least one more time for you. You're going to play it until you hear the time's up bell. Whoever's ahead gets another crack at up to $30,000 in super match. First game is worth $100, $25 for every square. You start, Pat, pick a star. Here we go. Fanny, please. Fanny flag in the hot seat. According to Miss Manners, at a formal dinner party, should you excuse yourself from the table each time you have to blow your nose, or should you remain at the table and blow it as quietly as possible? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yes. Well, I mean, everybody knows this. You should never, ever, ever, ever blow your nose at a formal dinner party. It, it makes other people nervous. <laughs> <laughs> so you should excuse yourself from the table. Or, or use the tablecloth. <laughs> oh, uh, yes, yes. You, you should excuse yourself from the table. Fortunately, Pat, tablecloth was not one of the choices. She says you, you should excuse yourself from the table. Agree or disagree? I agree. According to Miss Matters, you should remain at the table and blow quietly. Wrong! Oh, oh, dear. Okay. Wrong. Those guys are never going to Miss Manners' house for dinner. Oh. Katie, you have a break in the game already. You're playing, oh, pick a star. Deborah Sue, please. Deborah Sue Maffet. Oh. According to Mary Ellen, how can you keep bread fresh longer? Should you put a rib of celery in the bag, or should you put the bread in the bathroom when you take a shower? <laughs> well... My mama in Cut and Shoot, Texas, would say to put some celery in there. Is that what you say? That's what yeah, I say. Yeah, okay. I'll what agree. do you say, Katie? I'll agree. You should put a rib of celery in the bag. Yes, you're right. Two agree, and you get the square. Two in a row. Two O's up there, Pat, and you are playing X. Make your move. Oh, I'll go to Richard's block, please. The faithful Richard J. Porter. <laughs> On the average, Richard, who wears larger bras? American women or European women? How would a faithful man wow. have the answer to that? That's <laughs> tough. On an American show. That's a hard one. <laughs> uh, do European women wear bras? Um, I'll have to say American women. To block, do you agree or disagree that American women wear larger bras? I disagree. American women it is. No, you should have agreed with Richard. Your opponent gets a square. It's a clean sweep. Katie Charles. smaller. Ponder that, American women and American men out there, and we'll be back with a $200 game. Stay tuned for more of the match game, Hollywood Square Tower. Now, back to John Bauman and the Hollywood Square. Can you find out that American women wear larger bras? <laughs> right and it's your move, Pat. You are behind. Uh, 175 to nothing, but it's early yet. It's a $200 game. Well, I'll try Flan Fanny again, please. Oh, Pat, thank you. <laughs> oh, dear. You're an average woman, Fanny. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Whose brain is larger, yours or the average man's? Larger. Larger. Whose brain is larger? Right. <laughs> Apparently not yours, Fanny. Well, I hate to give the answer to this. I just hate it. <laughs> Particularly, uh, I say the average woman's brain is larger, and it hurts men's feelings, I know, but... <laughs> Good answer, it, Fanny. Good agree answer. disagree, Pat. She I says agree. the woman's brain. The, the average man's brain is larger than the average woman's. No, you should have disagreed. That surprised me. Okay, you your opponent you gets that square. You have got four O's in a row so far, Katie. Pick a star. Ken, please. Only one of them in this game, of course. Ken Kirchival from Dallas. Which travels faster, Ken? A rattlesnake striking its prey 
or a Nolan Ryan fastball striking out a batter? Uh, a rattlesnake or Nolan who? <laughs> Nolan Ryan. Uh, Are we in trouble here? <laughs> Boy, that's good. She won with Rattlesnake, didn't she? She did. Well, let's But see. that was another day. Don't want to. I'll bet. Oh, is he a ball here? I'll bet it's a rattlesnake. <laughs> he says a rattlesnake is faster than a Nolan Ryan fastball. Katie, agree or disagree? I agree. Our Nolan Ryan fastball is much faster than a rattlesnake. Much, much, much faster. Your opponent gets that square rattlesnake oh. strike at a speed of only 5.5 miles per hour. Nolan's about 96, 97. Pat, pick a star. I'll try Gene, please. Gene Rayburn. You'd like to try Gene for an X. X. All right. <laughs> Many women have tried Gene, Pat. Oh, no. <laughs> Little joke, Gene. Yes. <laughs> what is an iceberg made from, Gene? Frozen fresh water or frozen seawater? Oh, quite obviously frozen fresh water because as the snow melts, you see, the, it packs <laughs> down real hard and snow is fresh water indeed. You see the condensation nuclei in the atmosphere of unburned hydrocarbon particles. Agree or disagree, Pat? You're annoying me. You agree? I agree? Frozen fresh water. Yes. Frozen fresh water it is. Yay! Right there, right there, you get the square. Two X's up there. Okay, Katie Charles, you are playing old. Make your move. I'll take Nidra to block, please. Nidra Vols. All righty. You and your husband do not want to have any more children. That's for darn sure. <laughs> <laughs> now, okay, this could help you out. Listen carefully. <laughs> Will jumping up and down after making love help you avoid getting pregnant, or will you be jumping up and down for nothing? Well, I don't really need to jump up and down anymore, if you know what I mean. But I would say, gee, that's almost ancient history, isn't it? <laughs> Try to remember, Deidre. Very old question. <laughs> uh, let me see. Jumping up and down, will that help? I don't think so. Agree or disagree, Katie? I agree. You will be jumping up and down for nothing. Yes, you're right to agree. You get the scare and you do block. And O goes up there. We're going to be back to complete the $200 game and straight into an exciting match right after these messages. Okay, $225 for a challenger, $50 for a champion. But we're in the middle of a $200 game. Pat, you're playing X. Pick a star. Nathan to block, please. Hi. Hi. You missed this one. Another game belongs to the challenger. Oh. Nathan Cook from Hotel. Yes. You're in Saudi Arabia, and you have just seen two men greet each other with a hug and a kiss, mm -hmm. and then walk off together hand in hand. Ah. Now, have you just witnessed two kinky Arabs? Mm-hmm. Or is this considered normal behavior? <laughs> the hug and the kiss probably I don't know about that hand in hand business though <laughs> no. uh, I'd say it's uh, average behavior in Saudi Arabia <laughs> he thinks it's just considered normal behavior Pat to block agree or disagree I agree it is just considered normal behavior I don't know by whom but you get the square and you do block okay an X goes up there and we got a real back and forth game Katie you're playing O Deborah Sue, please, to block. Deborah Sue Maffet, Miss America 1983, to block. If she misses this question, the game belongs to Pat. Your pet poodle, Petula, is pretty promiscuous. Uh -oh. And none of the puppies in her last litter looks like the others. Mm. Is it possible that Petula's puppies have different papas? Or can only one papa be responsible? Well, we used to raise poodles. So I'm going to say that it's, it's possible that there was a different papa. <gasps> really? Yeah. Petula? Shock. Just not if you're a detective on another world, right? <laughs> okay, Katie, agree or disagree that you can have different papas in that litter? I agree. They can each have a different papa. Very well done. You're right to agree. Very complicated question. You doped it out. You get the square. You do block. And the shoe is on the other foot, Pat Lofton. Pick a star. Richard to block. This is for Let's you to block. Again. You missed this one. The game belongs to Katie. Richard J. Porter, which came first? Big League Baseball's first umpire 
or the first trained seeing eye dog. <laughs> <laughs> Who writes these? <laughs> trained seeing eye dogs. I'll definitely have to go with that. Which? I think I'd definitely go with the trained seeing eye dogs. To block, agree or disagree, Pat? I agree. The umpire came first. You should have disagreed, and the game goes to your opponent, Katie Charles. A pretty big lead for you. And incidentally, there's quite a big, quite a big differential here. The umpire, mid-1800s. The first seeing eye dog, interestingly enough, not until 1929. Okay. We're going to clear the board now, move on to the next game. Sweep all the X's and O's off. This game is worth $300, and you do get to start, Pat. Pick a start. Fanny again, please. Oh, Fanny okay. once more. <laughs> Okay. She's relentless. Take a plate, Fanny. Fill it with sudsy water and place it under a light bulb. According to the Mother Earth News, will this cure your athlete's foot or kill fleas? <laughs> now, tell me this again. You put soapy water under... You take a plate, you fill it with sudsy water, you put it under a light bulb. Right. Does one of two things, cure athlete's foot or kill fleas? Probably both. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think it I does either one. I it does. Promise. Okay. Hmm? Well, actually, it kills fleas. What do you think, Pat? Agree or disagree? I disagree. It does. It kills oh. fleas. I know it all sounds strange, but your opponent oh, gets that square and it kills goes fleas with oh, no. Katie Charles, thanks to Mother Earth News, you are on a bit of a roll. Pick a start. Um, Gordon, please. Gordon, jump. Gordon. Yes. Hi, G. How are you? You can do this, Gordon. Gordon, each night, who sleeps closer to Ronald Reagan? <laughs> Nancy or a Secret Service man? Yeah. You know those answers? I didn't think we were allowed to, to let that information out. <laughs> Could be the first time, Gordon. Well, <clears throat> Nancy complains a lot about it, but it's the Secret Service uh, agent. Agree or disagree, Katie? I agree. It is Nancy. <laughs> no, you should have disagreed with Gordon, and your opponent gets that square. Who just... sleeps closer to Nancy? Okay, Pat, your move. Um, I'll try Nathan, please. Okay, Nathan Cook oh, from Hotel. In their early career, Nathan, My they early built... career? My early career? In, no, in their early career, ah, okay. they were billed as the Nurk twins, N-U-R-K twins. Are they the Smothers Brothers or John Lennon and Paul McCartney? Uh, it's not Lennon and McCartney, so I'll have to go with the Smothers Brothers. Nathan wants to go with the Smothers Brothers, Pat. I'll agree with that. Lennon and McCartney, <laughs> you should have disagreed. Oh, it's been a tough day. Okay, Katie Charles, you got two O's up there once again. Pick a star. Nidra to win again, please. Nidra Vols, you are a single woman. <laughs> According to Cosmopolitan's new etiquette guide, when you meet a male friend at a party, should you only kiss him on the cheek? Or can you kiss him anywhere he doesn't mind? Well. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, at my age, I could kiss him anywhere. Nobody would give a darn. <laughs> but I don't think... Can you kiss him on the... Only on the cheek or anywhere that he says is okay? I don't know this gee, you know. Uh, I think if you just had met him and you were a normal person, not like myself, you would probably kiss him on the cheek. Okay. Agree or disagree, Katie? I'll agree. No, you can kiss him anywhere he doesn't mind. Okay. Your uh -huh. opponent gets that square and that really keeps her Sorry in the Sorry about that, Pat. Oh, the bell means that time is up. $525. She has done it. Katie Charles, new champ. It was a $300 game. You wouldn't quite have made it anyway. Okay, Katie. Congratulations. Do you know where you are now? Here's where you go. Join Gene Rayburn. Jump up and down over there for a little while. Get set for your shot at the big money. You were catching up there at the end, but I don't think even, even the $300 game would not have quite done it for you. Uh, you had a very productive day here on Friday. Your total, her total... $31,500, Pat Walker, congratulations, you're terrific.
Okay, Jean, take it away. Here we go. Congratulations. New champ here. We'll be back with her and our nine stars. And a go with the big money right after this. All right. We've got a very excited player here. It's the first time she's had a chance to be in this spot in a go at the $30,000. And if you're ready, Katie, we'll have a go at it, shall we? Sh we shall. <laughs> okay. Let's uh, take a look at it over here. We pulled a studio audience not too long ago and said, write down your best answer to this. It's raining blank. Now, if you give us the answer that that studio audience came up with most often, you get $1,000. For choosing the second most popular answer, $500, and for the third, $250. Any three of the nine stars can offer some assistance here. Whom do you call on? John, please. John Bauman, what do you say? Okay, I have two that I like. I'm going to say it's raining cats and dogs. All right, you've got one now. Mm -hmm. It's a good one. Nathan, please. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's raining, it's pouring. It's raining, it's pouring. Now you have two, one more. Robert, please. Robert Donner, you're up. Third position I know is that, tough. Gene. <laughs> you know that. I'm oh. paying attention. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I thought you dozed off there for a second, Robert. It's raining violets. Ah. Very good. Would Thank you like you. to do uh, eight bars? It isn't raining, rain, rain you know it's raining, violet. Uh, well, you see, I'm looking for the rainbow. I sing this happy song. I sing near the window and we'll help you out. All right. Now you have a decision to make. You choose one of those three uh, responses or think up one of your own. What would you like to do? It's raining cats and dogs. Yay. Cats and yeah. dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Where we get at the bottom reveal a $250 response. It's raining men. Raining men. Yes. Oh, was a song. The lack of anything better to rain. It was a song that was popular six or eight months ago. Uh, what was the name of the group, Joe? The Weather Girl. Oh yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Anyway, let's take a look at the $500 response and see what we have there. It's raining. It's pouring. You got that. From Nathan. is snoring. Via John. Okay. <laughs> the last chance for the thousand bucks. Here we go. That's a good. You got it. Very good. All right. Now, Katie, you've got the thousand dollars. Now it's time for the head to head match with any star of your choosing. And after you've made your decision, that star will reveal the hidden number. It'll be a 10, a 20, and there's 130 up there. We'll multiply the $1,000 by whatever number is revealed. Okay, time now to make your pick. John, please. All right, John, grab the tab again, give it a yank, and we'll see if it's going to be a big 3-0. It's a 10. You're playing for $10,000. Oh, that's a shame, isn't it? <laughs> All right. Let's go right there. <laughs> okay, good luck to you. $10,000 here. All you have to do is match John. Blank nail. N A I L. Blank nail. Okay, John's ready to collect the $10,000. You have to match him. What do you say to this? Fingernail. Fingernail? <laughs> Okay. Okay, John. She says fingernail will match you for the big money of ten thousand bucks. Have you got it? He's got it. Which of the stars had the big 3 0 stars? Did you grab the tab? I'll give it a pull. One, two, three, go. Pull your tab. Deborah oh. Sue Mathen had a big 3 0 there. <laughs> All right, thank you, stars. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Gene Rayburn inviting you to join us tomorrow. John Bauman saying so long for the Match Game Hollywood Squares Hour. 
a member of our studio audience will receive a Roper Easy Touch Microwave Oven featuring computerized cooking with three memory levels lets you automatically program exactly the right temperature, power, and cooking time for any foods furnished by Roper. the match game, Hollywood Square Tower. A Mark Goodson television production. Get ready to match the stars from Mork and Mindy, Bob Donner, Brett Summer, Charles Nelson Riley, former Miss World, Marjorie Wallace, Bill Daly, and Marcia Wallace as we play the star-studded big body match game. And now, Here's the star of match game, Gene Raver! Okay, are you all ready out there? All set? All set up here? Sure, you bet. All right. You bet. Let me just see how the world looks for Bob Donner. Oh. He look good Great flannel. Nice. 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 It, it goes with a suit, too. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you got my heart. Oh, ooh. Ouch. <laughs> Anything for never work again? Yeah, let's carry on. And <laughs> right, let's say hello to Monty Hill and Daphne Davis. Yeah. Plus, plus. Monty Hill, you remember? He's a fellow who's nervous. <laughs> What do you got to say for yourself, honey? Well, I'm not nervous today, Gene. I'm oh, gonna, good. I got some sleep and I'm gonna get some competition in here. <laughs> All right. All right. And Daphne, you remember, is a student at USC studying uh, broadcast uh, arts? Journalism. Journalism, yeah. Wants to be a anchor person. When will you graduate? Um, in two years. Two years? Mm -hmm. All right. Someone two years hence. There is an attractive young lady who is going to be well trained and will uh, be applying uh, for a job. Let's go to round two here. That is the final round of the final game. It's all over. Daphne, you're ahead. You go first. I'll take B. B it is for you. B says, Frank said, I call my wife Big Red. I call her Big Red because she has a big red blank. <laughs> all right, Daphne. Frank said, I call my wife Big Red because she has a big red blank. Nose. Nose. Good. gave a perfectly reasonable answer. Yeah, I threw out my other answer. Irish setter. She has a big red eye. They're rough. Enough. All They're right. mean little buggers, aren't they? Yeah. The correct answer, Uncle James. No, it is. All right. Thank you. Marjorie, call me white big red. Big, big, big red what? You don't like your answer. I can tell by the look on your face. She won't even say it. So I hope you saw it, because I'm not going to say it. Bill well, doesn't play. We come to Marcia. Shocking. Shocking is right. <laughs> and I wish I'd thought of it. Nose. Nose it is. For her. Fat Frida is really fat. How fat is she? Fat Frida. She's really fat. Well, no wonder she's fat. Instead of gargling with mouthwash, she gargles with blink. <laughs> All right, we're about ready now. Body Hill. Fat Frida is really fat, and no wonder she's fat. Instead of gargling with mouthwash, she gargles with blank. Beer. Beer. <laughs> Unlikely that you're going to find four beers over here, but let's try. But it's a good I'll answer. It. Yes. Well, let's get off on the wrong foot, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> Lots of food. Food. Gargles with food. All right, Brett. Nice. Oh, darling, don't boo him. Uh, he doesn't know any better. No! Dean Martin gargles with beer. Oh. Fat Frida gargles with melted Hershey bars with almonds. Oh, dear. Oh. Now to match everybody else, now you stay in the game and achieve a tie. Milkshakes. Milkshakes. That'll make you fat, so that means definitely wins the game. What the rest of you have? Five, heavy, five, cream. heavy cream, malted milk, and shakes. Come on down that to All right. Marty, you didn't win any money, 
but we're going to send you some gifts. We have a mohair straight jacket for you, a canker sore, and all kinds of other wonderful things for Monty Hill. Thank Let's you. say goodbye to Monty. Hello there. Ready, Daphne? Now, you've been up here before. You know how this goes. We pulled a studio audience and said, write down your best answer to this. Blank wafer. You remember, it's 500 for the most popular, 250 for the second, and 100 for the third. All right. Yes. Whom do you want? Blank wafer. Um, Bill. Bill. Yeah. I was flirting with you. I didn't know the answer. I was, oh. uh, vanilla wafer. Vanilla wafer. You got one, Marcia? Well, what about Nabisco wafer? Nabisco wafer. Obviously not. Well, <laughs> it's the best you can offer. That's, That's fine. That's it, honey. Yeah, I, there are Nabisco wafers. Um, Charles. How about this? What? No, no I think so. Sugar wafer. Yes. So you have sugar wafer, Nabisco wafer, and a vanilla wafer. Do you want one of those or one of your own? Well, I first thought of vanilla wafer, so I'll say that. You want to say that? I right, say that. Hey. Vanilla wafer. You got it. Let's see if we have a vanilla wafer under the $100 number. You have a chocolate wafer there. Yummies, I like those too. Yeah, well, maybe vanilla if chocolate's there. Vanilla can be far behind, can it? All right, let's take a look at the next one, please. Oh! Oh! Oh, oh boy, oh, Charles Tom said God. that. <laughs> I'll take your $5 back. Oh, good grief. Oh. I hope you think, Patty Duke saw that. Patty Duke I asked, and are you watching? Was that acting? Lee Strasberg, was that acting? No? Oh, no. Oh, all right, thank you. All right, let's take a look at the $500 response. Vanilla Wafer! Yeah. 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 Drinks. More hot towels, please. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Would you sign this, please? No. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Anything else off. we can do for you, Bill? Newscaster, huh? Okay. Yeah. Newscaster, right. You know where to get your first job. <laughs> yes. All right. We'll uh, go to the rest of this game, the big money part of it, in a moment or so, but right now we want to do a little business with the man. All right? All right, thank you very much. Now, here we go. Daphne, you won the $500 means at least you'll play for us 10 times that amount or $5,000. But remember, you're going to spin the wheel like you did last time. The last time you doubled it up. And now let's see if you can do it again. Here we go. your lucky day. Boy, if I win, think about it. I'll really get this time. I'll tell you that. <laughs> All right. Face me if you would, please. And good luck to you. It's worth $5,000. And this is it. Glowing blank. G-L-O-W-I-N-G. Glowing blank. All right, now you give us the answer that Bill has on the card, and you get $5,000. Daphne, what do you say to that? Glowing flame. Flame. I thought of something close to that, but I, I didn't think of flame. Bill, what did you think of? I really didn't. I, saw, I said glowing complexion. I'm sorry. Glowing complexion. Well, what would be a good answer? Glowing yeah, ember was like, mine. Yeah. Glowing, glowing ember. ember. What else? That's a hard one. Glowing worm. Glowing coal. Glowing coals. Coals, yes. Glowing, glowing, glowing smile. Well, that was close to his. Glowing complexion. Now, how much money does she have? One thousand dollars. Congratulations to Daphne Davis. Thank you for being here. Bye. All right, here we got Phyllis Worthy and Kim Modernest. Applause, applause, applause. How do you do, ladies? Hi there. Welcome. Thank you. We uh, want to get acquainted with you. Kim, let's find out who you are and where you're from and what do you do with your life. Hi, my name is Kim Otterness. I'm with, from Illinois, a little subdivision town called Carroll Stream. 
Uh, I'm a realtor. I recently got married, and my husband's out in the audience. And he's rooting for you. He sure is. All right. Good luck to you, Kim. Thank you. Phyllis, tell us about you, please. Well, I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. Yeah. And uh, my husband and I are taking a vacation. We started a year ago last September. Oh. And we, Long vacation. Well, we bought a motor home, and we've been traveling all over the gorgeous, beautiful USA. I did that one year, and oh. I really loved it. Oh, it's just been super. And we saved the best for last, coming to match game. We're on our way back to Tennessee for Thanksgiving. Wow. All right. Well, good to have you here, Phyllis. Good luck to you. All right, Kim, you have A or B? Um, I'd like A, please. All right, A it is for Kim. A says, Mean Marvin is really mean. How mean is he? Well, instead of tying tin cans to the back of the newlyweds' car, he tied a blank. <laughs> yep. All right. Charles is writing, so I'll read it slowly while he's finishing up. Mean Marvin is really mean. Instead of tying tin cans to the back of the newlyweds' car, he tied a blank. A bomb. A bomb. <laughs> That would be mean. That would be mean. They'd start driving off. It would bounce around a little bit and go off, and bing, where, there they are. They started an early honeymoon. Right. Well, I thought that Marvin was just a little meaner than that. Oh. I said he tied an old boyfriend. An old boyfriend. <laughs> Took him on the honeymoon, yes. All right. Now, I am going on the assumption that if the judges pay strict attention, that this will be inevitably a match. One never knows. A hand grenade. Oh, yes, of course. Bomb and yes. oh, yeah. hand grenade. Yeah. All I'm right, John. on the assumption that the judges will consider this and that. <laughs> Bomb and <laughs> All right. Mean Marvin really mean? Instead of... Uh, Tin cans, he tied blank to the back of the newlyweds' car. The Marvin I know is uh, very mean. Sick, uh, mean, a baby. terrible. Oh, a weirdo. Baby. Really? A weirdo. This exactly. girl is Miss World? Yes. Oh, her teeth are going to fall right out of her head. <laughs> she is a mother of an 18-month-old baby? That's, that's why she said that. And she came up with that answer? Not my son. Really? This is kind of semi-mean. This is not really... I tied the maid of honor. <laughs> the maid of honor. Future bride to be. What did you say, Marsha? You think it's easy being in this seat? No, it is. This is a tougher seat. It's than a tougher seat, and by and large, I do pretty well, don't yes, I? Yes, you do. And I thought this was adorable, but of course, bridesmaid. Bridesmaid. Yes. See, when he's in maid of honor, then bridesmaid gets nothing. Am right. I right or what? Yes. He <laughs> probably copied. Did you copy that answer? Uh, no. You I would... can't read her answers. I can't, can't read my read. own. Oh, I see. All right. So she has two, and we'll get to you in a moment or so. Right now, we have this for you. The other round one question is yours, Phyllis. Hey, you may not know this, but... Well, tell us. Howard Cosell actually received one fan letter last year. That's a lie. No, uh, yes, he did. Unfortunately for Howard, the fan letter was wrapped around a blank. <laughs> All right, Phyllis. You may not know this, but Howard Cosell actually received one fan letter last year. Unfortunately for Howard, the fan letter was wrapped around a blank. His toupee. His toupee? <laughs> when I think of Howard Cosell, all I think of is toupee. Are you sure he wears one? <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Ah, uh, she says his toupee. Bob, what'd you say? I didn't say his toupee. You didn't say that. I uh, thought bomb was such a great answer before, and I didn't have it. I tried it again. Ah, oh, all right. Good for you. Brett? Really? Can you use the same answer two times running? Bomb and or hand. All right. <laughs> Did that cross your mind, Phyllis? A bomb? Yes. Mm -mm. No? It would if you felt the way Gene Rayburn feels about Howard Cosell. <laughs> Dead fish. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh. Getting some wonderful answers here, Phyllis. Oh. Unfortunately for Howard, the fan letter was wrapped around a... A bomb. A bomba. 
All Another right. bomb here. We're bombing out, gang. Another bomb. That's Another bomb uh, Speak for yourself, mister. Sorry, Just speak for yourself, he says we're bombing out. You're ah, not, are you? Not me, Cookie. Two oh. pay. Uh -huh. Thank Kim? you, Marsha. Well, of course, Phyllis. <laughs> and here I love go. your shoulders. Thank you, hon. <laughs> that's from the mail. Remember, I got a lot of mail about my shoulders. Cover them up. Right. Oh, Otherwise, you think there's something funny going on with this. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> now, it's not exactly a stampede, is it? <laughs> I think there are at least five offers out there. Thank you. Kim, uh, you have a choice here of A or B. Since you're ahead, you have to go first. Oh, let me try A again, please. A it is. Everyone except Brett and Charles. Wilma is the world's laziest housewife. She hates scrubbing so much that last night she tried to vacuum her blank. <laughs> yes. All right, Kim. Wilma is the world's laziest housewife. She hates scrubbing so much that last night she tried to vacuum her blank. Her toilet? That would be difficult, wouldn't it? Now, no matter what you say, you'll never please this audience. Say anything, Bob. Anything. All right. See? Well, some of them... Right. Da, da, da. Boy, if I thought I could get away that easy. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, I said teeth. Brushing her teeth. Vacuuming her Stop teeth. It. Yes. Cute. I like that. Vacuumed like her that, teeth. Bob. Yes. Thank you. That's adorable. Thank, Thank you, you say, Miss Marjorie, honey. Oh, is it me? Is yes. it me? Um, one scrubs one's toilet. Uh -huh. yeah. What do you got there? Moving right along with the wrong answers, uh, she vacuumed her dog. Her dog? <laughs> I'm on a good roll here. This is a good roll. I think it's... <laughs> Dogs okay, love not sure they went... What, somebody booed me and somebody ate me? What some booed and some ate. Well, they, they, go they go both ways. Right. Yeah, they go both ways. It's one of those audiences. You know. All right. Marsha. Jean. Oh, Marsha. Oh, Jean. Oh, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Oh, Jean. Marsha. <laughs> Wasn't it wonderful? Yes. Now, I'd have said toilet, but it's not tasteful, and God knows this is a tasteful show. <laughs> so I said bathtub. That's good. Thank you. All right. Three to one's the score. Phyllis, you need two to tie and three to win. Ready? Okay. Did you hear about the ugly Ulfria look-alike contest? I'll tell you about it. A blank one. <laughs> ugly Ulfria look-alike contest. Kind of impossible. It's one that we made up because we didn't want to offend anyone of the feminine gender. Very smart. I think it's about time. No more ugly Edmonds. That's right. That's Good. all out. Oh, Freya, actually, isn't it? Don't say it yet, Phyllis. You waiting for me? All right, here we go, Phyllis. It's about this ugly Alfria look-alike contest. A blank one. Gorilla. Gorilla. All right. A gorilla, Bob. Well, Brad, I think I'm going back to the small printing. I said a dog. A dog. Good answer. All right, go. Good enough for Phyllis. Hello, Bob. Man, he's as smart as a whip, cute as a button, clever, intelligent, witty, all of that dog. Gotcha. Brett's a former Miss World. Really? Miss Out of This World, Basset Hound. A Basset Hound. All right, now you must match the uh, remaining two, Marjorie and Bill, to stay in the game and achieve a tie, Phyllis. What have you got? This is up to the judges, but it's very close. Same family. That's right. Baboon. That matches. Yeah, yeah. No! Yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 judges. Yay! Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's that, Bill? Oh, yeah. I'm half I had a monkey dog. It's a monkey, monkey dog. dog. It's a monkey dog. Where's the monkey? It's a monkey. monkey. Yeah, I wanted to monkey. I'd have them both covered there. I'd have a monkey <laughs> and a dog. Let's Give me, they come down and take your place in the blue spot little there, if you would. And, uh... Yeah. Now, Phyllis, we're going to roll you around, but we'll roll you back later for game number two, all right? Great. Right. All right. Say goodbye temporarily, and now we'll roll this message for you. Here we go. Time to say goodbye. Goodbye. Well, and uh, we hope all of you will join us tomorrow. Will you come back tomorrow? Yeah. Maybe and maybe not. Well, come back. Listen, you going to get a little sleep tonight? I'm fine. You are? Good. 
You were nodding off there a little while ago, really? Charles. Yeah. He wants, yeah. literally, this is the truth, America. I might America. be suffering from a strange illness and have all these years kept it from the audience and my people, my really? public. Parvo virus? No, <laughs> similar to that. Oh, really? Sleeping I... sickness. No, what is it called? No. Aren't you glad you turned to me? You had six yeah. people and yeah. you turned to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you, she keeps interrupting you. We were having an interesting colloquy here, but she keeps, in, keeps interrupting you. Now, what, what is your... <laughs> What is this disease you're suffering from? Car Nothing. Sickness. Car sickness. Breaditis. Oh, breaditis. Oh, yeah, Bread it's a terrible disease. Join us next time at the match game. Gene Rayburn here. Goodbye. Some of our contestants will receive elegantly styled watches by Jules Jurgensen. Ladies' quartz analog with rectangular case, six diamonds, mesh bracelet, plus a gents' quartz analog day date and carrot clad case with matching bracelet from Jules Jurgensen. And beautiful sweepstakes carpeting from Galaxy Carpet Mills features Nankalong Nylon with Scotch Guard. Galaxy sweepstakes in ten contemporary colors. And have you noticed your nails lately? Buff them to a brilliant no polish shine with nail buffs. The nail treatment for the whole family. The nail buff by Terrace of Springfield, Massachusetts. And from across the Pacific comes Hawaiian Tropic natural tanning lotions and oils, plus this attractive Hawaiian Tropic inflatable rack. And there's a chore boy for every chore. Plastic pops, clean casseroles, and no stick surfaces without scratching. Chore boy, plastic pops. More scour to you. Production. Program is edited for broadcast. Get ready to match the stars from Trapper John, Charles Siebert, Brett Summer, Charles Nelson Riley, from Vegas, Phyllis Davis, from Mark and Mindy, Robert Donner, and Marsha Wallace. As we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game. And now, here's the star of Match Game, Gene Raven. Shall we? Are you ready? Yes, I am. What would you like to do? I would like to play the game, the oh. audience poll. Oh, all right. Well, then you have to step around down here and join me on the stage here and take your little place on the blue dot, and we'll have a go at it. Because you won the game, Connie, and uh, you're going to have a go at the really big money now. This is the first game you played, right? Yes. All right. Let's see how you do. We polled the studio audience, as we said, write down your best answer to this. Turn off the blank. Remember, $500 for matching the most pants. Turn, turn off. Turn off. Turn off. Oh, turn off. Turn off. Of Should have worn turn, your specs, not Turn off. Turn of the turn blank. Turn off. The... She says, turn mm. of the back, and right there it is. Right there. Okay. How? What's that? Now, wait a minute. Now, one thing you have to understand, it don't do no good to talk unless I hold a mic in front of your mouth, you see. So when I hold it in front of your mouth, then you can start talking. How about Marsha? Oh, gosh. I think Brett was born around the turn of the century. <laughs> I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. Now you're going to be a sorry woman for that. Oh, That's one. I just Remember want... that we room together. Who else? Okay, Brandon, Brett, where? I'll give you your chance now. Well, I couldn't say this about Marsha, but... <laughs> No, Turn happened. of the screw. It's <laughs> <laughs> a famous play. Charles, can you do better than that? <laughs> Henry James wrote Turn of the Screw, my dear. Oh, that's right. Get right. with the newer things, I told you. <laughs> okay, a very moving, poignant one. Turn of the tables. <laughs> Not that poignant. Turn of the road. Turn of the Road? That song by Roger Miller. Turn of the Road. Turn of the Road. <laughs> <laughs> so you have Turn of the Road, Turn of the Screw, and Turn, turn of the Century. Of the Do you want one of those or one of your own? I'll go with Marsha's Turn of the Century. Yeah. All right. <laughs> turn of the Century. Let's see if it's under the $100 response. Uh, turn of the Dial. Right. I hear him clicking all over the country now, even as we're on the air this moment there. 
May we see the next one, please? Turn of the see, screw. You There's Henry fun. James. You've got to go get educated, kid. All right. <laughs> Last chance. Here we go. Yeah. You got it. Now, Connie, you've got the $500. That means at least you'll play for us 10 times that amount, or $5,000. <laughs> However, remember, you will spin the wheel, and if you get lucky, you will play for $10,000. Step right up here, and uh, can you reach that peg right there? Give it a spin, and away you go. On bent. the cusp. Yeah, you were on the cusp. That's right, Robert. You bent the. Oh, that's uh, Robert. Oh, that Robert. <laughs> oh, there's Robert down there. Bob, as we like to call him. Yes. Okay, step right down here, if you would, please. Okay. And here we go. No, no, I'm hurt. You sit here. Oh. <laughs> oh, Robert, she's a parson's I'm wife. A Be careful. <laughs> I'll do a twist. <laughs> Are you ready? Yes, I am, sir. Okay, Bob, here we go. Good luck. Blank paints. P A I N T S. Blank paints. Now, if you give us the answer that he has on the card, we give you $5,000. What do you say to that? Well, I'm not sure about this, but knowing Robert, I would say finger paints. Why would you say a thing like that about Robert? Well, I was going to say oil paints, but he's just a little different. <laughs> in, in the best sense, of the never met she's this girl before in my she life. She says you're a flake. <laughs> she's right. Just because a man makes a living in a dress and boots doesn't mean he's strange. <laughs> right. Could have been oil paints. Could have been water. There's a lot of answers that could have been. Finger. <laughs> All right, Connie, you can climb back up there on the bandwagon. Yeah. She's very excited. We'll give her a chance to compose herself, Alzali, and you can tell this audience again about you, where you're from, and all that sort of thing. I'm Alzali Colbert, or Colbert, whatever, and I'm a reason. <laughs> now, wait a minute. You don't know how to pronounce your name? <laughs> You say Colbert or well, Colbert? Well, in, in Florida it's Colbert, in Hollywood it's Colbert, you know. Colbert. <laughs> <laughs> well, the place is full of flakes, Florida right? Florida is my there? sister. <laughs> <laughs> I love her laugh. <laughs> I'm originally from West Palm Beach, Florida. <laughs> And I work for the L.A. Unified School District. L.A. Unified School District. Yes, and I love to sing and tell nasty jokes. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> While you are watching this commercial, she is going to talk to me. <laughs> Buddy, would you get the pep up pills, please? For I mean, we can't have these dead contestants lying around like this. <laughs> Alzali, you ready to play? Yes, I think so. What would you like? I think I'll take B. B? <laughs> I B is everyone... the funniest letter in the alphabet. It's hilarious. Is it? After K. What is she so depressed about? I don't know. <laughs> What's your problem, Alzali? Here it is, Alzali. Judy said, I'll never go back to that rotten dentist. Hey, that idiot, he tried to use a blank to clean my teeth. <laughs> tried to use a blank to clean my teeth. 
Now we're ready, Elsley. Judy said I'll never go back to that rotten dentist. That idiot, he tried to use a blank to clean my teeth. A Brillo soap pad. A Brillo soap pad. <laughs> Very good. She laughs good and she gives good answers. Some dentist you got out of West Palm Beach. A broom. A broom. <laughs> that would hurt. Hey, wait a minute. Yeah. The little darling is obviously too smart for the room. I said dust rag. Dust rag. <laughs> Brillo is excellent. I'll blow it out your ear. You heard me. I said cold water all. Cold water all. <laughs> So far, no Brillo over here or steel wool or anything like that. No, I said electric sander. Electric sander, that would be painful and stupid of the dentist, too, wouldn't it? What'd you say, Bob? I don't think they're going to like this one. Whisk broom. <laughs> Whisk broom. <laughs> right. They're turning. Now, Bob, you sit down there. You're a major TV star. You get up here and sit down. Don't let them people intimidate you. Right. You so, tell them, fat lady. That's right. <laughs> Okay, get ready. Mop. <laughs> they liked yours, but they didn't like theirs there. Yeah. Connie, you ready? I ready. Be over there. Nancy said, I just read a revised version of a fairy tale, and it's really revised. Instead of yelling, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair, the prince yelled, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your blank. <laughs> Well, read fairy tale it helps. Go ahead, read it aloud. Nancy said, I just read a revised version of a fairy tale. It's really revised. Instead of yelling, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair, the prince yelled, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your blank. See, now I fill in the blank. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. This is very difficult. I would say your rope ladder. What was your first you? thought? I thought of escape hatch. Oh! Oh, they like right. the second one. What, what do you got there, Charles? What could they possibly have against rope ladders? I can't take credit for this. Brett gave me this. Drawers. Drawers! <laughs> Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your sup hose. <laughs> I said your Claire Oil, Claire Oil, son of a gun hair dryer. Claire Oil, son of a gun hair dryer. Why did you? The... Thank you. Give it to him. Give it That's to him. the brand name, son of a gun. Cute. I it's see. like a gun. I use it myself. All right. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your clothes. Your clothes. It's okay. What'd you say, Bob? I won't go to filth. Moral code. Let down your moral code. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? It's embarrassing to sit right next to him, a man of his principle. Because I went right for it. You did? Panties. All right. <laughs> did you think of that? Well, is it? You didn't think of that? No comment. No comment. All right. Now, let's see. Since we have a tie score and she went first last time, you go first this time. I'll choose A. All right, Connie. Jackie, the comic said, my wife is a real jerk. Today she held a garage sale and sold a blank. Rum chop. <laughs> Come on, Chuck. Jackie, the comic said, my wife is a real jerk. Today she held a garage sale and sold a blank. I have six chances. The garage. Yeah. All right, what do you say, Charlie boy? Garage? Garage. Garage. Garage! Okay, Connie, we're now traveling on the same road to stardom. Garage. Okay. Car. The car! <laughs> Had a garage sale and sold a car. Car is an excellent answer. Do not boo car, otherwise, Johnny Olson single-handedly will eject you forcibly. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Car. <laughs> yeah. Let, Let 
That goes do triple a happy for me, gang. All right, that's three cars. What do you say? Do da do da garage. Garage. Three cars and three garages. Elsa Lee, you need three to tie and four to win. Mean Marvin is so mean. How he is he? Instead of a cage, he keeps his pet bird in a blank. Ready? Yeah. Well, don't stare in space that way. <laughs> mean Marvin is so mean, instead of a cage, he keeps his pet bird in a... <laughs> Gee, you in, a, Me too. in a dog house? In a dog house. <laughs> Well, the bird wouldn't be too uncomfortable there. We were thinking of some place where the bird would not be very happy. Yes, but it's still difficult. I said in an oven. In an oven. Oh. He'd be unhappy there. Yes. That's all right. An oven or a... Now, listen, I've got a bone to pick with you. What? I have been staring into space for seven years, <laughs> and suddenly you turn on me and tell me not to stare into space. All of a sudden, you're not listening. All of a sudden, it's over between us. Everybody is finished, <laughs> and you're standing there with your card poised. I know. That's what it's I mean. I've been doing that for seven years. It's not out of the slot. I've been doing and that for seven years. years. That's it. That's, 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 that's We're ready to go. Now, yes. All of a sudden, it turns. No, I hate that question. Me too. Everybody oh, hates this question. Hey, Ira. We should take that question back and get this woman a decent question. <laughs> Swimming pool. That would be bad for the bird Betty because it would White drown. would really hate that because it would drown the right. devil. A cat house. Well, keep the bird in a cat house. Right. And a good one. Mean Marvin is so mean, instead of a cage, he keeps his pet bird in a blank. And uh, she said dog house, but anything like a drawer, a chest of drawers, or anything for the but bird I would be saw. unhappy, it'd be all right. What have you got? How about a box? In a box, that's okay, but that means Connie Carmani wins the game. What do you have there, Bob? In a kitty little box. Kitty little box in the freezer. All right, come on down, Connie. Have another go for big money. Well, you'll be going now. Thank you. Nice seeing you. Nice to see you. It was a pleasure to meet you and to have you here, and I hope they send you a lot of nice gifts from the match then. Goodbye. Bye. Now we'll do a little business with America. Here we are. If you'd like to come to the studio and see Match Game in person, write to us. And close the self-addressed stamp envelope and mail to tickets. Match Game, CBS Television City, 7800 Beverly Boulevard, Los Angeles, California, 90036. Now, Connie here is very happy because she has already won $5,500. What plans do you have for that loot? None and yet I wouldn't let myself think about what I would do. You can buy was... your goat, hon. <laughs> my horses. You can my... buy your goat and your horse. Oh, oh you well, could buy a whole bunch of horses. I'll have to check with my and husband. And a telephone. Don't is he forget here? A telephone. Yes, he is. He's right. Is it all right if she buys a horse? Where is he? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> You're a parson, for heaven's sake. All right, you don't get none of the money if she can't buy a horse. She was gonna throw in a little for you, but now it's all off. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not, I see. No. All right, here we go. We pulled the studio audience, and we said, write down your best answer to this. The blank wolf. Remember, you get $500 for matching the most popular, $250 for the second most popular, and 100 for the third. Whom do you want? How about Charles? The big bad wolf. Yeah. There's one. I'll have to ask Robert, too, since he was so good to me the last time. Yes, and you remember that. Let her buy what she wants. That's right. Uh, the Lone Wolf. The Lone Wolf. Okay, Bob. And how about... Just Charlie. Mister. The Sea. Very yes. good. Oh, excellent. The Sea Wolf. All right. <laughs> they have the sea wolf. They don't know. See, they don't know. John the sea wolf. Garfield, no, right. no. Robinson. Jack London. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Jack London wrote it. Not well. He John Garfield it. was in it there. John. All right. The sea wolf, the big I bad wolf, and the lone the wolf. Idols. Those are the three you've got. You may choose one of those or think up one of your own. I think I'm partial to children's stories, so the big bad wolf. Yay! Let's find out if we have the big bad wolf up there, and if so, where? Let's take a look at the $100 response. 
The Boy Who Cried Wolf. That was oh, another I children's story. Him. Yes. All right, let's take a look at the next one, please. The Werewolf. And nothing there that they gave you. That surprises yeah, me because yeah. I thought their answers were pretty good. All right, we're looking for the big bad wolf. Let's see if we've got it under the big number. Yeah. Very good. Connie, you now have another $500 that gives you in cash. Kissing everyone in Hollywood, Reverend. <laughs> All over the place, Reverend. Now, you have a total of cash in hand here of $6,000, and you can play for another $5,000 right now and end up with a total of $11,000 if you get another. Right. Good. Good luck. But you could, luck, no, you could luck. end up with a lot more than that. You could Just end up with 15000 You can get a whole... 16000 <laughs> Just slid by that star. All right, you are playing for $5,000 with Phyllis Davis. Are you ready, my dear? Mm-hmm. All right, face me, and this is it. Blank vegetable. Blank vegetable. Now, Phyllis has given her answer and put it on the card in the slot. If you give us the same one, if you match her, you get another $5,000. What do you say? I think it would be a miracle if they matched. I'll say fresh vegetable. Oh, wow. Well, that would be two in a row for her if she got that. She won the $5,000 last time. That means she'd win another $5,000, end up with $11,000. Wouldn't that be a miracle? It sure uh, would. It sure would. Because <laughs> I put fresh vegetable. Uh -huh. Church of Miracles, which will be built right here. <laughs> We're the foundation of the Reverend's new church out there. Thank you, Charles. And now we've got this message for you. <laughs> A lot of excitement here. Thank you, one and all. You were wonderful. Boy, Gene Reverend, join us next time for the match game. Goodbye. Today's consolation prizes are... A seven-piece performer gourmet cutlery set with extra sharp chrome stainless steel blades and ebony Fleetwood handles. Just wash the safe from Washington Forge. An Amcor Fresh and Air electronic air ionizer and smoke odors, dust, pollen, bacteria in your automobile. Fresh and air for fresher air everywhere. And the walk and La Choy Chinese food. Let your meal swing American with La Choy bean sprouts, vegetables, water chestnuts, bamboo shoots, and soy sauce. And a Betty Crocker cookbook can make someone happy with new improved super moist. Now, even better than before, other cakes may be moist, but they're not super moist. And a honey dish and pure sous vide honey. No synthetic or artificial ingredients. You haven't tried honey till you've tried the natural goodness of sous vide honey. And a baby bath and changing pad plus diaperine baby washcloth. Moisture packed towels for lanolin to clean and condition. Keep your baby better than clean with diaperine. And a pen and pencil set and liver snipes. Treats for dogs, the real liver. No wonder dogs really love them. Liver snipes. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game, a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. This program is edited for broadcast. Get ready to match the stars. Fred Travelina, Fred Summers, Charles Olson Reddy, from Ladies Man, Betty Kennedy, from Walk and Mindy, Bob Gunner, and Fanny Flagg as we play the star-studded big money match game.
And now, here's the star of Match Game, Gene Redmond! Hello, friends. Hello, hello, hello. hello. Welcome, one and all. Where's your good humor truck, sweetheart? Yeah. All right, let's have all the ice cream jokes and all. I'd like a chocolate with sprinkles. <laughs> Where's your bell? Oh, no, no, wait a minute. The name of the company that supplies my wardrobe, after all, is called the Palm Beach Company. Uh -oh. And once in a while, you have to wear one of their old traditional things, uh -oh. and that's what they All right, give me an umbrella. Good suits. Well, no, I think, I think this is splendid. And, and Keats Tyler, who does uh, the work that Dayton Anderson does when he's down here, really put it all together very nicely there. What, Doctor? Uh, what? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Doctor. Can I have a beach chair? Throw, give us your best shot, Fred. I think that's a wonderful suit, and if I'm reelected, I'm going to wear that myself. <laughs> I love you. I love you. He's wonderful. Now, let's say hello to Tammy Adams and Charlene Bennett. Applause, applause. Applause, applause. Oh, thank you. Let's find out who you are and where you're from. Let be, we'll begin with you, Charlene. Okay, my name is Charlene Bennett, and I'm from Los Angeles. Uh, I'm a reservation sales agent for a major airlines, and I'm here today with my husband, Al Bennett. Al Bennett is here mm -hmm. in the audience. Yes, he is. All right, we'll get acquainted with him a little bit later. Tammy, how about you? I'm originally from Riverside. Right now, I'm living in Santa Monica. I'm a single lady. I like <laughs> I like skating, uh, dancing, and motorcycle riding. Right. And right now, I'm training to be a videotape operator. Yeah. Now wait a minute. Let me move wait. that mic because you have a very soft voice and you're talking past it here. Uh, let's see. What can we do about that? Now wait a minute. Now hold on. I'll fix this. Oh, come on. Now wait a minute. No, no. You see, she was leaning forward and her she was talking there, and the mic is here. Uh -huh. So what we have to do is cut off. Is <laughs> Just move you over to the left a little bit. Do I get kisses? Yes, yeah, sure. Hey, I love it. <laughs> All right. Cut. That's a smooth move. Can you hear her now? Oh. All we right. can hear you. And presently, right now, I'm a lady butcher. A lady butcher? In Santa Monica? Uh, in Westwood. Really? Yes. I'll have to go Every over and buy lady. a pound of hamburger or something. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> a little bit of liver, whatever. Listen, Charlene, you go first. You got A or B here. Okay, I'll take B, please. B. All right. Hilda said it's tough being married to mean Marvin. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'll, you will know when. I understand your enthusiasm, but... Uh, Is that enthusiasm? A little... Well, yeah, they will they'll say, how's them? Tough being married to mean Marvin. You just made me stick my head in the blank to see how it works. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Charlene, here we go. Hilda said it's tough being married to mean Marvin. He just made me stick my head in the blank to see how it works. The oven. The oven. All right. <laughs> the oven. Well, I have a form of oven. I said the microwave oven. Micro oven. Yay! All right, there you go. See, I'm only trying to help. He put it back in the slot. It certainly is, he, Holly. No. He didn't have an R in his micro. <laughs> I mean, he didn't have an R in his micro. He didn't have an R in his Where micro. Where do you keep your R's? I don't know. I keep them in Japan. <laughs> thank a lot of money. <laughs> That's a good answer, uh, oven, isn't it? Yes. Nice. I don't have it. Oh. Ooh, blender. Blender. Put Anything. Absolutely no musical talent whatsoever. <laughs> Dispose of. So we have one for Charlene so far. Now, Betty, what do you say? You just made me stick my head in the oven to see how it works. Okay, Charlene, I said Evan. Good for you. Good for Charlene. All right, Bob. Oh, Van. Uh huh, and a nice picture of one, too. <laughs> Gas or electric? I beg your pardon. <laughs> uh, uh, microwave oven? Microwave oven, there it is. Yeah, she got off to a very good start here for round one question, which are usually tougher. Tim said, when I was a kid, we were really poor. Oh, poor, poor, poor. Ready. You know, you know how some people buy half a watermelon well we used to go to the market and buy half a blank 
Isn't that a good one? Tall. Okay. That's good. Very okay. good. Okay. Oh, Tim said, when I was a kid, we were really poor. You know the way some people go to the store and buy half a watermelon? Well, we used to go to the market and buy half a blank. Half a cantaloupe. Oh. Half a cantaloupe. Oh. See, the thing is, Tammy, you can indeed go to the store and buy half a cantaloupe. And we would have hoped you would have said something that you can't go to the store and buy a half of. Hello, Fred. Hello, this is Lawrence Swirling. Before I got hot with my group, I used to buy half an egg Very folks. Very good answer. Egg <laughs> folks. Half an saying? egg. Half an egg. You, Wonderful adorable? answer. Yes, you he is adorable. Button. I said half a lemon. Half a lemon. Another thing that you wouldn't buy. Oh, Charles, tell us what the problem so sick is. Sick of his tears. Shh. Now wait a minute. Those those are not crocodile tears. Those are real tears. Thank you, James. I can tell good acting when I see. It. <laughs> I had the saddest. Oh, we were if so you're poor. Answer of all. Yes. Take your glasses. Penny candy. Just to buy a half a penny. Oh. Give me half a penny's worth of candy. Oh, that's sad. May I say something? No, let's all have a little cry if it's now. Not with that joke, with that joke, that's what he'd be crying over. <laughs> <laughs> I hope Patty Duke was watching. Here <laughs> <laughs> she was, she switched channels. The Academy of Television Arts and Sciences was watching, and you're going to get an Emmy for that performance. Best be daytime actor in the Emmy. category. <laughs> what do you say, Betty Kennedy? Okay, I said half of a grape. Half a grape? Yes. Excellent. Yes. Hey. <laughs> People go to the store sometime, buy half a watermelon. While we were poor, you used to go to the market and buy half a... Uh... Would you believe it? What? Grape mines. Grape mines go in the same direction. <laughs> grape mines. So grape much mines. for that. Yes, right. You liked her answer, yeah. you hated mine. Yes. <laughs> well, you see, if you drop your... If you'd unbutton this button here... Just unbutton and drop your thing. And you will go this way. All right, all right. All right. If that's what it takes. That's what it takes. Can they just take half of it? Yeah, half of it. <laughs> if this works. Yeah. When you works. give your next answer with that shoulder exposed. I'm going to try it. They're going to cheer and holler and scream. Just wait till the next round there. All right, Fanny, your, your turn. I'd like a little applause on my answer. Oh, oh no. <laughs> no, I, I said grape. I'm sorry. Grape it is. Good answer. All right. So there's the end of round one. Lady was going to round two in a moment or so. Now this for you. Here we go. Round two. Final round of this game. And Charlene, since you're ahead, you'll go first. Four to nothing is the score. Gene, I'll take B again, please. B again. No. Two people play. Brett and Charles. Oh, no. Yes. Do I have to stay this way? Yes. <laughs> Until your next question. <laughs> All right, Brett and Charles, are you listening? His yeah. hair, his hair's awful long for a man. <laughs> Back home, we'd kill a man like that. <laughs> but that's a mite pretty shoulder, I'll say that. <laughs> oh, all right. Shall we? But would still kill a man, even though he had a mite pretty shoulder, and I should have quit it while I was ahead. Yeah. I don't know that. Certainly should have, sweetheart. We'd kill him, but it'd take a long time, wouldn't it? All right, Dan said, that's an old joke. Dan said, this T-shirt craze is really wild. <laughs> Thank you. He said, I just saw a girl with an oak tree on her front. She had the biggest blanks I ever saw. <laughs> Right, ready. All right, Charlene. Dan said this T-shirt craze is really wild. I just saw a girl with an oak tree on her front. She had the biggest blanks I ever saw. Acorns. Acorns it is. Oak tree. She said acorns. She did? Yep. Well, good gravy, Marie. The biggest little acorns on the island. Right. I used to know a girl in the village named Marie Benedetti. They used to call them torpedoes on the radio. <laughs> but <eight months. laughs> Marie Benedetti. Now, Tammy, here's the way it is. Mm. The best you can do is achieve a tie. You can do that by matching all six stars. This is the question. Right. Weak William is so weak. Oh, I'll tell you, he even needs help to close his blank. Here we go. 
Tammy, weak William is so weak, he even needs help to close his blank. His fly. His fly. <laughs> you know, it's possible that we might get a tie here if everyone well, says fly. this is Ernestine's Lynn. I was thinking about hearing ah. the ball uh, heel, so I said eyes. Close his eyes. Oh. So that means Charlene wins again. What everybody else has? Eyes. Fly, fly, fly. All right, come on down, Charlene. Well, you had four out of the six there. Tammy, and then you made a nice run at it. And we're going to wheel you off now and wheel you back later for game number two. Tammy Adams will be back later. Now we have Charlene here for the big Superman. Here we go for the big money for you, my dear. We polled a studio audience, nice, smart bunch like these in the studio at this instant when we said, write down your best answer to this. Let us blank. I got it. You get $500 if you give us the answer that audience wrote down most frequently. Mm -hmm. Then for saying the answer they wrote down second most often, you get $250. And then for matching the third, $100. Three of the six stars are permitted to help, and you call them one at a time. Anyone you want. Betty. Oh, God, she called on me. I can't believe it. Okay, let us pray. Yeah. Let us pray. Fanny. He, Fanny? Hi. Uh, let us leave. Let us leave? Yeah, well, I'm sorry. All right. And Fred. Fred. Uh, let us... I can say whatever. Whatever, whatever you want, and it's a verbal response, Fred. Let us begin. Let us begin. Oh, that's good. So we have let us begin, I like let us let pray, us and let us leave. Now, at this point, <laughs> you have the option of choosing one of those or giving us one of your own. I'll go with let us pray. Yeah. Let us pray. That's Betty's answer. All right, let's find out if let us pray is up there, and if so, where? Will we go down to the bottom and reveal the $100 number? Let us go. Well, that would be let us leave. May we see the next one, please? Let us entertain you. Oh, I forgot about that, didn't we? Now, here's a go at the $500 response, which says... Now, Charlene, you got $500, and I'll tell you what that means right after we tell America about this. Oh, Bob, you're an animal. An animal. All right, now no. here we are with Charlene. She just won the $500. That means the least she can play for now is uh, 10 times that amount, or $5,000. However, if she gets a lucky spin in the wheel, she'll double it up, play for $10,000. So step right up there and grab that peg, give it a spin. We'll root for a double, okay? Here we go. That's a powerful spin. Are you ready, sir? Yes. All right. Remember, you'll write your answer. She'll give us a... That's right. They're going to love your answer. Here I'm going to love my answer. A bad blank. A bad blank. I'll just show it to him. All right. Now, if you give us the answer that Bob's written on the card, you get $5,000. Now, what do you say to that? A bad boy. A bad boy. I am a bad boy. Well, no. That's... No? I am a bad boy. You are a bad boy? Why Either that you... or you're a bad girl. <laughs> uh, I am just sick about this. I said a bad dream. A bad dream. Well, that's a good okay, response. That's hard. He's drawing both good. Bad boy. Where were you when I needed good. you? Yes. <laughs> it's a bad day up here. <laughs> now we're going to bring your opponent back. Play game number two. Here comes Tammy Adams. As soon as it's back, we're going to get back on. Right over here. There you go. Welcome back, Tammy. And if you're set, we'll go to game number two. Do you want A or B? B, please. B it is. B was good for Charlene last time. Here it is. Big Gus. Big Gus the gangster is really big. 
Uh, he's so big, instead of a pistol, he carries a blank in his pocket. <laughs> instead of a pistol, he carries a blank in his pocket. Well, they say it's times are changing, but God, I can't see it. Damn it. Wait, I... Big Gus the Gangster is really big. Instead of a pistol, he carries a blank in his pocket. Machine gun. A machine gun. Machine gun. An excellent response if he was a gangster, because that's what they carried. In violin cases, yes, usually. True. Unfortunately for me, I said cannon. Yeah. Uh -huh. Cannon is good. She wants a machine gun. Tammy, that's a fabulous, fabulous answer, darling. Absolutely fabulous. I try to raise that. Machine gun. Machine gun. Oh. All right, you got one. Cannon. A cannon. Oh. Cannon. <laughs> All right, Betty. Instead of a pistol, Big Gus is so big he carries a blank in his pocket. She said machine gun. Oh, I was thinking of a long, tall Texan type of gangster, so I put rifle. A rifle. Winchester rifle there. What'd you say, Bob? I was thinking of a rather large man. I said, Canon. Canon. <laughs> you got a yay, even though your shoulder was not bared. Are you aware of that? Hello. <laughs> You've made me so happy. <laughs> Fanny? Well, I thought he was really big. I said he carried a hired gunman in his pocket. A hired gunman? <laughs> Very good, Patty Boy. Cute little fella, stuck him right in there, and every once in a while, put his head out. All right. Ready, Charlene? Ready. This is it. The doctor said, this patient is really a lush. Uh-oh. How lush is he? <laughs> this patient is really a lush. Instead of tonsils, he's got blanks. <laughs> he's really a lush? Yep. Okay, thanks. <laughs> See how she copied my answer, Uncle Janie? She's copying it. She's an answer. And I'm first. And I'll get the last. Oh, no. We're going to reverse it now. We're going to start with fading. We're going to go up this way, and you'll be next to last. An angel pass. Thank you, Uncle Janie. An angel pass. <laughs> I wonder if it ever occurred to people at home how much easier it is to play the game if you're sitting above certain people. Yes, of course. <laughs> the doctor said, this patient is really a lush. Instead of tonsils, he's got blanks. Beer bottles. <laughs> Beer bottles, eh? Your one is safe, Tammy. <laughs> All right. It doesn't matter because she changed it, Uncle Gene. She changed it? Yes, and I don't mind telling you. She changed it because there are the two of them, and she changed it. So go back to your regular way, and she'll be punished anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, friend, what do you say? Well, I just said that I can... Oh, golly! <laughs> <laughs> he, had, he had a guy like that at the barracks that had seen problem. Yes. And I looked in his mouth one night to see if he could sing. Yeah. And he had cocktails in there. Cocktails in his mouth! He who laughs best yeah. laughs last. Yes. Yeah. This is Charles's answer. Swizzle fit. I got you. And all of us. <laughs> you know, it's amazing she can get so ornery and not lose her retainer. <laughs> it's too bad you didn't change yours and have something like no, maraschino was... cherries, you see. I couldn't spell that. Couldn't spell that. <laughs> maraschino. One of the most mispronounced words of the English language. All right, Betty, go. Instead of olives, uh, tonsils, he's got blanks. He had shot glasses. Shot glasses. That's another good one. All right, Bob. Flasks. Flasks. Marvelous. Beer bottles. Flasks. What do you got, Fanny? Well, in this day of age of exposing people's little quirks, you know, Brett does a strange thing. She pretends to steal answers from Charles to throw the audience off. She looks down here. Olives. Olives. <laughs> <laughs> There's round one, one to nothing in Tammy's favor. Now this for you. Gene Weber noise, I said the mess game from the front and the front. Some contestants will receive cooking and cleanup are quick and easy with West Bend's cookware, bakeware, and electric skillet. All surface is Silverstone. Silverstone spells durability. A calculator and raid indoor fogger. It's room filling fog, kills roaches, fleas, and other bugs dead by the thousands. A pair of beautiful digital watches for a man and woman. Timex, we're making time look good. A nice bucket and relaxing at home. Drink sparkling pink champagne any day when you feel special. Tastes like bubbly wine. Pink champagne, malt liquor from Iroquois brands. From Hearts Mountain, gifts for your dog or cat, including the Hearts 2-in-1 Plus collar that kills six and fleas for up to five months. A tray and Torette's, the breath deodorant. 
Helps your mouth's own freshening power eliminate bad breath. Costs a little more, but it's worth it. Clorox, the breath deodorant. And a calculator and off, and off. How that's mosquito repellent. Off really works with the most effective mosquito repellent ingredient that money can buy. Right now, don't miss the show that gives you money for a song. The all-new $100,000 Name That Tune, followed by Wheel of Fortune at 5.30, right here on Channel 7. A Mark Goodson, Bill Totman production. The program was ended in the broadcast. Get ready to match the stars. Fred Travelina, Brett Summers. Charles Nelson Riley from Ladies Man, Betty Kennedy, from Moulton Mindy, Bob Donner, and Fanny Flagg, as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game. And now, here's the star of Match Game, Gene Rammer. Hi, John. Thank you, friends. Is everyone ready? Yes. Yes, yes. yes Splendid. Thank you. Good. All right. You wore... She almost wore. She almost wore the dress backwards. <laughs> now, here are, we have Tammy Adams and Charlene Bennett. Now, uh, Tammy, please refresh our memories about where you're from and all that sort of I'm thing. I'm a single lady. I live in Santa Monica. Yep, and I you're a butcher. Westwood is a butcher. Yes. <laughs> Charlene? I'm from Los Angeles, and I'm a reservation sales agent for a major airline. All right, and she won the first game, Charlene yes. did, and she has $500 to her credit. And now we're in uh, round two of game number two. And Tammy, since you're ahead, you'll go first. B, please. B it is. It's one to nothing. It's a, a close score here. Oops. <laughs> 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 now, yeah. Muggsy said, I went to the world's toughest school. I'll tell you, the only way you could get any attention was to blank your teacher. I don't mind. I know that. Tammy, Muggsy said, I went to the world's toughest school. The only way you could get any attention was to blank your teacher. Slug your teacher? Slug. All right. Well, that would... It's like the old joke about the guy and the mule, you know, what are you beating the mule for? Yes. You know, this is Sylvester Stallone. Hey, over your way, Jim. Over your way, Jim. Curious. Hey, Sebastian, did you ever slug a teacher? No, I, uh, I try to learn in good English. You know, I used to punch him. Punch is a that's slug? Right, yeah, yeah, that's one. <laughs> All that rough stuff gets me very nervous. <laughs> Attack. Attack. All right. See, attack would not necessarily involve punching. You could butt the teacher with your head and knock her out that way. What'd you say, Betty? Well, uh, the toughest school in town, the only way to get attention was to blank your teacher. Well, pinch, I wouldn't pinch him and I wouldn't slag him, but I'd sure slap him. Slap. <laughs> slap is not a slug. It's not? No. Well, I'll show you the difference. No. <laughs> <laughs> Can I hold her? Yes. <laughs> Ah, you grab now, that her. was an off-the-shoulder no, 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 remark. You grab her. No, here, now, this is a slap. You see? That didn't and hurt, did it? And a slag is like this? Yes. Oh, fight him. <laughs> fight him. Fight him. Go ahead. <laughs> That's a slug, right. Okay, there's a difference. Yes, there is a difference. <laughs> Bob? Well, it all depends upon how you want to call attention to oneself. I don't know how to draw a slug. <laughs> Said kiss. A kiss. <laughs> the only way to get attention is to kiss your teacher. Well. It'll draw a crowd. Yes, it would. <laughs> Fanny, what'd you say to this? I don't know, I was just sitting here thinking, when I was young and pretty, I used to sit in that seat. <laughs> <laughs> and I used to wear red dresses and get attention now and push down here. <laughs> pretty soon I'll be in the audience. <laughs> and I don't like violence. I said, blow her up. Blow her up. <laughs> <laughs> now, Charlene, you need two to tie and three to win. Janice said, my car is so old, the wheels are made out of blank. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, Charlie. Janice said, my car is so old, the wheels are made out of blank. Wood. Wood. 
They did indeed have wooden wheels and automobiles yeah. at one time. But, of course, if you were thinking of an older vehicle, you might have something else. Yes, I was thinking of a car I used to drive through Calcutta many years ago, and the wheels were made of stone. Of stone, yeah. of course, yes. <laughs> Isn't he wonderful? Mm. Fabulous, fabulous, darling. Show us your story. I was thinking about a car I used to drive in Maine. In Maine? <laughs> we're made out of wood. Wood wheels. All right, Charlene, you got one. It scores two to one now. Stone. Stone. Go on. <laughs> two to one is the score. Car is so old, the wheels are made out of... Antique wood. Antique wood. Hey. Now we have a tie score of two to two. Bob? I was so happy just a moment ago, I heard from my brother. I said stone, too. <laughs> Your brother is sitting up there and yes, he told you stone. And I have not seen him in years. <laughs> <laughs> we used Daddy? to make movies together in Calcutta. Oh, you did? Yes. yes. I was working on a movie called Double Exposure. Yes. It was the story of two holy men who opened a delicatessen in New Delhi. <laughs> in New, New Delhi. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you get it, folks. They New Delhi in New Delhi. <laughs> well, I'll leave the accents to Fred from here on in. It's going to be a slow week. Yes. Yeah. I think you're wonderful. What do you say, Fanny? Enjoy yourself, honey. It'll pass soon enough. <laughs> <laughs> One day you'll look in the mirror and the little laugh lines you thought were so cute. <laughs> and you start using a race as your entire makeup base. <laughs> oh, I have the correct answer. Even like All right, good win today. Well, Tammy, you didn't win any money, did you? Well, we're going to send some prizes. What have we got for Tammy? Well, we've got all kinds of good things that will come your way. Seven inches of dental floss. Thank you. All that. Here's a little message for you. Darlene's having her second go at the big money here. She's got $500 from her first attempt, and now let's see what happens with her second time. Charlene, we polled this audience, and we said write down your best answer to this. Pomp blank. Remember, it's $500 for matching the most popular. For matching the second most popular, it's $250, and if you match the third, you get $100. Now, which of the dingbats would you like to call on for some assistance? Fanny. Okay. Um, I think the most popular answer is probably uh, a friend of mine wrote this book, uh, Pomping Iron. <laughs> no. Uh, 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 Pomping Pomp Circumstance. Pomping Circumstance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pomping Iron. Pomping Circumstance <laughs> by Sir Edward Elgar. Oh, how smart. Fred. You had to call on me second, yes? Thank you so much. Pompadour. Is that, is that it? Yes, Pompadour. Pompadour. All right. <laughs> okay, Bob. Bob sure. is looking at you glassy-eyed. <laughs> uh, well, this one came right to me right off the top of my head. Uh, I was going to go with pompous ass, but that you can't say that. <laughs> uh, so I'll go for the famous uh, Roman city, Pompeii. Pompeii. Very I good. think that's very good. So you got Pompeii. You, you want to bet on it? Pomp and circumstance. Uh, and Pompadour. Right. You want one of those? Yes. Which one? Pomp and circumstance. Yeah! Pomp and circumstance. All right. Let's find out if it's up there. Do we have Pomp and circumstance anywhere on that board, beginning down at the bottom of the $100 response? Pompadour is there. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. Sure. All right. Let's take a look at the next one, please. Pomp and ceremony. Whoa, well, it looks good for pomp and circumstance. Let's see if you win another 500 right now. Yes, you do. Very good. Very good. Now you've got $1,000, and that amount is yours. However, the additional 500 you've won means that you're going to play for 5,000 minimum. However, a lucky spin of the wheel again will make it 10,000. Uh -oh. Good luck to you. Let's all root for a double and see what happens. It's no me. Watch out. Watch out, man. Any darling. Any darling. Any darling. Any darling. Thousand dollars. 
10,000. Bob Donner, no help from the audience, please, because it might be a rotten answer, and that would be unfair. Here it is. Message blank. Take a look at it. Bob's come up with his answer. Now, uh, you want to try to match his. And these have to be exact matches when we get to the big money here. So what do you say to that for $10,000? Message boy. Message boy. Message boy. I always think of it as messenger boy. Uh, Bob, maybe Bob has thought of it as message boy. I don't know. We'll find out now. Bob, may we see it, please? I said message service. Message service. That's twice you goofed, Bob. <laughs> I don't want to make you feel bad or anything. No, but message that's service twice. was not a bad answer. <laughs> Thank you, Brett, for holding me up to ridicule in front of the entire audience and everyone. In my mother watches this I will show. Punish her. <laughs> <laughs> if you think it's stuff on you on the end, <laughs> I'm right underneath her. That's why I share. I share. I share responsibility. I did write, boy, but he didn't take it. <laughs> Yeah. Was that yeah, he doesn't even know how to steal oh. an answer, does he? Well, Charlene, you got a total of one thousand dollars in our best wishes. Thank you for being here on Match Day. Now let's welcome Cindy Stockwell and John Murphy. Yay! Hey. Hey. That's what I welcome. Hey. Cindy and John. Nice to have Gene, both of you. How are you? I'm very Pleasure. well. Thank you for asking. I brought you some kiwis from Northern, Northern California. Some kiwis from some Northern kiwi California. fruit. Are oh, they yeah. ripe? Yeah, right. Yes. Yeah. How do you eat them? Oh, you just cut them in half. You, you scoop them out or peel them, put them around a the salad. They're great. They are. Oh, they're beautiful. Did you grow them? Well, actually, I do have two and a half acres up there, but I didn't grow these. I got these at the... Farmer's market. <laughs> 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 no plugs. She said it. She Where said do you live, it, John? Uh, Biggs, California. Biggs? Biggs. Where's that? That's a little town next to Lake Oroville. 60 miles north of uh, Sacramento. Oh, that's, well, that's very pretty up there. Very yes. pretty. What do you do for a living, John? Nothing. Nothing. That a boy, John. You got the idea. He's got the idea, hasn't he? My wife works. Your wife works. Yeah. <laughs> oh, listen. The ERA is going to welcome you with open arms. Open arms. Yes, sir. Yeah. Anything else you want to add about your personal life? No, if I can't plug nothing, there's... No. No. <laughs> no, you can't plug anything here because that's illegal. They don't Is allow it? you to do it. Well, no. If you were going to plug something, what would you plug? <laughs> I'm almost afraid to say, you know, them people backstage got me, so I won't, don't want to say nothing. I wouldn't even say Ma Don Kiwi Company. You know, I wouldn't oh, do that. No, you can't do that. You can't no. do that. No. That's his own private Kiwi Company. All right, John, we've heard enough about you here now. <laughs> Cindy, tell us about you, please. Well, I'm Cindy Stockwell. I'm from Oceanside, California. I'm married. I have two children. Two children? Two children. Not a few. Two. Two. How, many, how old are they? Uh, my daughter, Katie, is four, and my son, Robin, is two. Gosh, you only look 12 yourself. <laughs> Thank you. I'm also a full-time college student with a pre-med major, and I work part-time in a grocery store. You want to be a doctor? Yep. Good luck to you. That's marvelous. What you, you do in your spare time? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. I go on game shows. <laughs> In your spare time, you go on game shows. Right. Uh, I'm glad to hear that, Cindy. Well, listen, we'll start this game in a little while. Right now, we have to do this for America. Did you see what Fred did with his eyes? Yes, I did. Did you see it, Cindy? Yes. I, I just saw a glimpse of it. Would you get a shot of Fred so he can do that goofy thing with his eyes again? I, let me I used see. to do that in, in the Army to drive the doctors crazy. Really? You know, they'd go in and say, young man, you in here a sick call. What's the matter with you? And I'd say, I don't know. I woke up this morning and... <laughs> <laughs> they took you anyway? They took me anyway. <laughs> they drafted you anyway, huh? I'd like to see you aim a rifle sometime. <laughs> <laughs> now, Cindy, you have a choice of A or B. B, please. B it is for Cindy. Now, here it is, friends. Some things just don't make sense. Such a, well, like a book called The Wit and Wisdom of Blank. <laughs> oh, I love the book. I love the book. 
You love the cruel ones. Yeah. Now, Cindy, some things just don't make sense, such as a book called The Wit and Wisdom of... Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter. <laughs> <laughs> she said Jimmy Carter. I certainly appreciate your reply, young lady. But I said Billy Carter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know, it's hard because you really do hate to hurt people's feelings. I'm with Fanny. Yes. And you really, so, that you, you know, you try and choose somebody. Well, oh, shucks. <laughs> Fanny. Fanny! <laughs> now, I happen to think Fanny... There's no editorial comments are needed, mister. Wise you just young lady talk. and full of wit, yes? One of those questions, I said the wit and wisdom of Frankie Valli. <laughs> <laughs> Your friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Betty, uh, some things don't make sense. There's a book called The Wit and Wisdom of. Of uh, Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon. Hey, you didn't make sense to me, man, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I got you. All right, Bob. Well, you know my brother. I said Billy Carter. <laughs> You guys are in tune with one another. Yes, and right? I don't turn around either. Yes. <laughs> are you sharing a dressing room? <laughs> we, we talk. We're, yes. friendly. We're right. friendly. We're not great friends. <laughs> I wouldn't... I wouldn't... I, I thought it was cruel what Brett did, though. Thought it was cruel what Brett yes, did? personally, I did. And I'd like to apologize to the other members of the panel. <laughs> All right. Penny? Hi, and a hello to you, America. I just want to say that Wendell and I always hated a person who was cruel and would turn on their best friend. Ah. <laughs> However, my answer was Brett. <laughs> bravo, bravo. Yes. <laughs> I didn't set up some shoot gets for Well. All right. Cindy didn't pick up any in her first round question. And, John, we don't expect you to pick up any either. Well, at least you brought some kiwi fruit right. there. All right. Here we go. Ralph said, my wife is the world's worst cook. How worst is she? How worst is she? All funk, flunked uh, English grammar, didn't you, there? My wife is the world's worst cook. Last night, she served me charcoal broiled blank. <laughs> when Madame Pompadour danced on the floor. <laughs> now we're ready for you, John. Ralph said, my wife is the world's worst cook. Last night, she served me Charcoal broiled blank. Charcoal broiled water. <laughs> water? Water. Yeah. And water. <laughs> I confidently predict the scoreless tie will continue. Because <laughs> I don't think, weird as we are over here, we're not going to say charcoal broiled water, are we, Fred? <laughs> you see, when I was doing Saturday Night Fever, I knew that you could. See, I knew that you could. So, I think you could. I said, I said, uh, spaghetti. Charcoal broiled That's spaghetti, right. yes. Right. It's a rotten dish. All right. Well, they were an older couple, and he'd been a little cranky lately, and she thought he needed something to loosen him up, so she served him some charcoal boiled prunes. <laughs> uh, charcoal boiled prunes. Jello. Jello. Another revolting thing. Another, there. another dumb answer. May I uh, ask the significance of your wearing a windbreaker with the insignia Los Angeles Police Athletic League? I mean, I admire it. You support the PAL? No, you can't ask that. I can't ask that. No, yeah, no, yes. No, yes, no, yes. <laughs> Yes. He's sitting on a fence. You support the PAL. Of course. They do wonderful things for young people, not only in this city, but Why in Why is that producer hushing me up and running me off further on? Just <laughs> <laughs> because I don't do 200 trick voices? Well, I want it. <laughs> Last night, she served me charcoal broiled... Spaghetti and meatballs. Spaghetti and meatballs. Right What'd she serve, Bob? Tell us the truth. Well, John, I tried to think of the dumbest answer I could think of. You whip me, boy. <laughs> Cereal. Cereal. <laughs> You're a tough act, John. Yeah. All right, Fanny. <laughs> Let's have a go at it, Fanny. Well, I'm just fascinated. You know, they say people have dogs begin to look like their dogs. Yeah. 
Look at that kiwi fruit. What Look happened? at his head. <laughs> 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 Isn't that funny? No offense, hon. I, I must say, the first thing I thought of was water, but I wrote lettuce. Lettuce it is. Oh, yeah. yeah. So there we are. No score at the end of round one. Round two coming up in some future date. Now this. Rayburn, join us next time for the match game. Goodbye. Some contestants will receive cooking and clean up are quick and easy with West Bend's cookware, bakeware, and electric skillet. All surface is Silverstone. Silverstone spells durability. A calculator and raid indoor fogger. It's room-filling fog, kills roaches, fleas, and other bugs dead by the thousands. A pair of beautiful digital watches for a man and woman. Timex for making time look good. An ice bucket and relaxing at home. Drink sparkling pink champagne any day when you feel special. Tastes like bubbly wine. Pink champagne, malt liquor from Iroquois brand. From Hearts Mountain, gifts for your dog or cat, including the Hearts 2-in-1 Plus collar that kills six and fleas for up to five months. A tray and Torrex, the breath deodorant. Helps your mouth's own pressing power eliminate bad breath. Costs a little more, but it's worth it. Clorex, the breath deodorant. And a calculator and off, and off. Howlett's mosquito repellent, off, really works with the most effective mosquito repellent ingredient that money can buy. Right now, don't miss the show that gives you money for a song. The all-new $100,000 Name That Tune, followed by Wheel of Fortune at 5.30, right here on Channel 7. This is Guy Olson speaking for Match Game, a Mark Gibson, Bill Totman production. The program is edited for Rocky. Get ready to match the stars from Mark and Mindy Robert Donner, Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Levy from The Young and the Restless, Melody Thomas, McLean Stevenson, and Marcia Wallace as we play the star studded Big Money Match Game. And now, here's the star of Match Game, Gene Roberts. with you. Welcome. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for showing up here. Some little gnome keeps putting these thoughts for the day oh, right there. What is it? It says, living on Earth may be expensive, but it, it includes an annual free trip around the sun. Take that down. You don't think that's very good, eh? All right, let's get it. much better than that. Yes. Could I have a copy of that? Sure. Oh, thank you so much. I want you to keep that. Mm -hmm. Listen, we got a new kid on the block, and we must give her a proper uh -oh. welcome. Uh -oh. She is from uh, The go. Young and Restless, and we're delighted to have Melody Thomas with us. Oh. And uh, I just want to say welcome. Thank you. Where'd you learn yes, to kiss like that? Your eyes, that's all. Your dress? Yeah. Oh, yes. How much do you weigh, Melody? Oh, Jean, please. Show, do you want to see the Yeah, let him show, show him the dress. I've got to see that. I'm embarrassed because I work across the hall every day on Young and Restless, and I know a lot of the people back here, and one of the stagehands said, Mel, your dress is on backwards because I was in such a rush trying to get ready, and he said that I should be wearing it the other way. Uh -huh. So I'm sorry. I apologize. Right. I'll do better. Well, you're doing the best you can, but yes. no one's perfect. That's right. Except you. <laughs> Let's say hello to Rochelle Anapolsky and Gabrielle Williams. <laughs> Welcome, ladies. Let's get acquainted. Rochelle, tell us about you, please. Hi. I married and have a little girl, and I'm hope uh, hoping to get into commercials. Really? Yeah, and I'm having a ball here. Good. Well, wait till the show starts. Yeah. Gabrielle, tell us about you. Hello, I'm Gabrielle, and I'm married. I have a little son, DJ. Hello. <laughs> and I'm a program technician and in real estate, and I'm just having fun here today. Good. Nice to have you both with us. Good luck to both of you. Rochelle, you go first. Uh, a, please. All right. This is it. Sid said there's something wrong with my television set. I can see two commercials at the same time. It's disgusting. Some guy is brushing his teeth with blank. <laughs> I guess we're ready for you. Robert. Sid said there's something wrong with my television set. I can see two commercials at the same time. It's disgusting. Some guy is brushing his teeth with blank. Preparation H. All right. That's good. Now, she thought about that a long time. Came up with a pretty good answer. What do yes, you Yes, she did. I was in the right area. Yeah. I said baby powder. Baby powder. Very good. All right. That's a good one. Two good ones so far. Brett? Oh, I didn't even come close. I said Tide. Tide. 
side. Comet. Comet? Yes. Well, it's... See, Comet uh, would be kind of painful, no, not I... disgusting was the operative word here. I'm sorry, that's a wonderful answer, but it, I have a personal connection with that immediately recently. Yeah. My housekeeper put Lysol in my toothbrush, now, that would and be I disgusting. went home and started to brush my teeth. And that that must was... have hurt a lot. Yeah. Two commercials at the same time, it's disgusting. Some guy is brushing his teeth with what, McLean? Uh, for lack of a better thought, I put Alpo. Alpo. <laughs> That's genuinely disgusting. Isn't it? Yeah. So disgusting is the operative word, which is so often the case on the match game. Right. <laughs> Rochelle has my old hair. Did you notice that? Yeah. Oh, remember yes, when does. I had that hair? Right, I do remember that. More human interest. <laughs> Tidy bowl. Tidy bowl. All right. <clears throat> now, Gabrielle, let's see what we have for you. Vin said, you know the price of food is too high when you discover your wife has traded the blank for a hamburger. <laughs> The <laughs> sound of mellifluous laughter is music to my ears. Finn said, you know the price of food is too high when you discover your wife has traded the blank for a hamburger. Your child. Your child? Yes. <laughs> oh, I've known days when I would trade my kids for a lot less than a hamburger. Uh, but well, great. what'd you say there? Well, I, I would imagine it all depends upon how secure your marriage is. I said the wedding ring. The wedding ring. Yes. All right. The wedding ring for a hamburger. Okay, Brett. I don't know, but you know I was talking to Betty White last night. Yeah. And she, she said she didn't mean to go off animals, but she traded the dog. Uh, <laughs> she's only funny, Betty. She didn't say that. I'm only kidding, Betty. In keeping with the two Bs and the boring C, car. <laughs> car. Yeah, that would indicate the price of food is high, right? Yes. Right. You know the price of food is too high and discover your wife has traded the... Child, when you are Gabriel. really hungry, Jean. When you're really hungry. Not just your child, but your firstborn. Your firstborn. Wow. That's one for you. New kid on the block has to come up with the first match. All you veterans That's here. That's right. <laughs> All right, McLean. Uh, you know, Jean, I very rarely come up with the right answer, but I do come up with some little informative tidbits that I might like to pass on at this point. Yes, we'd like to have one. Right now. Uh, with the new cars that are going out, as you know, and the new cars coming yeah. in, they're offering as much as $500 on a purchase of a new car, even right. this late in the year. Do you need background music for this? Not at all. No. <laughs> all right. Um, a lot of people can't afford to do it as big as I did. I went out and purchased 10 cars and made $5,000 in a little less than three minutes. No kidding. Oh, on what a, what a stroke of genius. Isn't that something? Yes, indeed. Gee, okay. that was interesting, wasn't it? Thank you. Well... So much for the B's and so much for the M's. Um, car. Car, right. All right, now just another of the many things that Melody and I are going to have in common. Don't start. Baby. Baby. That's two. All right. So there we are, the end of round one, two to nothing. Gabrielle's favorite. Now this for you. Here we go. Round two coming up. And Gabrielle, since you're ahead, the rule states that you must go first. Okay, and I'll select A. It is. Ready? Melody yeah. and I don't write. Melody and I. We no, can't you don't write. write. No, because you matched in the previous round. No, okay. you can write. <laughs> now See. shape up, Mr. Rayburn. All right, I'm shaping up. F. Look at me. I'm standing up straight and everything. Unlucky Louis said, I have the world's worst luck. For years, I waited for my ship to come in. Unfortunately, my ship was the blank. <laughs> Here we go. We're going to start, John. Unlucky Louis said, I have the world's worst luck. For years, I waited for my ship to come in. You know that figurative phrase, don't you? Unfortunately, my ship was the blank. Let's see. Um, latest. Last. The last? Last ship. I guess you didn't get the drift here of what, the drift. Was, <laughs> what they Sorry. were trying to do to you. Give her the drift, Bob. Here's one drift, Andrea Doria. The Andrea Doria. Uh, you understand now? Yes. Well, what do you say we start all over again? <laughs> uh, waiting for my ship to come in. Unfortunately, my ship was the... <laughs> the angel, whatever he said. Whatever he said. <laughs> all right, Bob. Uh, that's one Andrea Doria. What okay. have you got there? Oh, it's Andrea Doria? Oh, I thought it was left. <laughs> I'm 
I'm just trying to work with you, Gabriel. All right. What do you got for us? Marcia said something wonderful one day. She said, uh, changing agents is like changing deck chairs on the Titanic. The Titanic. Titanic. All right. That's the other good answer. The Titanic. All right. So, her answer is the last. For years, I waited for my ship to come in, and unfortunately, my ship was the what, McLean? The uh, Titanic. All right. I had a bunch of those, and one hand did it. Now, <clears throat> Rochelle, you need two to tie and three to win. Dumb Dora is really dumb. Yeah. She thinks higher education means the students are on blanks. <laughs> want to read it? You don't want to read it. Good. Here we go. Rochelle, dumb door is really dumb. She thinks higher education means the students are on blanks. Drugs. Drugs. Okay, she says drugs, Bob. Boy, I tell you, I feel like wrong way Corrigan. I said stilts. Stilts is a good one. Drugs are good. Stilts good. There are three or four really good ones to this. What do you say? I feel just a little bit behind the times, and I shouldn't because I have a child who just graduated from high school. I said ladders. Ladders? All right, Charles. 36-year-old child that graduates from high school. There's no sense <laughs> bragging about a situation like that. For My fabulous ladders. La All right. Uh, dumb Dora thinks higher education means the students are on... Huh? <laughs> We're on rude, man. All right. <laughs> Good acting, you see, for someone who's never tried them. That's Wasn't that right. sincere and, and well done? All right, McLean. <laughs> I'm totally... I'm totally a toast to this. Totally a toast to this? <laughs> Something has happened to my mouth. I had my body capped recently, sure. Gene. Sure, you did. Uh, yeah, and they didn't get the mouth right. Um, I said drugs, although I am very much opposed to their use. Right. Nice the, score. This sweet woman, a mother of one, yeah. is over there cheering on drugs. Isn't that terrible what this show does to people? Right. Oh, it's, it's up to me, right? Right. But no pressure, right? No pressure. Wrong. Ladders. Ladders. <laughs> All right. So we uh, end up with a tie for this game. That means we go to the tiebreaker. One question for each. The one who's matched the most will be the winner. And, Rochelle, you can go first. A. The nurse. All right. Today. You are. There's a tiebreaker. Art said, my prom date was really weird. <laughs> she had blank on the spaghetti straps of her gown. <laughs> you know what spaghetti straps are? Those thin things that hold up a dress? All right, we'll show. I said my prom date was really weird. She had blank on the spaghetti straps of her gown. Meatballs. Meatballs. Yeah. What do you got? Do you know that I usually sit tall when I have the right answer? Right. Boy, I have an awful low all day You're long. Slumping, huh? Thank God I can draw a meatball. Aha! Okay, one for Rochelle. I have a confession to make. I looked over and I thought, meatball, P-U. And uh, wrong again, tomato and meat sauce. Tomato and meat sauce. I just said sauce, Uncle Jane. No marinara. No. Nothing, none of that. Uh, I was expecting someone who likes Italian food as you do. Well, to I was going to say with... clam sauce, but then that's hard to match. So I guess. Mm, all right. I don't know what I did. Miss Melody, <laughs> my prom date was really weird. She had blank on the spaghetti straps of her gown. What do you say to that? Well, I originally had tomato sauce, and after much hesitation, I did change it, but it doesn't match anyway. I'm sorry, Parmesan cheese. Parmesan, no. <laughs> It's yeah. so, all right from a bella ragazza. What do you say? What was the answer that she gave again? I'm sorry. Meatballs. Ah. Meatballs, dear. You got it. <laughs> Aha! Here's the Rochelle. Oh. All right, Marcia, show us your meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> but there's no need to be rude. It's true. Not real big, but... 
meat sauce. All right, Rochelle ends up with two. That means when we get to you, you'll have two to tie and three to win. Now this for you. Rochelle, Mr. Gene River. Thank you, John. Now, Gabrielle, two to tie, three to win. Ready? We're in the tiebreaker. Oh, boy. Did you hear about the mad scientist? People, people, pay attention, please. Did you hear mad about the mad scientist? Over <laughs> who crossed a parrot with an owl? You can replace Brett. <laughs> He's got an owl that says, who blank. Want to go over that one more? Boy, that's a new thing. All right, got me. Did you hear about the mad scientist who crossed a parrot with an owl? He's got an owl that says, who blank. Who Polly. Who Polly. Two isn't much to win a game, but I think you're safe. All right. Gabrielle, I think you, you missed us there. What do you say, Bob? Gabrielle, I'm trying. Believe me. Who wants a cracker? Yeah. Polly wants a cracker. Yeah. Who wants a cracker? And friend of who wants a cracker? Who wants a cracker? Who wants a cracker? Oh, you plug in the Jupiter Police Department, yes. are you? They I did can something arrest for everybody. You could arrest everybody? All right, you can start with me. A uh, mad scientist crossed a parrot with an owl. He's got an owl that says, who? I had absolutely no idea, so I just thought, who cares? <laughs> who cares? <laughs> if the sun I like your spirit. cares to Thanks fall. So <laughs> All right, now you got to match McLean and Marsha to stay in the game. What do you say there? I said, uh, the uh, owl said, who did this to me? Who did this to me? So that means, who cares? And uh, Rochelle wins the game. Come on now, Rochelle. On the little blue dot there. We'll see you in a moment. And we're going to wheel this thing around, but you'll be back later for game number two, okay? All right. Congratulations, my dear. Here we go with this big money super match where you could win over $10,000. Here it is. We polled the studio audience not too long ago and said, write down your best answer to this. Edie blank. Edie blank. Ah, uh, Brett. Oh, one of my favorite singers in the whole wide world, Edie Gourmet. All right. Marcia. Marcia. Another one of my favorite singies, singers, Edie Amin. <laughs> Edie, I mean, that's your answer? That's All right. And uh, Charles. Edie Adam. Edie Adams, Edie Gourmet, Edie Amin are the three they've given Edie you. Edie Fisher. Yeah. Who do you want? One of those or one of your own? No, uh, Edie Gourmet. All right. What have I got? I don't have now. Let's find out if Edie Gourmet is up there. Let's go down to the bottom and reveal a $100 response. Edie oh, Albert. Yeah, okay. <laughs> And her brother, Eddie. Right. I you know that audience, you see, they, no one spoke it aloud to them. They had to read it, and a lot of them says, oh, E-D-I, das uh, Eddie Albert. All right. Uh, here we go with the next one, the $250 response. Edie Adams. There's Charles' oh, answer. Be. Edie Gourmet is probably on top, I would uh, venture, I guess. Here we go. Yeah. Money Turn life. your head away. Oh. <laughs> okay, that'll calm her down now. <laughs> All right. Now you've won five hundred dollars. That means the least you'll play for is ten times that amount, or five thousand dollars. But I hesitate to ask you to do this. You're going to spin the wheel, and if you're lucky, it'll stop in one of the star's names, and uh, and then then you'll be playing for ten thousand oh. dollars. <laughs> and. Uh, if it stops at uh, the star, I'm afraid you're going to spoil yourself. Get up there. 
Comes oh, the grab any pig. It must make one revolution, remember. Oh, All right, you're playing for $5,000 with Bob Donner. Good luck to you. And uh, face me, and here we go. Blank telephone. There it is, blank telephone. Bob's ready. Your job is to match him. If you do that, you get $5,000. What do you say to that, Rochelle? Blank telephone. How about a pay telephone? Pay telephone. <laughs> How about a pay telephone? All right, Bob, you got a pay telephone? I'm afraid to say pay telephone. Well, if, Even if I had it, I yeah. mean, if she did that for she $500, what, what is right. she going to do to me? I don't know. Let's find out. I don't know. Pay telephone. <laughs> Next time is the match game. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Today's contestants will also receive Fabergé collection featuring organic shampoo and conditioner with pure wheat germ oil and honey for fresh smelling hair with super shine, super body. And Flavor Ice, America's favorite quick freeze fruit flavored bars. 24 giant bars in the package. Assorted delicious flavors. Flavor Ice, the giant cooler. Easy caulker, foam caulker, and easy insulator for wider gaps. No gun to mess with either can. Easy caulker, easy insulator. Red crack and crevice spray. Unique extension wand sprays hard to reach places to kill crawling bugs. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game, a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. This program was edited for Broadway. Okay, Todd, you can come out. She's gone. <laughs> Get ready to match the stars from Mork and Mindy, Robert Donner, Rex Summers, Charles Nelson Riley, from the Young and the Restless, Melody Thomas, McLean Stevenson, and Marcia Wallace. As we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game. And now, here's the star of Match Game, Gene Raymer. Thank What did the market do this morning? Look. Oh, Bob. Bob Donner, what's wrong? One more winner, Gene, and I'm done. <laughs> you don't want any more winners on the show? Woman hit me like a typhoon. <laughs> do you see what you did to him, That's Rochelle? Funny. I'm proud of it. You're proud of it? Rochelle's proud of it? Yeah. I ought to punch her out. Yeah. You married Rochelle? But not seriously. <laughs> God, I hope he knows. Is he here? No. No. I said it wouldn't be a pretty sight. Oh, it wouldn't be a pretty sight. Well, I think the least you can do for injuring this man is go up there and give it a little kiss and oh. make it better. Oh. oh right? She's not going to hurt me, is she, Jade? No, she won't hurt. Now, gently now. Promise you'll be kind. <laughs> no, no, no. Get back. Get back. Get back. Ha! Ha! Excited. Getting well, Gene. Yeah. <laughs> Made it Getting well. well. Good. All right. You all remember these two kooks from yesterday, don't you? Gabrielle Williams is married, has one child. How old is your child? Uh, he's four years old. His name is DJ. What is that? Damien Jason. Damien Jason. That's you a very hear pretty my name. My husband's name. What's Ooh. that? Rudolph Valentino Williams. Jr. Rudolph Valentino Williams? Yes. Hey, Rudolph Valentino. I remember her well. Now, 
Rochelle, you remember? The mad woman of Shio. <laughs> Where are you from again? The Valley, Van Nuys. Oh, I figured it <laughs> as much. <laughs> and you have how many children? I just have one, and she'll be seven tomorrow. Can I say happy birthday? Sure. Happy birthday, Aaron. All right. Good luck to both ladies. We start the second game, first round. Gabrielle, you go first. I'll take A. A it is. Here we go. Sarah said, this restaurant serves such large portions, instead of a doggy bag, I need a blank bag. <laughs> Charles is doing a little artwork, so we'll go ahead. Sarah said, this restaurant serves such large portions, instead of a doggy bag, I need a blank bag. A trash bag. Trash bag. Not bad, is it? No, trash bag is a very good answer. Unfortunately, I said elephant bag. Elephant bag. Doggy, elephant, bigger animal. I got the drift there. Well, I believe... Now, this is a match, my darling Ira. I know this is a match because a hefty bag is a trash bag. All right. What every red-blooded, tough, and wild cowboy would say, Gene, a horse. A horse bag. The old feed bag. That's a large bag, isn't it? This, uh... Restaurant serves such large portions. Instead of a doggy bag, I need what kind of a bag, Melody? Garbage. A garbage bag. That's another one. Two for Gabrielle. What do you say? Well, since Brett said a hefty bag was a garbage bag, right. I said what Brett said. I said a hefty bag. A hefty bag. Three for her. I don't know what a gal has to do to be noticed around here. I've been sitting here for ten minutes with my entire front flashing. An almost perfect person, it says on her That's entire correct. front. That's, as you know, I am now a hyphenate, a producer. Off the Wallace Productions. Off the Walls yes. Productions? This is the name of my play that I'm in at the Pan Andreas with the Summers woman directing. So uh -huh. even as we speak now, we're in it. Um, really? Yes. You're rehearsing now? No, we're doing the play. We're doing the play. We're doing the play. Yes. Can I come and see it in the next three or four days? From this show, absolutely. <laughs> well, see, when will the show won't be shown for a while? We actually open on uh, November 7th. That's right. We oh, play this... for an indefinite run. It'll probably run for that a year. That was November 7th. Probably be like Oklahoma, Fiddler on the Roof. I know that we'll still be running when this is on. Right. And running yes. and running, and we hope we won't be out of town. Well, I will come and see you. Oh, please do. All right. Now, may we oh, see you your answer? Oh, you probably answer. Yeah. Oh, an large answer. Large portions. Instead of a doggy bag, I need a trash bag. Duffel bag. A duffel bag. <laughs> a, good a good response. Three for Gabrielle. Now, let's see how Rochelle does with hers. <laughs> all right. Gary said, my Uncle Louie Gary has all of Manhattan tattooed on his body. It's wild. He's got the Empire State Building tattooed on his blank. <laughs> Put Bob, Brett, and Charles downstairs, and Melody McLean and Marsha upstairs. If they would finish sooner than I strongly doubt. Uh oh, here we go. Gary said, "My uncle Louie has all of Manhattan tattooed on his body. It's wild. He's got the Empire State Building tattooed on his blank." Tushy. On his tushy. The Empire State Building. Oh, we're thinking of. A tushy Don't is a... that woman. She worth won five thousand dollars. Tushy right. is round, and you know it's. I want to tell you, you better not boo that woman, because that woman will come out there and clean house on any damn one of you. Right. Single-handedly. That's right. You can send up your strongest. I'll bet on her. Uh, I assume ah, the man was... Ah. I'm sorry, was I... No, I'm sorry. He, liked, he just liked your material. Uh, I assume that the man was standing on his hands, and therefore it was on his nose. Aha. Right. Good response. Don't boo that answer. It's a good response. Nose is good. I thought there was only one answer to this. One and only one. Right. But we couldn't say it, so what did you say? <laughs> no. No, right. Two noses so far. Now, I hope this doesn't offend the judges, or you think it might be in bad taste. Let me speak it. Arm. Oh, no, that's all right. Well, that's pretty tacky. But no. I had you wondering there for a minute, right? Yeah. <laughs> No, any long appendage would be fine in this case. Well, of course Melody, I beg your pardon. He's got the Empire State Building tattooed on his... Well... Tish. Tish. One. That's a long appendage I've ever seen one. Yes. <laughs> I'm <All right>. sorry. <laughs> she wore the sloppy sweater and the oh. blue jeans just for this your benefit. This is not benefit. sloppy. Don't oh. you see my giraffe, oh, what my giraffe yeah. is doing? What? 
Look at that giraffe. Yeah. Look at that crazy giraffe. Wait a minute. Zoom in on that oh giraffe. My God, Let me look at the now. monitor. Why, that lucky stiff. Yeah, he's just looking for... See, there's more. He's looking for... Oh, he's looking for the other, his friends. His friend well, they... back here. Uh-huh. Not having any fun at all. Uh. So, well, go ahead. Okay, yeah. I guess that's all the mileage we're going to get out yeah. of her giraffe. I understand. Uh, I couldn't think of anything, so I just said his chest. His chest? Yes. Yep, you drew a bar. cry from his bummy. Yep, that's <laughs> all right. What do you say? I say, how you doing, hon? I'm doing very well, Good. thank I'm you. Good, I'm glad to hear you. You look fabulous. Thank you, my dear. You're more than welcome. Nose. Nose, all right. So it's three to one at this moment Good. in the end of round one. Gabrielle's no. ahead. We'll go to round two in a moment or so. Now this for you. Here we go. Oh. Round two, final round, final game for these two ladies. And Gabrielle, you're ahead, so you have to go first. I'll take A again. All right, three people play. Bob, Charles, and Marcia. Ken oh. said, this weather is really terrible. Oh, that's awful. That's very half-hearted on your behalf. It's so cold, I saw a polar bear at a department store trying on blank. <laughs> Gabriel. Ken said, this weather is really terrible. It's so cold, I saw a polar bear at a department store trying on blank. A fur coat. A fur coat. Do you have a pain look on your face, Bob Donner, Bob Donner? The operative word, Gene Gene, what, what? Is, is, is cold. Cold, if right. If you're cold, you put on a sweater. The guy already had a coat. Right. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not arguing with if you want fur coat, you got fur coat. Oh. All right. Bob Donner, Bob Donner. What do you say, Chuck? Well, I know I don't know about what this is, but maybe it's a match. A parka. A parka. It's they're usually uh, All right. they're down filled or filled with a uh, Park is a funny word, though, you know? Anything yes. with a K in it is funny. Duck is very funny. Duck is funny, Duck yes. is one of the funniest. Guam is funny, too. Guam. Guam yes. is funny, and six is the funniest number. That's and right. Cleveland. And Cleveland is always a million laughs. Right. Cookie and car keys is funny, too. Right. Cookie and car keys. <laughs> well, you got a little catching up to do here, Rochelle. You need four to tie and five to win. This is it. Ed said, nobody likes me. Oh, Poor Ed. Even my blank forgot my birthday. <laughs> You're the only one that doesn't Well, you can sell an answer to him and make a little money on the Let side. Let me see Uncle Gene. There you go, sir. Nobody likes me. Just think about your own life, dear. Who gave him the hat? That's a beauty. That's genuine. Who gave you the hat, hat? All right, here we go, Rochelle. Ed said, nobody likes me. Even my blank forgot my birthday. My mother. My mother. <laughs> All right. Let's see how many mothers we got up here. Oh, well done. All right, Bob. I got one mother who's going to get ready. <laughs> All right. Mother. <laughs> All right. Hey, keep your seat, Rochelle. <laughs> All you mothers out there, mommy. <laughs> mommy, dear. I said to the guy, why you mother? <laughs> this show conceivably could be playing somewhere, sometime, in some market, the week of Mother's Day. Yeah. And That's you're being so irreverent. What do you oh, say there, I'm off McLean. the hook. I'm off. I'm I know I got to tell you, this could be a big day for me yeah. if crazy show. Because it's Mother. five to four right now. Tie score at this moment. One more mother wins a game for her. If you don't come up with a mother, it's a tie. If I do come up with a mother, do I get attacked? Yes. <laughs> she comes over. All right.
Stand in the blue mark. Don't move off the blue mark. It's bad luck if you move off the blue mark, okay? And to touch my body is also bad luck. Don't touch me. Gabrielle, we've got some you prizes know. for you. What are we? Oh, we got a case of indigestion, a parking ticket, all kinds of wonderful things. It was a pleasure I to really meet you. I really had a fun time. Gabrielle Williams, some prizes really what's be coming your way. Bye. You ready? There it is. We polled an audience, nice, smart bunch like these, and said, write down your best answer to this. Golly blank. Oh. Golly blank. Uh, Brett. Golly G. <laughs> Marsha. Golly Miss Molly. Golly Miss Molly. Well, yeah, it was a Little Richard song. Uh, oh. Oh, all right. And uh, Robert, Bob. Golly Moses. Golly Moses? Yes, it came to me. Holy <laughs> Moses. From the mount? From the mount. Uh-huh. On, on stone, From, was it written? As it was ripped, yes. As it was ripped. Golly Kelly Moses. On a tablet. Yeah. In the reed. Golly Moses? How come you don't get a hernia carrying that stone around? <laughs> All right. So we've got Golly Moses, Golly G, and Golly Molly. Do you want one of those? Or maybe you got a better idea no. in your own head. No, no, no. All right, I don't want to argue with you. It's all right. I don't want to argue with you. Right. Go ahead. Go, Go baby. Tell me. Golly G. Let's golly go. Golly G. Okay. Golly G. Let's see if we got Golly G under the hundred dollar response. Golly Molly. See? There oh. you laugh, you scoff. Yes, right. We scoff. You laugh, you scoff. We apologize for scoffing. You should. May we see the next one, please? <laughs> Golly Moses. Oh, Ye of little faith. Right. I was one of little faith. All right, sweetheart. Anything. Well, golly gee, it looks like a... Better be there. Me. Kiss the suit. Go. Goodbye, Jean. Yeah! Billy Jean. All right. Right. Bonner. Now listen, you got five hundred dollars means the least to play for is five thousand dollars. But before we ask you to spin the wheel, we want you to uh, see this message, if you please. For you. Out of our show, Gene Raven. Right. Rochelle has won the five hundred dollars, and uh, as we pointed out, the least she'll play for is five thousand. Let's see what happens with her second spin of the star wheel. No Good luck. Please. Let's root for a double. Another five thousand dollars. Ready, oh, Melody. Oh, yes. This is your first time doing this part of it, but there's nothing to it. It's a piece of cake. Ready? Here we go. Blank, buff, B-U-F-F. -F. Blank, buff. I'll just let Melody take a look at it. Make sure we all understand the word. All right, your job is to match Melody. If you do that, you get 5000 another $5,000. What do you say to that? In the buff. In the buff? What does that mean? That's nude, being Naked. nude. Naked. Oh, Naked. Really? Oh, yes. Oh. But I'm having fun. Why don't you what? ask Melody to demonstrate? Fun. You're having fun? <laughs> so are we. <laughs> All right. Melody, she says, in the buff will match you for the $5,000. But she's not she too does. sure about the answer. What do you say? Well... I thought immediate. my first thing was art buff. Yeah, I art thought, buff. Well, so I changed it. Oh, my God! Yeah. Oh, 
Marcia. We're very happy for you, my dear. You have a total of what? 11,000? How much has she got, Marcia? $11,000. We're very happy for you. Congratulations, Rochelle. All right. Now, let's, wa let's welcome two more players. Here comes Marcy Bennett and Rip Riddle. <laughs> Gone? She's gone, yes. It's all right now. How did we ever get her on? <laughs> Just lucky, I guess. <laughs> I'll be up here. All right. <laughs> uh, what do you want? No, listen, let's, uh, we've welcomed Marcy Bennett here and uh, Rip Ribble. Let's find out where they're from and all that. Marcy, tell us about you, please. I live in Huntington Beach. Huntington Beach. Huntington Beach. I'm a cocktail waitress. Yeah. And I'm ready to play. You are? Yeah. Follow me. <laughs> Rip Ribble. Who name? What? Excuse me. I was just leaning on it. Uh, where are you from, Rip? I'm from Fountain Valley. I'm a recreation superintendent with the city of Costa Mesa. I have a lovely wife and a little boy and a little girl. And uh, recently, I have quite an interest in the game of golf. What's your handicap? Right now, I play to about an 18. It's not bad. What's Rip short for? When I was a youngster, uh, everybody called me Ripple instead of Ribble. And oh, Rip Ribble is, is your, yeah, I see. So, Rip, Ribble. All right. You want to do a commercial here? All right, we'll do a commercial. Can you stand it another minute or so? All right, stand by for this commercial. Thank you. I thought we'd have time to do one question for each of you, but or at least one for Marcy, but we don't have time. We'll look forward to seeing you next time here in the match Thanks. game. Thank you, Marcy and Rip. All right. Look forward to seeing this pretty lady on The Young and Restless on CBS. What are you up to? Mork and Mindy. Mork and Mindy. Gork and Wendy. Is it true, everything I've been reading about that yes, show? Yes, it is. All right. And Jonathan Winters is going to be the son, right? That's right. right. Yes. And I'm directing Miss Marsha Wallace in a play, which is going to be at the Pan Andreas starting in November and probably going straight on through until the spring. Break all records. Break all records. It's uh, on Santa Monica Boulevard in your West Hollywood area. Long, a longer run than the Fantastic. I wouldn't yes. be surprised. I wouldn't be Good surprised either. Roof, all of them. Sure. God knows I came here an ingenue and I've turned into a character lady. You know if we're going to have our bath now or after we eat. <laughs> because the new nurse is so mean to us, Uncle Jane. <laughs> I think she Gene Raver, dear, join us next time in. for the match game. Goodbye. Today's contestants will also receive... A Fabergé collection featuring organic shampoo and conditioner with pure wheat germ oil and honey for fresh smelling hair with super shine, super body. And Flavor Ice, America's favorite quick freeze fruit flavored bars. 24 giant bars in the package, assorted delicious flavors, Flavor Ice, the giant cooler. Easy caulker, foam caulker, and easy insulator for wider gas. No gun to mess with either can, easy caulker, easy insulator. Red crack and crevice spray, unique extension wand spray is hard to reach places to kill crawling bugs. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game, a Mark Woodson Bill Todman production. This program was edited for broadcast.
before the week is up, I gotta ask you one thing. You guys at WKRP Cincinnati looked as if you were having a wonderful time. I hope you were all friends and did have a wonderful time. And if you didn't, don't tell them, don't disillusion me. Okay. <laughs> no, we did. We had a marvelous time. Yeah. yeah it was it was like a like a family. Yeah, well, you were and, really uh, terrific Dodd, in that series. Uh, Lonnie is about the best daughter you could ever have, huh? Yes. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. Enough said. Just checking up on everybody up here. What do you say, buddy? How are you? I hate to complain. Well, I'm sorry I asked. <laughs> What's your problem? I know that everyone here has been trying to do the best they can for me. Yeah. They send limos for yeah. the other guests. They give me the privilege of driving myself to the studio. <laughs> the other guests have fruit baskets in their room. Yeah. I have a box of prunes. <laughs> what? I'm not complaining, but I don't seem to have a rapport with the audience. Now, wait a minute. Everybody loves you, Robert. It isn't working, Gene. And at great expense to me, yeah. I have brought my director of communications to try and bridge this gap between myself and the audience. I introduce Crazy George. Here, a cheerleading session that makes two of you in the room now who have gone bananas. Okay. George is a professional man. Yes, he sure is. And he's got a great pair of tonsils, I can tell you that. Well, I'm, I hope that things are going to be better for you from now on, Robert. We aim to please around here. We don't want you to feel bad. God bless you, Gene. We want you to feel good. God bless you, Gene. Thank you. Would you join me in a little applause for our two uh, civilian contestants here, Nancy Shirley and Terry Henry? <laughs> hey, Nancy. Hi. Where are you from and all that? I'm from Bakersfield, yeah. California. I'm a secretary. I have my own business, and I work mainly out of my home, primarily. So I can be home. I have two sons, ages Five, now six and eight and I'm married to a fireman we've been married for 13 years and we uh, support our children in school activities and local community activities good for you and you have very pretty teeth you must take oh, care of them thank right? you I try good all right <laughs> Terry tell us about you please well I'm from Long Beach California and I just recently started my own business and we manufacture and design uh, parts and uh, accessories for the sport of board sailing Board sailing? Yes. Windsurfing, we call it. Yes. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. Can you do that? Yes. I can do it, but it ain't easy, I'll tell you that. <laughs> well, first day you're up there, you fall 47 times, and from climbing back on the board, the board is rough, you know, so your feet don't slip. <laughs> and every time you climb up, it's a little like a little sandpaper here. And at the end of the day, it's all rough and red and swollen, and it's awful. Oh. Yeah, I guess I'm going to quit that sport there. <laughs> All right. The winner here of the match game will go on to challenge our returning champion on Hollywood Squares for a chance to win up to $30,000. Nancy Shirley, you won the toss, and that means you will go first. I will push my magic button here. Oh, there it is. You may have a choice of A or B. B, please. All righty. Here we go. Only took four pushes of the magic button, <laughs> but sometimes magic buttons don't work. Hey, my wife is such a bad cook. Oh, forget it. You're out of it. You are off the payroll, friends. My wife's such a bad cook, we sell her soup as blank remover. Here we go dancing. My wife is such a bad cook, 
we sell her soup as blink remover. Paint remover. Paint remover is good, Nancy. <laughs> what do you say, Gordon? Well, I was in the right area, but uh, not the right surface. Right. Wallpaper, Wallpaper. remover. Anything good here. <laughs> Sit down, George. Audience, that's why Robert brought in his own clack, because you're unfair with your booing. Now, that's not a bad answer. Anything like well, paint remover. Or... You are incorrigible. Okay, Robert. I said... Nail polish remover. <laughs> Love is where you find it. Don't be blind. Okay. I like that crazy George. Yeah, I want crazy to miss George. my publicist. He's up there. <laughs> You said paint remover. She said paint remover. Well, I said paint oh, remover. Yeah. Yeah. Hold it. Are you going scuba diving during the course of the show? Uh, I'm taking off on the next flight. Are those Actually, I was talking to Robert, and I wondered why he got to come on the show without a tie. And they said, well, you know, it's golf. He's got that image. So I said, well, I'm from Houston. At least I can play up the space thing. Kind of That's it. That's up a, a space bit. jacket. Very unusual and very handsome, too, I think. Hey, John, we sell her soup as blank remover. Well, first of all, I think we should give Robert the limousine and the fruit basket. I agree with you. That would be my vote. To keep Crazy George out of the studio. What do you say? Right. Okay. Second of all, I think we should find some contestants with last names because Nancy Shirley and Terry Henry strikes <laughs> me as kind of peculiar. Other than that, the reason I'm saying all this right now is because I'll probably never play again because I said paint. Okay, Fanny. I'd like to contact that crazy person in the audience later. Uh, <laughs> I said hair remover. Hair remover. <laughs> you want to employ him in your, put him in your Could service? I use you for just a second. Hair. <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't have any. He, George is loyal, if not can't else. relate. George can't is loyal relate. to uh, Robert Donner, and that's the end of that there. Nidra. Paint remover. Okay. All right. All right, Terry, let's see what we got for you. Hey, Maxine said, my husband is so boring, he's put more people to sleep than blink. A lot of good choices in this round. <laughs> That's good. Okay, Terry. Maxine said, my husband is so boring. He's put more people to sleep than blank. Johnny Carson? Johnny Carson is good. <laughs> you don't understand. We know what you, mean. you don't understand. Here's the logic. Johnny Carson is on late at night. Yeah. And people go to sleep. Sometimes during the show, because it's a late show, or sometimes right after the show. That's what she meant by that, and it's not a booable answer. Well, you got us out of that one. I'm well, figuring that most people use pills to go to sleep, and he's got to be better than that. I said put more people to sleep than pills. Sleeping pills, okay? Robert, have you thought of getting your own show? You wouldn't have to have a studio audience. You'd have one guy out there banging his drum. I have my own show, Gene. Yeah, I know it. I can see that. <laughs> I said a hypnotist. Aha! Look into my eyes. Okay. George, you're losing him. I think George is losing control there. Richard? Terry, I was with you, except a different channel. Oh. The Late Show. You know, if she had said The Tonight Show, they might have matched that, although it's hard to tell. Okay, John, put more people to sleep then. You can relate to this one, Crazy George, uh, because this guy looks like you, except he pretends that he has hair. Howard Cosell. Howard Cosell is a good response. Come on, George. Come on, give me a job. 
That's my boy. Okay, Fanny. How much is he paying you? I'll double it. <laughs> Triple it. Sleeping pills. Well, he's wealthy in his own right. Nidra. Well, first I said hot milk, and then I realized that is not a person. See? Right. So then I said Oral Roberts, but I'll probably hear from him, too. She doesn't watch this. Very good, Nidra. Now, at the end of round one, Nancy Shirley is ahead three to nothing. Round two will be along in a moment or so, so hurry back right after these messages. Here we go with round two. Nancy, you're ahead. You have to go first. Uh, try eight this time. Eight. Eight is. Here we go. Kevin went to sleep, and he dreamed. He dreamed he was an Olympic shot putter. When he woke up, he discovered he had tossed his blank out the window. <laughs> All right. Here we go, Gordon. Ready? In the slot. Nancy. Yes. Kevin went to sleep and dreamed he was an Olympic shot putter. When he woke up, he discovered he had tossed his blank out the window. Assuming he was married, his wife. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't know whether he's married or not. He said his wife, Gordon. What do you say? Well, that's a heck of an answer. <laughs> heck of an answer? Yeah. Well, wish I thought of it. Shoes. <laughs> Talk to shoes. <laughs> you know who you have to get for your next appearance on this show. <laughs> yeah. All right. Is it a winner? Wife is a wonderful answer. Wife is wonderful. Oh. Wife is wonderful. <laughs> Can you hear me? Your eardrum's broken? <laughs> Wife. Wife it is. Oh. All right. Now, Terry, you got a little catching up to do. That's right. Pay attention now. Winky Dink. Uh, <laughs> what? Crazy oh, joke. I thought. This guy's name is Wink Dinky. <laughs> Wink Dinky, the world's peppiest game show host, said, Ever wonder why I sound so peppy? It's easy. Before every show, I drop some blanks down my pants. <laughs> <laughs> Wink Dinky is speaking. Here we go, Terry. Wink Dinky, the world's peppiest game show host, said, Ever wonder why I sound so peppy? It's easy. Before every show, I drop some blanks down my pants. Some mice down my pants? Mice. Mice, eh? Mice might do it. I don't know. Let's see if we get any mice over here. George, uh, Gordon? Gordon, uh, little red ones. Little red ones. Ants in his pants. Take it away, Robert. It's my show, dummy! <laughs> now, Gene, I want you to use your imagination. Yes. And your intelligence. Mice cubes. Uh -huh. You don't wait, buy it, huh? Wait, wait, hold everything. We didn't get a buzz or a bell yet. They're thinking about it because the word mice is there. And they've got to come to a decision. They're conferring now. They don't need I can, to confer too far. Though I can hear their voices. I've now. altered my ballot. You've altered your ballot? Yes, I altered yeah. my ballot. Now, wait a minute. Ah. They, they did not give it to you, Robert. It's not your fault, Gene. No. They uh, did have a lengthy conference. Winky Dink, right? That was his name. No, right. Wink Dinky. Wink Dinky. Oh, yeah. God. Well, I, I felt left field on this, so I just went with... Uh, Wink Dinky with Pop Rocks. <laughs> I dropped some Pop Rocks down my pants. 
<laughs> I don't know what that means, and I'm not going to ask. Okay, John, I yeah, dropped some sure. blanks down my pants. Sure, that screwed me up, because this, this only applied to wink dink, Winky Dink. It didn't really apply to Wink <laughs> Dinky, you see. Jumping beans. <laughs> Jumping beans. <laughs> Fanny, what came to your mind? Wink Dinky came wink to my mind. Wink Dinky, yes. yes. I think I've been out with Wink Dinky. Um, I said hot peppers. Hot peppers. Oh, that'll make it jump around a lot. It really will. Now, here comes the moment of the truth. Nidra, what did, was... Mexican jumping beans. Mexican jumping beans. That's true, though. Well. So there we are at the end of round two, five to nothing. And Nancy, Nancy Sater, round three, the final round right after this. Here we go with round three, the final round. Nancy. I'll try B this time. All right, one person plays. Gordon, jump. Uh-oh. Oh, you alone. Oh. You alone. But you may get some help. The circus owner said, I think the great Zambezi is losing his nerve. He won't even walk across the street without a blank. Okay, Nancy. I think the great Zambini is losing his nerve. He won't even walk across the street without a blank. A balance bar? A balance, a pole, yeah. Pole. Balance bar, okay. Pole. That's it. That was one of the two good responses here, Gordon. Yeah, that was, that was a responsible response. Yes. But even more responsible response is, is net. And that's what you have. That was the other good one. Net and balance pole are the two good ones. Terry, that gives you a shot at winning, but you've got to match all six to win. Right. Five to tie, however. Right. Listen carefully now. Farmer Brown said, after that last earthquake here in California, the weirdest thing happened. I milked my cows, and instead of milk, I got blank. Oh. All right. I think we're about ready, aren't we? Yeah. Okay, Terry. Farmer Brown said, after that last earthquake here in California, the weirdest thing happened. I milked my cows, and instead of milk, I got blank. Milkshakes. Milkshakes. <laughs> like that, huh? Everybody loves milkshakes. Yeah, but only if you got cold hands would you get a milkshake. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, cottage cheese. Cottage cheese. Uh, Terry, you got to match all the rest of them to achieve a tie and stay in the game. Robert. Cream. Cream. So that means Nancy Shirley wins the game. Come on down, Nancy. Okay. Right here. We'll be with you in a moment. Terry, it was a pleasure to meet you. We're going to send some gifts to you from the match game. And Terry Henry, ladies and gentlemen, there she goes. Now, we congratulate you. Now it's time to switch to Hollywood Squares. Here comes the rest of the set so we can have nine stars out here. Three stars will make their appearance in a moment or so. We've got uh, John and I will change places up here. We've got lots more excitement, so don't go away. We'll be right back. A member of our studio audience will receive Tappan's Deluxe Microwave Oven with Tappan Touch Controls, built-in browner, 10 different cooking speeds, so you can program to defrost and cook automatically, furnished by Tappan. It's time for more of the match game. Hollywood Square, our with from Hotel Nathan Cook. From Dallas, Ken Crenshaw. Miss America, 1983, Deborah Sue Mappet. And taking over the star of the Hollywood Square. See, George likes you. Yes, you're a popular favorite. Okay, welcome to the second half of the Match Game, Hollywood Squares Hour. Uh, this is Nancy Shirley. She made her way through the Match Game. We also have three new celebrities. They are Ken Kercheval from Dallas, Deborah Sue Maffet, and Nathan Cook. And only 
one of them was Miss America of 1983. <laughs> yes, Nathan stood up. What? Well, something, something happened recently in your personal life, Nathan Cook. In my personal from life. From hotel. Yes. Yeah, uh, tell as us. As of January 4th, I'm no longer available, ladies. I'm married. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, I guess the operative question is, how married are you, Nathan? I'm very, very. Yeah, you enjoying it so far? So far, so good. <laughs> so far, so good. Except Crazy George. Now I don't know. Miami, let's see. Vikings, Bud Grant, Oakland A's, Billy Martin. Don't bang your drum for me, George. <laughs> Okay, so far so good for Nathan's marriage. So far so good for you, Nancy. One more time, let's play Hollywood Squares, your next game. It is one more time for you. You have been here once, Diego Domingo. You uh, amassed in that day 5,625 bucks. Thank Not you. bad. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you, I see you haven't lost your enthusiasm. Not at all. No. No, sir. Have you always been this enthusiastic, Diego, or only, is it only when you win money? You, it helps to win money, yes. yes. <laughs> I suppose you'd like to win some more. We're going to play Definitely. Hollywood Squares one more time, and we're going to play it until you hear the Times Up bell. Whoever's ahead at that point goes on to play Supermatch for up to $30,000. You won $5,000 yesterday. First game is worth $100, $25 for every square that is captured. You get to start champ. Take a look at him, pick a star, and let's go. Robert, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta train this guy better on his cues there, Bob. Okay. Didn't mean it, Robert. <laughs> Are you beginning to regret this? <laughs> Robert, who is more apt to get a wart? Helen Hayes or a member of the singing group Menudo? Well, this, this may surprise you, <clears throat> but warts are not caused by frogs or age. Oh. It's chilly. <laughs> chilly. Now what? That's a genius! That genius he is! So, so who eats more chili, Helen Hayes or the singing group Menudo? Menudo. Okay. Well, listen, this guy brought his own drummer, so <laughs> he must know something about groups. He says a Menudo is more apt to get a wart than Helen Hayes. What do you say? I disagree. A member of the singing group Menudo is more apt to get a wart. You should have agreed with Robert. Your opponent gets the first square. Robert, unfortunately for us, happened to be right. The reason his reasoning couldn't have been more crazy. Adolescents are more susceptible to warts. Oh. That is the reason. Yeah. Nancy? Nancy Shirley, you're playing O, oh, pick a star. Nathan, please. <laughs> Need you say good. Nathan Cook, yes. when is your body hotter? Earlier in the, early in the morning or late at night? <laughs> <laughs> or right this minute? <laughs> As a newlywed. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> let's see. I will say, I'll go for the obvious, and I will say late at night because you've been moving all day and um, got body heat and now uh, get me out of this. I agree or disagree? He says late at night. I agree with him. Late at night it is. Yes, you're right to agree. You get the square and you're off to a very, very good start. You got two O's up there. And Diego Domingo, you are playing X. Gene DeBlock. Yeah. Gene DeBlock. Yes, please. You missed Block. this one. The first game belongs to Nancy Shirley. Gene Rayburn. Which is more, the price of a new Rolls Royce Corniche or the combined price of everything in the Sears Christmas catalog? <laughs> <laughs> now, the regular catalog is about so thick. Right. The Christmas catalog is, a, once, uh, is about so thick. A corniche is over $100,000. I would venture that you could buy everything in that uh, Sears Christmas catalog for less than $100,000. So the corniche costs more. Right. Agree or disagree to block, Diego? Agree with me, dummy. I'll agree, sir. <laughs> Should have disagreed because oh. the Sears catalog, everything in the Sears catalog costs more. If your opponent gets a square and wins the first game in a clean sweep, three hours in a row. Here are the figures. 
In the Sears catalog, everything in the Sears King Christmas catalog costs just over a quarter of a million dollars. A Rolls Royce Corniche only costs one hundred and fifty-seven thousand dollars. Well, right, right. Can you back. order it by mail? Okay. <laughs> Think about that while we break. For it, we'll be back with a two hundred dollar game after these messages. Stay tuned for more of the match game. Hollywood Squares Hour. Now, back to John Bauman and the Hollywood Square. <laughs> well, okay, welcome back, everybody. It's 175 to zip. Nada, <laughs> nada, Diego Domingo. But it's early yet. Right. You get to start this game. It's worth 200 bucks. Pick a star. Robert, please. Audience, you know the old phrase, hit him again, hit him again, harder, harder. <laughs> Any of you willing to try that, be my guest. Okay, Robert Donner, when the no smoking sign goes on in a U.S. passenger plane, is the pilot supposed to put his cigarette out too? Or can he keep on smoking because he's the pilot? When the, when the no smoking sign goes on? Right. Do you understand this question, George? I would say that a pilot is allowed to do whatever he wishes in the <laughs> privacy of his own cockpit, but uh, I would say he would have to uh, extinguish his smoke also in case, you know, somebody was looking. He says the pilot has to put his, his cigarette out as well, Diego. Agree or disagree? I'll agree with Robert. Yes, you're on the board. The pilot has to put out his cigarette, too. And you're square, you're on the board, and it's quarter row for Robert Okay, Nancy, your move. You're playing O. I'll go with Ken, please. Pardon me? Ken. Okay, Ken Kirchival from Dallas. Do elephants dream, Ken? Or is that on something only human beings do? Uh, let's see. Elephants. Well, uh, dogs dream because they go like that. <laughs> uh, I'll bet they do. They have, you know, if they've got those memories, I'll bet they do. I'll bet they dream big. It's not if they... <laughs> it's not if they remember their dreams, Ken. It's just if they dream. All right. Okay. He says elephants dream. What do you say, Nancy? I think they do. I agree. Elephants do dream. <laughs> yes, and they probably do remember them. Okay, you get the square we got an O and an X up there. It's even up, Diego. Pick a star. Yes, I'll try, um... Richard, please. Okay. It's even up in this game. However, you are behind overall. Richard J. Porter! Richard J. from Another World. You are dining out. As dessert, you're having some cherries. Now, according to Etiquette for Every Day, how should you get rid of the pits? Should you? <laughs> Stick your fingers in your mouth and take them out. Mm -hmm. Or should you use a spoon? Well, I know that when I have my cherries with its whether. Oh, come on. All right. I think I better just let this one go across. Definitely. Definitely. I always put it in the spoon and set it down on the saucer. So you should use a spoon. Agree or disagree, Diego? I disagree. Uh-huh, 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 smarty pants. You should take them out with your fingers, according to etiquette for every day. Okay. Very well done, Diego. You are perfectly right. You do get the square. Thank you. Yes. Gag the audience with a spoon. Okay, Nancy Shirley, you're playing O. Make your move. Gordon de Block. You missed this one. Diego takes the game and gets the lead. Gordon, jump. Yes. When do hens lay more eggs? When they're nice and warm? Or when they're a little chilly? Um, well, it, actually, when they're, they're nice and warm. Agree or disagree to block? I'll agree. When they're warm is correct. Yes, you're right to agree. You get the square. You do block. And we are in the middle of a very exciting break us here. We're going to be back to finish it after these messages. Come back with us. 225. 250. Or rather, you have 50. Yes. 
a little bit behind, but there is still a bit of time. You are playing X. Jane to block, please. You missed this one to game, and a bigger lead belongs a to Nancy. A dramatic moment. Come on, it Jane. Is. Jean. Yes. You're a duck. Sure I am. Quack, 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 quack. As long as we're in agreement. Quack. What do you have more of in your meat? Fat or protein? Quack, 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 quack. <laughs> the layer of adipose tissue on a duck is about three quarters of an inch. <laughs> And the muscle tissue is far thicker than that. Oh. So I would say definitely protein. Was that the question? <laughs> I don't know, but you gave me an answer. That's it. More protein. Right. More protein in duck meat, he says. Agree or disagree to block, Diego? I agree. There is more fat oh. in duck meat. You should have disagreed with Gene. Oh. Let's get the Convincing. Okay. Three O's in a row, two games in a row. A lead of 450 to 50, but there is still time. Clear the board, sweep off all the X's, get rid of all the O's, start another game. This one's worth 300 bucks. Diego Domingo, Robert, your move. Please. Oh, Robert! these guys here we go back here time's running out on the contestants robert robert you can do this without crazy george your dog sees you naked and you think he's grinning at you according to the book understanding your dog can your pooch grin or are you paranoid you want a quick answer to this yep <laughs> I'm paranoid. <laughs> Agree or disagree? I disagree. Yes, you are right to disagree. Your dog can grin. Anyone's dog can grin. Robert may still be paranoid, but your dog can grin. Okay. He was wrong. He had no idea. Okay, Nancy Shirley, your move. Nathan, please. That's nice. George, George even cheers for you when you're wrong. Okay, Nathan Cook, which, what yeah. lasts longer? What lasts longer? Uh -huh. No, this is good for you. The average honeymoon... Mm -hmm. Or a can of store-bought whipped cream. <laughs> can of store-bought whipped cream and honeymoon. I mean, how, uh, you know, <laughs> the whipped cream. Nathan, as far as the whipped cream, it's how long it keeps. Oh. You know, how long oh. it will keep rather oh. than how long it takes to use it. Oh, that's a whole different light. I will definitely say the uh, whipped cream than the average honeymoon. Not my honeymoon, honeymoon honey. No. <laughs> the average. Agree or disagree that the whipped cream will keep longer than the honeymoon? I agree. Yes, whipped cream it is. 60 days for the whipped cream. Only 8.5 days for the honeymoon. Okay, Diego Domingo. Time is against you. Nidra, please. please. Nidra Vols. <laughs> what is the official... Hold on, guys. Hold on, we got a time factor here. Nidra. What? what is the official language of Uganda? Is it Ugandese or English? Ah, let's try English. I agree. Yes, English it is. You're right to try English. We've all tried English for a change on this show, and you get the square. Diego, Nancy, it's your pick. Ken de Block. Okay. Now, if you miss this one, the game belongs to Diego. Ken Kercheval from Dallas. Which came first, Roy Rogers or the first organized rodeo? Oh, the rodeo. What do you think? I agree. The rodeo it is. Yes, right to agree. You get the square and you do block. Yeehaw! Okay, Mr. Domingo, she has thwarted you there. Deborah Sue to block. You missed this one, it's a humongous lead for Nancy. <laughs> Deborah Sue Maffet, Miss America. Before a male scorpion makes love to a female scorpion, they do something special. Do they dance, or do they sting each other? Well, you know, I'm a scorpion. <clears throat> you didn't want to know that. <laughs> uh, but I know, I know this answer. They sting each other. I'll agree. They dance. You should have disagreed. Your opponent gets the square, wins another game, and it's up to a real big lead. 
And the bell means the time is up. $825. It's sweet for the Scorpions, and it's sweet for you. You're our new champ, Nancy Shirley. Zip yourself right over there. Join Gene Rayburn. Get sent me a shot at the big money. Crazy George likes it, too. Get ready for a big one, Crazy, though, okay? Get ready for a big one because we're going to say goodbye to a man who's been here for two days and amassed in that time a total of 5,725 bucks. Hit it, Crazy. Congratulations, Diego Domingo. Well done. Okay, Gene, to you. Thank you, John. All right, congratulations to our new champion here. We'll be back with her and our nine stars in a moment or so. First, this for you. And now, here to play the super match is Gene Rayburn. Okay, Gene, what? Here we go. Well, well, well. You're going to do it, aren't you? I'm going to do it. You're going to think positively? Think positively. All right. Thinking positively could give her $30,000. Let's begin. We polled the studio audience and said, write down your best answer to this. B, B, blank. B, B, blank. $1,000 for the most popular. $500 for the second most popular. $250 for the third. Whom do you call on for a little assist here? I'll start with John. John, what do you say to this? Gun. BB gun. Yeah. Nathan. I'll go with BB King. BB uh, King. Uh, Great blues singer. Fanny. Oh, good. I <laughs> know. <laughs> this is really this is the hot seat on this one. There okay. it is. Okay. Oh. You know, I really do have an answer. You do have an answer. I swear, it came to me strangely from the right, but it didn't. Uh, <laughs> It's not spelled right. You know who Mr. Nixon's friend, B.B. Rebozo? B.B. Rebozo. B.B. It's so funny. He spells it B-E-B-E, but it's B. Here he'd be. But it's all right. B.B. Rebozo is a gun, king, and Rebozo. Do you want one of those or one of your own? No, I want one of those. I'll go with gun. B.B. gun. All right. Is there a B.B. gun up there? That is a question. Let us look at the $250 response. BBC, uh -huh. the British Broadcasting uh -huh. Company. A bunch of Anglophiles, sure. Uh -huh. All right, let's see if we have a BB gun under the $500 response. Yes, we do! What? You're kidding me! <laughs> BB King now, if you uh, had to second guess yourself, wow. what it's would Rebozo. you say is on top? King. No, BB <laughs> King. That's a shocker. All right, Rebozo. slide the big one. BB <laughs> King is right. <laughs> what did you think of it? I did, uh-huh. And you rejected it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now, here she has $500, and that means you're going to play the head-to-head -head match now with any star of your choosing. And each star, remember, has a secret number in front, a 10, a 20, or a 30. When you make your selection, that star will reveal that number and multiply your $500 by whatever that number is. Are you ready? I'm ready. Go. I'll choose Nathan. All right, Nathan, grab the cat tab and give it a yank. Ten thousand, five thousand dollars is what you are playing for. Five thousand. That ain't bad. Hey, hey, I'll take it. <laughs> Here it is. Blank school, S C H O O L, blank school. Nathan made up his mind very quickly, Nancy. It's up to you now to collect the $5,000 by matching him. Hi. Hi, aren't we all? Okay. Nathan, she says, hi, we'll match you. Hi, Nathan. Hi. hi, Nancy. Hi! $325. We'll be back with Nancy and our stars right after this. Okay, now we want to reveal which of the stars had the large number. Which one? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. All right, everybody get set. Ready, go. Well. <laughs> Crazy 
be yours. You're getting paid off. <laughs> Don't ever come back again. That's the end. Say good night, George. <laughs> All right, stars, we'll see you tomorrow. But George, not you. Gene Raybert inviting you to join us tomorrow. John Bell would say it's so long for the match game. Hollywood Square's crazy George. A member of our studio audience will receive Jules Jurgensen, elegantly styled watches, ladies' sports analog with rectangular case, six diamonds and mesh bracelet, plus a gent's sports analog day date in a carrot clad case with matching bracelet furnished by Jules Jurgensen. This is Gene Wood speaking for the match game, Hollywood Squares Hour. A Mark Goodson television production. Get ready to match the stars from Mork and Mindy, Robert Donner, Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Raleigh, from the Young and the Restless, Melody Thomas, McLean Stevenson, and Marcia Wallace, as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game. And now, here's the star of Match Game, Gene Raver. I just thought we'd play doctor. Oh, oh, oh. oh shabby and beneath right? you. How can you tell? Because I'm in the business, Gene. Well, I'm this connected. is my doctor bag here. Oh. Oh, it is a microphone thing. A whole bunch of them back stairs. Hey, why don't we... Oh, we boy. Get three or four oh, boy, bucks for that. one of these, couldn't we? Oh, Listen, you know John Davidson. I did his show, and he said, where does Gene get that wonderful long microphone? John Davidson? Yeah, what did you answer? I, 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 you know, I promise never to tell anything. Oh. You know me. Well, CBS yeah. made this specially for me. It's one of a kind. All right. Are you all ready? You know, not since Marconi was born has there been such an interesting discussion. <laughs> well, we tried anyway. All right, here's Marcy yeah. Bennett and Rip Ribble. Applause the Remember Marcy from Huntington Beach? And uh, she's a mixologist. <laughs> right? A cocktail waitress. A cocktail yes. waitress, yeah. Is that an interesting thing? It can be, yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. You make any money at it? Yes. Oh, good. All right. And Rip Ribble here works in uh, with young people in uh, the athletic field. Is that right? Yes. We have everything for uh, from uh, tiny tot swimming programs at three year, three months old all the way through senior citizens. Well, that's interesting too. All right. Let's see where we are here. We're uh, oh, we didn't get started, did we? So we're right at the beginning of Mark uh, round one. So Marcy, you go first. Um, I'd like to choose A. You would A. Yes. All right. <laughs> Rick said that snake charmer is really weird. How weird is he? Some of you said, how weird is he? And some of you said, how weird is she? Now make up your mind. How is weird it is it? Uh, instead of a flute, he's trying to charm that snake with a blank. <laughs> weird. All right, Martin. Rick said that snake charmer is really weird. Instead of a flute, he's trying to charm that snake with a blank. With a violin. A violin. Yeah. Right. Anything other than a flute yeah. would be okay. Anything other than a flute. Saxophone. Saxophone, that's good. Hey, any instrument. Right back to the 20s. I said a banjo. A banjo. All right. We're Toilet getting to the... paper on a comb. Right. That's as far removed from a flute as one would hope to get. What do you say, Melody? I said a tuba. A tuba. Another weird one. Instead of a flute, he's trying to charm that snake with a what, McLean? A bass drum. A bass drum. Another winner. Thank you. What do you say, Marcia? Well, each to his own, taste-wise, in the music department. Right. You march to the sound of a different drummer. I absolutely do. Or? A Jerry Vale record. A Jerry Vale record. Mona Lisa. That is weird. That is. That's what he had. What was what? his no. big song, his one big song? Was that your Volare? Right. Volare. That's it. No, no request, please. No. Oh. Thank you. All right, Rip, let's see what we have for you. Rick, uh, Nick said, my neighbor, the hairstylist, is a hairstylist through and through. He's got the only lawn on the block with a blank. <laughs>
Nick said my neighbor, the hairstylist, is a hairstylist through and through. He's got the only lawn on the block with a blank. I'd say perm. A perm. What's that, short for permanent? Right. He said a perm. That's short for permanent. You know... In hair talk. If Rip's name wasn't Ripple... Right. It was Dibble. Rip Dibble? No, they call him Dip. Dip, that's right. Yeah, these things come to me as I study the guests. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? How do I know? Perm, Ask him. He said they called him... What? Perm. Aren't we playing the game now? Yeah. yeah. Permanent. There it is. All right, one for Rip. Or Dip, as the case may be. We're on the air now, Bob. We're Charles coming, said we were going Bob. to take baths now. <laughs> a permanent wave and a blow dryer. Aha. Uh -huh. That's two for Rip. You think a rugged guy like me would come up with an answer like perm? Yes. Uh-huh, perm. perm. <laughs> All right, he's got three. Uh, uh, the neighbor's a hairstylist through and through. He's got the only lawn on the block with a... A perm. A perm. Four. I can't believe it. For a round one question, break the magic, would you, McLean? Okay, with a merp. A merp. <laughs> All right. Well, you can always count on me. Yes, to break the spell. To break the spell. A feather cut. A feather cut. Like Dorothy Hamill has, you know? That's right. Mm -hmm. I understand. Well, that's not bad for first round quiz. It's quite good, as a matter of fact. Five for you. You'll have a shot at it in a moment. So now this. Okay. I just want you to know. I pulled that right out of my pocket. What's it say? Inspected by number three. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I was thoroughly inspected by number three. What's your number, Marcy? Uh, a or B? Uh, I'll take B. Oh, wait a minute. Rip. Oh, wait a minute. Hold, hold, hold. hold up. Oh, Rip has uh, so one B more to go, first. so you're ahead. You have to go first. What do you say there? I'll take B. B? Okay. Oh, it's only me, isn't it? You're the only one. Oh, how you. embarrassing for me. You're the one. <laughs> oh, gosh. All Dan eyes said. are on me, huh? Dan said, you know you're really sick when your doctor gets a second opinion and he gets it from a blank. <laughs> Ready, dip, a rip. Dan said, you know, you're really sick when your doctor gets a second opinion and he gets it from a blank. I'd say a quack. A quack. Quack. Really? <laughs> What'd you say? He What said quack, say? yeah. Wasn't a lot better than quack. Mortician. Yeah. Mortician. Oh, you like it? Oh, good. Really sick. Oh, is that the answer? Oh, yeah. Is that the answer? No, he said a quack. Oh, I know, but I mean, was that a good answer? I mean, mortician was excellent. Oh, good. Okay. Because he's really sick, you know. Yeah, he goes for his second opinion from a mortician, oh, then you know you're in trouble. Oh, right. Marcy, you need five to tie and six to win. Pete said, you know your daughter is really wild when she goes to some to somebody's wedding and comes home with a blank as a memento. <laughs> wild daughter. I hate to say it, but you kind of stumbled. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Marcy. You know, your daughter is really wild when she goes to somebody's wedding and comes home with a blank as a memento. With the grim? Perfect. Yeah. 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 Splendid answer, right? That's a marvelous answer. Do you have an eraser? <laughs> <laughs> Groom. Groom. One for Marcy. They're getting brighter and brighter every day on the show, aren't they? You finally got the hang of it. Groom. All right. Groom. All right, Chuck. What do you say? Your wild daughter goes to somebody's wedding, comes home with a blank as a memento. What do you say to that melody? So blatant, you have to be a little discreet. Who's going to miss the usher? Usher. Aha. Now you got to match both McLean and uh, Marsha to achieve a tie. Yeah, I tell you. You went so fast, I was just slipping my thing in the thing and trying to write at the same time and came up with a word. And I'm just going to let the judges uh, worry about that. Well, now, wait a minute. That's G-R. Um, Could we see that? That's, it's a, almost an O, so, all right. Matt, Matt, did you see this? 
What other words begin that way? Uh, I, there was, I, was think, I was thinking of, uh, I was going to say priest, and then I said, then I thought of groom, and then it came out ground. Ground in the air. Anyway. But I thank you for giving Five to four the score. You've got to Matt Marsha to achieve uh, a tie here. Go. Uh -huh. oh. well, she was even wilder than I thought. I had her going with the best man. Best man. Oh. All right, come on down, Rip. And uh, find the blue mark. We'll say au revoir to Marcy for just a little while. We'll be back again on the two later, Marcy. And now, here he is with a go at the really big money here. We polled the studio audience not too long ago and said, write down your best answer to this. Gung oh. blank. Oh. All right. Oh. Whom do you want for a little assistance here? How about uh, Charles? Gung ho. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Marcia? Gung ga din. Gung ga din. Bob is trying to get your attention. Don't miss this one. Bob. Gung fu. <laughs> Gung fu. Gun It'll be up food. there. I'm gun. Oh, listen, I'll, bet, I'll bet you this I'll three hundred dollar microphone. It's not going to be up there. All right, I'll bet. Gene, you glasses. know better than that. Right. It's not going to be up there. My glasses. I know this audience. Close your bets. Close your bets now. Close your bets. No, no, Gung Fu is not going to be up there. Now you have to choose between Gunga Din, Gung Ho, and Gung Fu, or one of your own, if you so desire. I'd like to choose Gung Ho. Yeah. Gung Ho. Do you think Gung Fu is going to be up there anywhere? No, I don't think so. Even he doesn't think it's going to be up there. He doesn't think it's going to be I up there. I bet it is. There's room for more. <laughs> Let's take a look at the $100 response. Let's take... Gung Show. And yeah, you don't think Gung Fu is coming up? No. I, <laughs> I changed my mind. You're probably right with that weird audience. Oh, Gung Show. Oh, God. Oh, darling. Oh, yes, of course. Good gravy. How many of you used to watch that show? Yeah. The Gung... The Gung Show? <laughs> oh, boy. Let's take a look at the next one. Gunga Din. That's up there. All right, let's see if Gung Ho is up under the $500 number. Go, yay! Get his dollar, honey. Where's the dollar? Can we change hands on television? Well, don't we learn something every day? All right. You got $500, and I just won Bob Donner's glasses and a little side bet here. And uh, you can, we're going to give you a chance to spin the wheel a little bit later. But uh, where'd everybody go? Yeah. Oh, here's a little message for you. Hurry back. Here again, the star of our show, Gene Raver. Now, he's won the $500. Now we have to determine whether he's going to play for $5,000 or $10,000. Spin the wheel. We'll root for a double. Good luck to you. Here we go. <laughs> Close. Oh, All no. right. <laughs> yeah, good luck to you. $5,000 with Bob Downer right on the blue dot facing me. Here we go. Thank you. This is it. Good luck. Blank hey. booze. B-O-O-Z-E. Blank booze. You got one? Don't say it yet. Your job is to match Bob down. If you do that, you get $5,000. How do you fill in that blank? I'd probably say hard. Hard booze? Hard booze. That means uh, high specific gravity content. Right. High proof. High proof. Like 90 proof would be hard booze. What do you say, Bob? He says hard booze. Well, hard booze is good booze. But better booze is free booze. Free booze. Oh. Sorry. Oh, free that booze. That was hard. That's a Boy, tough one. That yeah. One all right so listen yeah, Rip, you've yeah. got $500 you've got Melody, a shot at game number two so let's uh, get your opponent back here Marcy Bennett and see how that goes wow. here comes Marcy here we go welcome back what'd you do back there oh nothing really bridge game going on or something anything all right Marcy you go first again A or B B all right Ed said you know you've had too much to drink at the party. 
when you cover yourself with blank and try to do an impersonation of a pizza. had too much to drink at the party when you cover yourself with blank and try to do an impersonation of a pizza with chips with chips yeah chips you know like potato chips and stuff right chips she said i feel much better oh. <laughs> bob i was going to say cover yourself with italians <laughs> <laughs> but then i said no show a little bit of class and i said cheese cheese all right that's one of the ingredients in a pizza. Well, I said cheese, anchovy, tomato sauce, and an Italian. Uh-huh. But you know me, I've always been trash. Right. True. I don't know about this. Dip. Dip. Well, dip goes with chips. Right. But, uh... Any day, you're not one and the same. Right. You've had too much to drink when you cover yourself with chips uh, according to her and try to do an impersonation yeah, of a pizza well, what do you say i had tomato changed the v8 which i should have had this morning tomato v8 v8 v8, v8. It's wrong but it's better right have you ever had a pizza well that's a right. very yes. personal question yes um, well i mean what do they put on pizzas met. they put uh i guess they put, they put tomatoes pizza, and cheese okay. and uh, anchovies and uh, salami and all kinds of things don't they what do you what do you put on your pizza let's see it um I put cheese dip on my pizza. You put cheese dip on your pizza? A lot of people don't like it that way, but no. I'll put an old sneaker and about a half a pound of... Uh, uh, an old sneaker and some cheese Whiz, actually, yeah. is what I use. Right. And then I'll just dip right into that sucker and oh. just eat my little yeah. heart out. You could never sell that to an Italian person, you know. I would never want to do that. Stay, uh, stay out of the Feast of San Gennaro and Mulberry Street and all those places. Okay. Because they well, won't I buy that I from you. Well, what do I'll you make say? other plans. Gosh, wasn't that a tasty thought. Right. I just have those rotten anchovies. Anchovies. Right. They uh, make you very thirsty, don't they? Because they're so salty. Rip, let's see what we have of you for the round one question. Uh -huh. Ruth said, my sunburn is so bad, even my blank is peeling. My sun blank, my sunburn. My blank is so bad. Well, my sunburn is so bad, even my blank is peeling. Roman was it? Ruth, right. The biblical Ruth. Charles, the first one finished. That's uh -huh. it for Charles. Uh -huh. The okay. first time in six months. Yay! Here we go, Rip. Ruth said, my sunburn is so bad, even my blank is peeling. I'd probably say hair. Hair. All right. Bob Donner, Bob Donner. Jean, Jean, you know, if Rip's last name was Dibble instead of Ripple, yep. I wouldn't even talk to him. <laughs> What'd he say? He hair. said hair. That's a good guess. Hair, hair it is. All right, one for Rip. Adorable. Now that I think about it, I'm kind of ashamed of my answer, which hasn't happened to me this week. Usually it happens earlier, usually you're on. But I am a little ashamed of my answer. But this is a true thing. Have you ever gotten such a bad uh, sunburn and stayed out in the sun so long <sighs> that your foot bottoms appeal? Now that's oh, yeah. A, <laughs> that's your happened. foot bottoms? Foot bottoms. Foot bottoms. The bottoms the soles of, of your, your foot, feet, right. Your bottoms of your foot? Yeah. That can yes, happen. Yes, I Don't have turn on here. Me. I've tried so sure, yeah. oh, I, Yes, I have. This is the definitive. Thanks. Fingernails. Fingernails. One good answer. Yes, indeed. It's no better than foot bottom. Anything impossible because like can that. Feel, Melody, feel my bottom. sunburn is so bad, even my blank is peeling. Feel, but no. I was expecting to get in big trouble for this, but I'm right. Hair. You didn't think that was a good answer? No. It matches. That's the whole idea. Anything unlikely, see, like hair, it's unlikely that your hair would peel, Very, isn't it? Yes. So that's why it was a good Both answer, right? Unlikely, right. Uncle James. Yeah, uh, right. That's why I said bikini. Bikini, another good one. Very Excellent. Peel right off. You well, wish. You might put one of those on your pizza, too, hon. They're tasty. <laughs> <laughs> Teeth. Teeth, another good answer. Thank you. All right. 
So it's two to nothing in favor of Rip at the end of round one. Now we've got this message for you. What are we going to do here in 45 seconds? A friend of what mine in the like? audience, I yeah. tell you, I don't have anything to promote personally, but his name is Kevin. I'd like to give him a sweatshirt. Little boy sitting right down there in the front row. It's just been a marvelous day. Oh, yeah. Have you got a small one for him? Come up here. Come on up here. Come here, Kevin. Kevin, come on up here. Got a sweatshirt. Let's go. Marcia, you got a small sweatshirt for him? Come on, Kevin. Yeah, come on, Kevin. Small. Come on sweetie. There. There. Aunt Brett will come down there and get you. There you go, McLean. Had a way to go. Hey, that'll fit him very nicely. Don't be frightened. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Let the kid alone, he said. <laughs> All right. Get back into your cage there. Say thank you. All right. Well. Can't win them all. Join us next time for the match game. I'm Gene Rayburn. Goodbye. Today's contestants will also receive a Fabergé collection featuring organic shampoo and conditioner with pure wheat germ oil and honey for fresh smelling hair with super shine, super body. And Flavor Ice, America's favorite quick freeze fruit flavored bars. 24 giant bars in the package. It's all your delicious flavors. Flavor Ice, the giant cooler. Easy caulker, foam caulker, and easy insulator for wider gaps. No gun, no mess with either can. Easy caulker, easy insulator. Red crack and crevice spray. Unique extension wand spray is hard to reach places to kill crawling bugs. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game. A Mark Woodson, Bill Topman production. The program was edited for production. Get ready to match the stars from the love boat, Ted Lands, Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Riley, from It Is Enough, Susan Richardson, from Mork and Mindy, Bob Donner, and from Flo, Joyce Bulevant, as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game. And now, here's the star of Match Game, Gene Rayburn. You know what I was just doing? There are two guys back there. He says, wait a minute, before you go on, sit down there. So I sit down there. He said, raise your feet. I had to raise my feet. They sprayed the bottom of my shoes. <laughs> my body is picking up static electricity and uh, discharging it through the microphone, and it's making, it was making funny sounds. So I'm electrifying. <laughs> Here we have Paige Taylor and Jim Gardner. Hey! hey. Do you remember Paige Taylor, <laughs> who's learning how to play this uh, 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 on-the-job training? Hey. How you doing, Paige? Fine. Good. <laughs> and Jim Gardner here, he won one game, he has $250. We're in the middle of round one of game number two, right? Yeah, right. That means Paige has had her question, match three of our stars, and Jim is going to have a go at it now and see what he can do. Howard said to the psychiatrist, anything you like to be sprayed? Uh, that's... Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I guess not. I'll just put that down there. Howard said to the psychiatrist, Doc, you've got to help me. My wife treats all the plants like children. Yesterday, she bought the fern a blank. <laughs> all right, Jim. Howard said to the psychiatrist, Doc, you've got to help me. My wife treats all the plants like children. Yesterday, she bought the fern a blank. An ice cream. An ice cream. Anything that you'd buy for a child. What they're after here is anything that you would buy for a child. A toy, something edible, or anything like that. What do you say? A toy or something edible. Right. Or an edible toy. An edible toy. Yes, or an edible toy. I just said a toy. A toy. Okay, that's good. You can do no wrong with this audience. I like this audience. You got to mesmerize? What do you do? You just didn't mind to pay them off a little bit, is that it? It, it didn't cost but a thousand dollars. Oh, that's not bad. Which is money I didn't have. Right. What do you say? I Probably. say they're crazy about him because he's cute as a button. He is cute. 
I, I go for and myself. And he's crazy about me. <laughs> I said, I, this is a toy. I said I bought him a fire engine because it was the fern's third birthday. <laughs> All right. Well, zip you too. <laughs> Here's Mr. San Francisco Opera. Auntie Brad. What, dear? A doll that wets. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. You've got to help. My wife treats all the plants like children. Yesterday bought the fern, a doll that wets, or an ice cream cone, or anything. Or, well, Charles and I are always on the same track, and that's frightening. <laughs> a box of diapers. Box of diapers. All right. Well, she's heavy into motherhood. Bill Dana. <laughs> I knew that would wake him up. Babs Danner. Why, Dan Banner, do you miss? <laughs> Uh, I said that she brought the little sucker a puppy. A puppy. Uh -huh. That's cute. That's very cute. Sweet. Anything you'd buy for a child, what do you say? A fern was wetting on her mahogany table, so she bought it a box of pampers. Oh. Box of pampers. That's two of those. All right, we go to round two. Paige, you're ahead, so you go first. I'm B. B it is. B for Paige. Don't write. At Don't the write. Italian restaurant, Marion said, that chef must have been a hairdresser. <laughs> He's blanking the spaghetti. <laughs> Only three people play. Brett and Charles. At the Italian restaurant, Marion said that chef must have been a hairdresser. He's blanking the spaghetti. Combing? Combing? Combing. Not a couple of them. <laughs> what else goes on in a beauty parlor? What do you say there, Brett? Oh, honey, I said brushing. Brushing. But, but Charles gets, well, we call this, he gets the old hat award. Old hat award? Why? Well, because what his answer is something that went out about five years ago or even ten years well, he's ago. Well, ne he's never been in a woman's uh, beauty salon. How would he know? Award. All right. Old hat uh, you made award. your point. Now lay out. <laughs> All right. When I have come to match game, and I have enjoyed every year of this, <laughs> I have come to the makeup department prior to coming to the stage. Correct. Late many times, but I get there. Yes. And in that department, next to that department, I should say, is the hair department. <laughs> and sitting in a chair for the last eight years in the hair department, getting her hair teased within an inch of its life, may you never cast another stone teasing! All right. Teasing. That's right. They do that to her hair all the time. What do you say, Susan? Curling. Curling. What about blow drying? Don't they do a lot of that? Sure they do. Uh, well, yes. All right. Now, Jim, here's the way it is. You need three to tie, four to win. Judy said my new fur coat must be made out of horse hair. Oh, wait a minute. Hold everything. <laughs> All right, here is a commercial. Hairdresser! <laughs> here it is. You heard part of it. Here we go with the rest of it. Judy said, my new fur coat must be made out of horse hair. Every time I put it on, I start blanking. <laughs> Hello, Jim. Judy said, my new fur coat must be made out of horse hair. Every time I put it on, I start blanking. Neighing. 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 Well, he said, neighing. Well, I was going for something else, I think. I said itching. Itching. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you ain't put on a the horse. Fur is, uh, yeah. yeah, the fur would be... Uh, uh, no, 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 you're all wrong. All wrong. Wrong, all wrong. No, no, he's a fabulous little devil. He's got his little glasses on, he's got a little camel's hair jacket, and he's got his little friend over here also saying that. Name. Hey. All right, that's one for him. Score is now three to one. When we lived in Hartford, we had a whole stable of wonderful polo ponies. As of team. course, yes. That and fish sticks, which we ate for 12 years. <laughs> running! Running! Yes, of course you could gallop or trot or canter or do any of those things. Couldn't you, Susan? A whole, yeah, there's a slew of them you could do. Well, but what did your horse do? Bucking. Oh, he was bucking. Yeah. With a big B. All right. What do you got there, Bob? Well, uh, we started galloping. 
Galloping. All right, let me, Paige, wins the game. What do you have, Joyce? Asking, Asking for Oats. Asking for Oats, okay. Now, Jim, you'll be leading here with uh, $250. That's not bad. And our best wishes, Jim Gardner from Kentucky. Wait a minute. Hey, oh, oh, oh. Come on, don't fall down there. Hello. <laughs> what would you like? <laughs> what would I like? Yes. $10,000. Oh, well, let's see if we can accommodate you. We pulled the studio audience page and said, write down your best answer to this. Turnip. Oh, blank. boy. Turnip blank. Okay. All right. How about Brett? Turnip greens. Turnip greens. Okay. Um, Susan. Susan. Patch. Turnip patch. Okay, um, let's see. Bob is not looking at you, but Joyce is. Joyce. You're going to trust that look? <laughs> I was looking like this. Uh, oh, don't give that answer, dear. Root. <laughs> <laughs> well, that turnip has roots. Turnip root, eh? <laughs> All right. Turnip root, turnip patch, and turnip greens are the three they've given you. You want one of those or one of your own? Um, let's see. Turn up greens. Greens. Let's see if greens is up there. We'll be getting down at the bottom as usual. Let's take a look at the $100 response. Turn up patch. All right. That's okay. Turn up patch. Let's take a look at the next one, please. Turn up seeds. That's a popular one. Fabulous. Yes. You did great, stars. I bet it's Turnip Thompson, the shortstop for Delaware. He was fabulous. <laughs> I bet you turn up your nose. Turn up your I nose. I last game. Right. Five hundred dollar response says. Lee. Oh. Green. Yeah. Very good. Paige, you've got five hundred dollars. And that means the least you'll play for is 10 times that amount, or $5,000. However, you're going to spin the wheel and see if you can double it up now to $10,000. Here we go. Ready? You. You. Watch it. There it is. Susan, I don't know. I just took a shot at her. I took a guess. I said it's going to be Susan. Before she spun it. All right, there you go. For $5,000. Good luck to you. This is it. Affairs blank. Want to read it? A W F A I R S. Affairs blank. Just so that we understand each other here. Now, your job is to match Susan. If you do, you get $5,000. Affairs. Can it be a sentence? Oh, sure. You can say anything you want you think will match her. Okay. Um, are fun. Affairs are fun? Uh -huh. Wait, don't run away, honey. God love you, Paige. Oh, now that we're getting to know each other, <laughs> affairs are fun. <laughs> In Encino. Yes, that's right. Yes. Cancel the room in Encino tonight, Brett, uh, for you and me. I think there's something else oh. going on here. She says, affairs are fun. Well, who would disagree with that, eh? Right. Well, let's look at this audience. What a bunch of dingbats we got here. It's like, uh, well, how's that doing? All right, Susan, what do you say? Affairs are fun. No. <laughs> affairs of state. Affairs of state. Yes. You didn't think of that? Nope. All right. Well... Paige, you have $500 and our best wishes, and thanks for being here on Match Game. Bye. Here it comes with Belinda Garrett and Sandy Schoenefeld. Hello there. Welcome. Let's get acquainted. Sandy, please tell us about you. Well, I'm here visiting from Olympia, Washington. Yeah. And my time there is occupied with mail. But that's spelled M-A-I-L. <laughs> I deliver it for the U.S. Post Office. You know me as a mailman. I mean, most people know me as a mailman. A mailman. Or a mail lady. Mail and, person. Um, mail person? Mail person. Yeah. 
actual letter carrier, but um, I've been married going on nine years. I have two little boys. Uh, I love to play games, especially bridge. You like bridge? I love bridge. Well, I hope you're good at this. Good luck to you, Sandy. Belinda, tell us about you, please. I'm Belinda Garrett. I'm a registered nurse from Buffalo, New York, and I'm out here visiting. Really? Really. Having any fun out here? Having a great time. Having good. a ball. Really? Yeah. Ah, <laughs> shall we go into detail? No, yeah. I guess we better not do that, huh? <laughs> now we got this for you. Let's uh, ask uh, Sandy here to make her selection on A or B. B, please. B. We need a little glue on the A here. It's coming uh, undone. Your A is undone. Uh, Albert said, he says, you know you're living too close to an atomic reactor when you can use your blank as a patio lantern. <laughs> you don't understand. I understand. Well, I heard they asked Bess Meyerson, and Bess Meyerson turned down the show. That's she what I heard today in the business meeting. Really? <laughs> she called me, she called the studio, they talked with Miss Henley, she turned down the show. So now I'm going to try to go for Kitty Carlisle. <laughs> <laughs> I will keep going. There must be some woman who wants to do this show. Write to us here at <laughs> with your credits, two eight by ten glossies, and show us some pictures of your wardrobe. <laughs> All right, Sandy. Sandy. We will take anybody. Right. We are desperate. Here we go. Albert said, you know you're living too close to an atomic reactor when you can use your blank as a porch light or patio lantern. Yes. Well, I don't have a good answer at all. Flashlight. I know, it's just... That was... Well, I have one good one. Well, let's hear it, because the rest of us don't. <laughs> the rest of you don't have one? <laughs> what is your good one? Let's, let's hear it. Vinkavine. Ah, yes. Uh, blow it out your ear, mister. Vinkavine. <laughs> now, you see why we're trying to get Bess Myers in now? <laughs> no, Vinkavine is that nice, multicolored uh, vine that you hang from a hanging plant. If you put impatience or geraniums or something in a pot and you hang it from a, a wire in your porch... <laughs> The vinca vine, you oh, see, yes. okay, thank you. goes over the edge oh, and did, hangs did. down, and it drips down about three or four feet we, from the we ground. We understand. We understand. It's yes. just one. This is amazing what? coincidence. In New York at the Lincoln Center Coliseum Flower Show, over the rose and the carnation and tying with the orchid is the most beautiful vinca vine. <laughs> All popular American flower. Right. See, I, I had a winner there all along there. I've been training my vinca vine for years. The vinca what do you say? Man, you done half bad. No. <laughs> I was thinking weird, so I came up vinca weird. Vinca vine is weird. I said oven. Oven. <laughs> when you can use your oven as a porch sure, light. Microwave, you know. Right. Gotcha. Right, honey, right, right. Now, there were, two, there were three answers that work on this show. One is Howard Cosell, the other one is boobs, and the third one is wife. Okay. <laughs> what do you when say? You know, I was going to write Bink of Mine, but I didn't think of it. <laughs> Why is that? I so said funny? doormat. Doormat? As a porch light? Well, what else is on the porch? Your oven. A hanging potted plant is uh, on the porch. That's a vinca what? Vine. Not in the winter, but always you'll find a constant. Vinca vine should only be out, by the way, if you live in the New England area, from, no, should we, be in from October to February. I bring in my vinca vine, vinca vine in the middle of September to give I'm, it a chance to get acclimated to the indoors. With I've the heard many lower. stories about your yeah. vine. Wait a minute. What are you well, you know, we're looking for a pretty flower for Christmas. Forget your poinsettias. No, Get your vinca hands. vines. And speed up. Well, we're all joking about it, but it's a really serious issue, radiation. And the thing that can hurt the most is us, and we should all look into these reactors. And we wouldn't want our kids living near them. So when your head starts to glow, that's when uh, you should move away from the reactor. Right. What do you got there, Bob? Well, I gave a lot, I gave a lot of thought to this answer, and I came up with Vinca Vine. <laughs> <laughs> That was my first choice. My second choice bust my hand. Let and both of them go. Goodbye. <laughs> nice working to you. Okay, Joyce. It's the darndest thing. I had Vinkle Vine, too. You did? <laughs> yes. Yeah, Come on, I'm glad there are people of taste and perception I here. I also had Poe.
Pogo stick. Pogo stick. <laughs> What's it say to paper, what Charles? What it says, kids, get your sports section, because the mayor of Pasadena has just announced this morning that what was formerly the Rose Bowl is now known as the Binka Vine Bowl. <laughs> Splendid. Belinda, my dear. Pete said, no wonder that guy can't tap dance. Instead of tap shoes, he's wearing blinks. <laughs> well, you were talking. I heard you were talking. I heard it. I heard it. But don't ask me to repeat it. I'm a slaughtering my vinca vine. <laughs> I'm finished. Hey, no wonder that guy can't tap dance. Instead of tap shoes, he's wearing blinks. Away from the mic. Come over here. <laughs> Okay. What's it say in paper, well, Chuck? says that they're going to make the movie again. The first movie was so successful, they're going to make the uh, return of the Vinkavine people. <laughs> <laughs> He's having the best time. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, Belinda, here we go. No wonder that guy can't tap dance. Instead of tap shoes, he's wearing blanks. Sneakers. Sneakers? You can tap dance with sneakers. No. Yeah, you do a soft shoe with sneakers. No. Belinda Swede. I said when I was a kid, we used to try to tap dance with beer cans. Beer cans. <laughs> All right, go. Don't talk to me about your soft shoe, mister. Your Adidas. Or sneakers. Or your pimsels, as we say in England. Or your tennis shoes. All right, give her a match for that. All right. Skis. There's the answer. No plastic that's the, that's the answer there. Oh, that's the answer. That's the answer. Sneakers happens to be a dreadful answer. I don't care if you did match her. Hello, Susan. I got one. What? Roller skates. Roller skates. There you can't do it on there. What? Never you mind. Cowboy boots fit Vinkabine heels. <laughs> adorable. All it's right, adorable. Joyce. Talented. This was an Italian dancer. With pizzas. With pizzas. <laughs> well, skis and snowshoes and all that sort of thing, that would have been nifty. All right, it's one to nothing in around one. Now we got this for you. This is a quick out. Goodbye, little, little, little. Some contestants will receive head to toe beauty appliances from Conair, a collection of quality personal care appliances. Conair offers you professional quality for use at home. Gino's party special pizza with a crisp and tasty crust you can trust, plus the flavor shaker. Gino's in your grocer's freezer. A master mechanic 10-gallon shop back from True Value Hardware Stores who combine value and personal service in over 5,000 locations nationwide. Diaphorine baby washcloths with a special moisture pack formula to clean and condition baby skin. Keep your baby better than clean with Diaphorine. A tray. And why not switch to Listamint with its fresh minty taste or zesty Listamint cinnamon. They taste as good as they work. A canister set in Boratine was formulated for the big switch to warm water washing. Now for whiter, brighter, more stain-free wash, switch to Boratine. And a calculator and Raid House and Garden Bug Killer. It kills bugs dead indoors and outdoors, yet won't harm most plants or shrubs. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game, a Mark Goodson, Bill Totman production. This program is edited for broadcast. Get ready to match the stars from Trapper John, Charles Siebert, Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Riley, from Vegas, Phyllis Davis, from Morgan Mindy, Robert Dummer, and Marsha Wallace, as we play the star-studded big money match game, P.M. And now, for the star of match game, P.M., Gene Raymond!
How kind of you to join us. Thank How you. How many times have I told you not to take those short naps? Listen, they're very helpful. You nutty boy. Yes, a little 10 or 15 seconds there. You can doze off. Are you all ready? Yes. All right, you're going to have a good time tonight because all of the loonies are out here and the sane people are on this side. Let's welcome Fred Ollie and Debbie Hannum. How do you do? Let's get acquainted. Fred, tell us where you're from and all that. I'm... Uh... From Los Angeles, I'm an administrator with the Los Angeles Unified School District. I have a lovely wife, Rose, and my son, Brian, just graduated from high school. Lynn Felice, who just graduated from elementary school and who is interested in becoming an ice skating champion. Mm. You look like a well-adjusted, happy person, Fred. Oh, thank you, Gene. I am. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to my wife. We, we could take We're just care of nice you. Gene. That's true. Yeah. Nice to meet a man with a healthy psyche. Oh, Isn't it? That. Let's hear it for Fred Psyche. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. All right, Debbie, how about you? Well, I'm from San Diego, and I just graduated from San Diego State University with a degree in journalism. And I'm hoping to move to Tahoe this winter to continue my skiing, I hope. Skiing? Yeah. You do downhill? Thank you. All the way down. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's the end of that interview. Now. <clears throat> Here on Match Game PM, you'll each have three opportunities to match as many of the dingbats as you possibly can. The one who's done that most often at the end of the third round will be the winner and go on to play the big money super match, which can pay off over $20,000. How about that? Here we go, Fred. A, please. Fred says he wants A. We're off and running. Jack said that hamburger must have been made out of alligator meat. After I ate it, I had an uncontrollable urge to become a blank. <laughs> now we're ready, Fred. Jack said that hamburger must have been made out of alligator meat. After I ate it, I had an uncontrollable urge to become a... Crocodile. <laughs> he didn't understand it. <laughs> the hamburger, you see. Alligator meat. Then he ate it. And he had an uncontrollable urge to become a... Well, this is another fine mess you've gotten us into, Ollie. A handbag. Handbag. <laughs> Alligator purse. What do you say? Oh, sweetheart, I said a pair of shoes. Another good answer. Okay. Purse and shoes are all right. Purse and shoes matching. Yes. I just said bag, because handbag is a feminine term. Bag. Okay, you just said bag. It I could be. For my right to Carry your bag, mister? No, she can walk by herself. Rumka. <laughs> Wait a Phyllis. Yeah. Check, please. Alligator meat. After I ate it, I had an uncontrollable urge to become a... Purse. Purse. Yeah. <clears throat> what do you say? I went for a play on words, so to speak. I said gator aid. <laughs> a gator aid. A lot of people watch at night, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> now, listen, he said gator. Uh, and a crocodile Gator is a gator. Aid. Gatorade is a drink. No, this oh, was an assistant. It was a gator's nurse. It's, right. it's not working. No. What do you say? Worked for me, Bob. <laughs> I said purse. Hey, purse. 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 You got the idea now, Fred. Yeah, You'll warm up a little bit later. Here's Debbie's warm up or question. Not. When dumb Donald went out with Ellen, he wanted to impress her, so he ordered in French. Unfortunately, they were at a blank. <laughs> Hello, Debbie. I guess we're all ready for you. When Dumb Donald went out with Ellen, he wanted to impress her, so he ordered in French. Unfortunately, they were at a blank. At a Chinese restaurant? Chinese restaurant, all right. Remember, round one questions can be almost anything. Yes, well, this one is Mexican restaurant. Mexican. So it could be Chinese, Mexican. What is that? Oh, that's my tooth retainer. <laughs> pizza parlor. A pizza parlor. I didn't say restaurant, Gene, because it's a feminine word. I said a Chinese <laughs> joint. A Chinese joint. That's one for Debbie. Phyllis, and he wanted to impress uh, his girlfriend, so he ordered in French. Unfortunately, they were at a... Drive-in. A drive-in. 
That would be difficult, uh, wouldn't it, at uh, a drive-in to say, qu'est-ce que tu peux continuer à faire ce qu'on laissait? Yeah, huh? To go. Yeah. <laughs> drive-in was a good answer. It was. It wasn't the right answer, but it was a good answer. Oh, yeah, very I good. I wish I'd said it. You said it. But I said Chinese restaurant. Chinese. <laughs> Excellent. Now, what, 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 what? Now, Gene, you know mm. that little, one of them short naps that you were having earlier? Right. I think I had one when you read this question. Oh. <laughs> because it escaped me. When she's apologizing in advance that way, that means she's really laid We're an egg. We're talking pit city. <laughs> yeah. You're speaking epistemologically? I'm speaking epistemologically, Gene. <laughs> yes. They were at a funeral. <laughs> They didn't march on me. Right. <laughs> what if they were at Stay a in your room? seats, if you please. Where are we here? It's two to nothing to score. The end of round one. Round two coming up. But first, this for you. Here we go. Round two coming up. And Debbie, you're ahead. You'll go first. Okay, A, please. You sure? Uh-huh. All right. The cannibal prime minister said <laughs> to the president, please send us another ambassador. The last one was blank. You don't play, Charles. Well, I want to play this question, Gene, okay, so play. change the light. Write it down there. Write it down, and I'll call on you. I mean, 49 years, call people said call to me I couldn't play. Cannibal Prime Minister said to the President, please send us another ambassador. The last one was blank. Eaton? Eaton. Oh. Oh, yeah, well, <laughs> that's all right. That that might happen over here, but I I don't think so. Too, Too tough. tough. <laughs> Did you think of that? See, we can tell you go with your first instinct here. What do you say? Let me just take a look at that little girl. What's she's her name? Her name is Debbie. Debbie, Debbie and she's darling. Want, oh boy, I want to. Eaton? <laughs> Debbie, what's wrong? You're cute. You're darling. You're pretty. You're adorable. But my <laughs> lord, well, it's like eating. Eating. <laughs> eating. <laughs> eating by the populace. Eaten by the populace. Now, if you had been playing, what would you have said? Debo. <laughs> he he de soaked. He soaked. Debo. Debo. So you and the entire nation can think about it. <laughs> all right. Now we can figure that out. We can figure it out very easily. What a easily. treat for all of us. Deba, uh, well, you have till the end of the program, and then I'll reveal it as I quit. No, no, we can figure it out. Deba, uh, de de deboned. Deboned is correct. Deboned. De right. Deboned. It wasn't right. worse than the... I'm sorry. Right. De Phyllis, what have you got there for us? Please say there's another ambassador. The last one was... Tough. Tough. Good. And Do you Marcia. notice how often Phyllis and I have matched today? That's probably because we look a great deal alike. Yes, you do. <laughs> Don't start with me. <laughs> She's tough. She'll deck you. That's right. <laughs> All right. Toof. Okay. So there we are. She's up to three. And Fred, you've got a little catching up to do. Let's see if you do it with this. One counterfeiter said to another, You idiot. George Washington is supposed to be wearing a powdered wig, not a powdered blank. <laughs> I love my answer. Good. <laughs> Want to go first, Marshall? Charles is doing his artwork. He's got his answer, so we'll begin. One counterfeiter said to another, you idiot, you, well, George Washington is supposed to be wearing a powdered wig, not a powdered blank. Mustache. Mustache. <laughs> what would you have said? No. Oh. No. no. You are not of one mind. But Muslim. What do you say, no. Charlie? No. No. That's what they said. Yeah. I thought it was what we call your proverbial shoe in. Yeah. El nozo. Nozo. A lot of people are going to say beard, I think. I said face. Face. No face one said fresh. beard. I thought somebody would say beard, which is close to mustache. You never had a beard. Well, mustache. I said beard. You said beard. <laughs> See? You're not too thrilled with that, huh? All right. What do you say, Bob? Don't look at me pleading, Fred. I know. You heard. <laughs> Mustache. Uh -huh. <laughs> the 
Little minds run in same <laughs> channel. <laughs> Stick with me, friend. <laughs> Marcia. Jean. Yes, oh, Marcia. <gasps> Jean. Marcia. I do love my answer. Yes. Another short nap. And I came up with powdered donut. Powdered donut. <laughs> <laughs> shall we go to round three, or shall we talk about it? <laughs> uh, you're still ahead, Debbie, so you'll go. It's three to one. <clears throat> B. B. Three people play, Charles, Phyllis, and Marcia. In Alaska, it's so cold. How cold is it? It's so cold the cows don't give milk, they give blank. Oh, <laughs> Now, Debbie, in Alaska, it's so cold the cows don't give milk, they give Wait, blank. Wait, hold it. Oh, oh sir, my right Charles off, doesn't work play. I'm sorry, I made a mistake. I'm sure he had his thing One up. MC per show, if you please. <laughs> well, I didn't want us to have to go to black and do all that stuff. No, no we don't do that. No, 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 no. <laughs> yes. They give ice cream. Ice cream. <laughs> she said ice cream. She said, said ice cream, That's eh? what she said. Uh, well, ice cream. There it is. We got one for her. Now we come to you. Oh, ice cream. That's two for her. She's up to five. And now to you. I could sing the song, Ice Cream, from She Loves Me. Oh, you could. Probably not, though. Okay. Yes. Ice cream. Well, that's six for her. All right, Fred. It's an uphill battle for you, but it can be done. All right. Don't we'll give try. up. We'll try. Here it is. You need five to tie, and that's the best you can do. Ben said, I think I'm real sick. When my doctor examined me, he sent me to a blank. <laughs> Why the silence? No, no, I have said, I think I'm real sick. When my doctor examined me, he sent me to a blank. Right, I got it. You don't play, Bob. Never again. You got your cards with you, a deck of cards, or something we could do while you're waiting? Perfect, yes. <laughs> hey, Bob, he looks so lifelike, too. <laughs> Ready? All right. Okay, Fred. Ben said, I think I'm real sick. When my doctor examined me, he sent me to a blank. A mortician. A mortician. Fred came up with a great answer in a pinch. Certainly did. This has got to be it, hasn't it? Cemetery, isn't that close enough? Oh. No. Oh. That means Debbie wins the game. What everybody else have? Funeral Shrink. parlor, shrink, <laughs> hospital, more kitchen. No. All right. Come on, down, Debbie. Debbie. Well, Fred, it was a pleasure to meet you. I'm going to shake your hand and tell you that sometime in the near future, four or five years from now, Match Game PM will send you some gifts. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, great to meet you. Fred Ollie. Spin him off and spin a message for you. Here we go, friends. She's going for the big money, over $20,000. We pulled a studio audience, said, write down your best answer to this. Blank Marie. Now, here's the way it is. If you give us the answer they wrote down most often, we'll give you $500. If you match the second most popular, $250. For matching the third most popular, $100. Okay. Now, look around and see whom you want to call <laughs> okay, on now, trust for me, a little yeah. help. <laughs> I have to call on Marcia. Bless you, hon. I have no life. That's really made it for me. <laughs> Rose Marie. Oh, Rose yeah. Marie. There's one. Charles. Hi, sweetheart. <laughs> Donnie and Marie. Yeah. All right, I have to. Don't look at me now. It's too late, sweetness. You're okay. going to have to go to Charles. other okay. parts. Like oh, you got no. Okay, Charlie. I don't know how you spell it, but way, Marie. Way, way Marie. Marie. Did you hear the joke about the married hey. couple? Well, hey. both no. different. <laughs> So you got the Way Marie, the old Dean Martin song, and then you got Donnie and Marie, and you got Rose Marie. Now, at this point, you have the option. You choose one of those three or give us one of your own. 
I choose Donnie and Marie. Yeah. You're wrong again, Debbie. I'm sorry they're already taken. <laughs> <laughs> That's Nelson Donnie. Eddie and Jeanette McDonald. That's right. Donnie and Marie. So she says, Donnie and Marie is what she wants. Let's find out if they're up there under the $100 response. Anne Marie. Anne Marie. Oh, no. Ring a bell with anybody? Oh, Marlo Thomas, yes. $250 response says, Rose Marie. I love it. You may be right. We're rooting for you with our fingers crossed. Slide the big one. You're right. <laughs> she says, I'm not going to Charles. Let him come to me. You're too proud to go up there and give him a little kiss because he gave you that answer. Anyway, you've got $500. That means the least you'll play for is $5,000. However, you have one more audience match, and let's see how you do with that. Is there a blank? Oh. All right. Whom do you want? Robert, please. Doctor in the house. Yeah. All right. Charles has one. Charles again. When Brett was born, what her father said to the doctor, is there a chance? <laughs> you want to hear the joke about the... <laughs> no, I don't want to hear it. Does Marcia have one? Yes, I think Possibly. she Possibly. Something I was saying to Jean just this afternoon. Is there a life after death? <laughs> Is there a life after death? Is there a doctor in the house? And is there a chance? You want one of those, or do you want one of your own? Um, I'm going to pick, is there a doctor in the house? All right. May we see the one on the bottom? Is there a man in the house? What does that mean? Oh, it's, it's a friend of the doctor. That's what Brett's father said. <laughs> That's what I meant, is there a chance? <laughs> He's really in the house. goofed it up. Oh, All right, let's take a look at the $250 response. Is there a way? No, there isn't. That's what, <laughs> no response. That's what Brett's father said. Is there a way? <laughs> no He's going to keep batting that out. No, she wants, is there a doctor in the house? Is it under the $500 response? Yeah. Yes, it is. All right, now you've got another $500, means at this moment you have $1,000 in cash. However, we multiply that by 10, making it $10,000. Now that's the pot you're shooting for, but if you step up there to that wheel in back of us and give it a lucky spin, it lands on a star, you play for $20,000. Good luck to you. Grab a peg and here we go. Listen, $10,000 is not a bad sum to go for. To so, that. good luck to you, and let's go for it. You ready? Swing around this way a little bit. And here we go. You ready? It says, gas and blank. Take a look at it. All right. She's written her answer. If you give us the answer that she has on the card... We give you $10,000. Gas and electric. Gas and electric. That's one of the good ones. Let's see what Marcia has. Mm, well, honey, I'm so sorry. You have another one of the good ones? Gas and oil. That's yeah. another one of the good ones. Mm. Gas and oil and gas and electric were both excellent responses. And, uh... Almost. <laughs> almost. But listen, you've got $1,000, and that's not bad. We congratulate sure. you for that. just brings joy to your heart. And the producer comes up and he says, listen, can you fill a minute? Oh, wait a minute, I have it. Listen, you want to hear the story That's about... Right I have it. Okay. 
It's, okay. it's the one step brother. Did I spill your milk? <laughs> I, yes, I my milk. want to hear the story about the married couple who didn't know the difference between Vaseline and potty. No, I don't want to hear that story. All their windows fell out. <laughs> Don't forget to watch. <coughs> Don't forget to watch Charles. What's his name on his show? Whatever Please. it is. Bye. Oh. Goodbye. What is an watch what's her name on her show. Watch him whenever you can. Uh, you no watch me get out of here. Yes. No, no listen. Yes. I hope you'll join us next time for Match Game PM. I'm Gene Rayburn. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Today's consolation prizes are. A seven-piece performer gourmet cutlery set with extra sharp chrome stainless steel blades, Ebony Fleetwood handles, dishwasher safe from Washington Forge. An Amcor Fresh and Air electronic air ionizer and smoke odors, dust, pollen, bacteria in your automobile. Fresh and air for fresher air everywhere. And a walk in La Choy Chinese food. Let your meals swing American with La Choy bean sprouts, vegetables, water chestnuts, bamboo shoots, and soy sauce. And a Betty Crocker cookbook can make someone happy with new improved super moist. Now even better than before, other cakes may be moist, but they're not super moist. And a honey dish and pure sous vide honey. No synthetic or artificial ingredients. You haven't tried honey, but you tried the natural goodness of sous vide honey. And a baby bath and changing pad plus diaperine baby washcloths. Moisture packed towel lets the lanolin the clean and condition. Keep your baby better than clean with diaperine. And a pen and pencil set and liver snaps. Treats for dogs with real liver. No wonder dogs really love them. Liver snaps. This is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game PM, a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production.